Wherever we go, you can go to. Whether you're on the road, at the farm, or back in the barns, Walton Webcasting is there. Streaming live to capture every moment and archiving the ones that you missed. The Grand Champion Market Barrow, this year's Tulsa State Fair. Watch wherever, whenever. This is your moment. Tell family and loved ones back home to head over to waltonwebcasting.com so they can watch from the comfort of their own home. Live shows are always free. Walton Webcasting. Livestock like you've never seen before. Are you a breeder looking to showcase your show pigs? With a Walton Webcasting Show Pig Shoot, we are your go-to video service for capturing the full picture of your show pigs. We specialize in providing top quality video services for breeders like you. You talk to pigs, we capture the video. Our skilled video team comes directly to your operation. With the power of our website and social media, your professionally recorded videos are streamed live, allowing potential customers from all over the country to appreciate the quality of your show pigs. Let Walton Webcasting be your partner in success. We handle the technicalities so you can focus on what you do best, raising exceptional livestock. To schedule your next show pig shoot, call Rhonda at Great heroes come together to support the livestock industry and Walton Webcasting. We call them the Premier Partners. Layered Premium Blend Genetics. Brad Howell Ford. Biozyme. Umbarger Shell Feeds. Kennedy Ventures. Sunglow Feeds, and First Farmers Bank and Trust. This adventure wouldn't be possible without the continued support from the Premier Partners. of our national anthem to get us started off in the right way it's with pleasure i introduce you to miss adley howe she is a sophomore at the moore ffa with our national anthem oh say can you see 
by the dawn's early light. Mm. Hold on, I messed up, sorry. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. What? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we yelled at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free job. Well, good morning over here in ring number one. Over here in ring number one, we'll begin our Crossbred Market Steer Show. Crossbred Market Steer Show, class number one, be making their way. It's good to have our judge back. Judges, I should mention, Mr. Bob and Brock May. Good to have them here to sort our Crossbred Market Steers.
Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to uh, our presentation of the uh, Oklahoma Youth Expo. And we are here for day two. I'm joined here uh, ringside by my dear friend, Corey Thompson. Uh, Corey uh, and I are so excited to be here to be a part of uh, the world's largest Youth Expo livestock show. And uh, we are here for day two. What a day yesterday, huh, my friend? Yeah, all the breeds uh, showed yesterday. We just got the crossbreds left. Obviously, the biggest division uh, breed shows were, boy, they were great oh, yesterday. Man, I mean, I mean, it was good all the way through. You know, some of the breeds maybe didn't have as many numbers, but when you got the champion lineups out there yesterday, and when they were picking champion steers, yep. that was, I mean, it was good all the way through. And I, I mean, uh, hey, other than a couple pair switches, <laughs> We, yeah, we felt like they did. A, they were they were spot on really all day. Job. So yeah, yep. did a really good job. Yep. So hey, this morning uh, we are uh, beginning our first division. We're going to have four divisions today of uh, crossbred steers. This first division, we're going to have uh, steers from a thousand to eleven ninety nine. So basically, um, two hundred pounds difference in this first division, Corey, in this first class, class one. Uh, for those of you that are watching on TV, I. Are watching on Walton webcasting right now. Uh, uh, as you see the as you see the group coming down the line here, the first uh, steer in line, a little black steer down here on the far end is Mitchell Teal from Stonewall FFA on a thousand pound calf. Stanton Broderick from Fort Townsend FFA on a thousand and one pound steer. Uh, Kenley Martinez from Mustang FFA on a thousand forty pound steer. Jesslyn Broderick uh, must be Stanton's. Uh, Sister from Fort Townsend FFA, steer weighs 1,045. Sophie Young, or Sophie York from Raiden 4-H on a 1,050 pound steer. Nikki Grubbs from Watonga FFA on a 1,050 pound calf. The Westview Boys Home, Hollis FFA on a 1,051 pound calf. Ben Eddy from Lone Grove FFA on a 1,070. Tegan Gibson from Yale FFA, his steer weighs 1,080. Hudson Prater from Tuttle F, uh, 4-H on 1119. Then we get down here on these last three. The big uh, strawberry roan calf down here is Jackson Atkinson from Sulphur 4-H on 1119 pound calf. Cayman Collins from Atoka 4-H on 1119. And then Miley Cato from Savannah FFA. And that steer weighs 1123. So we're starting to walk these calves. Again, uh, judging our show again. Uh, is uh, the legendary Sugar Ray. Yep. Bobby May and his son Brock is his associate here. And I thought they did a great job yesterday. Long day. It was a yeah. long day yesterday. Long day. I uh, ran into them too last night uh, after supper there. And, boy, they look like they've been through a workout <laughs> now. Just physically. Uh, right. You know, you judge all day and walk. I mean, just walking from one end of the line to the other, handling them. And, and just up and down, placing them. I mean, they, I bet you if they'd have lot, looked at their phones, they'd have, they'd have had quite a few steps in yesterday. The only time he'd probably been more wore out is after I worked him over last yeah, summer. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you really feel. I don't, I don't think it was a... It lasted longer than I thought it would. <laughs> well, it seemed like forever for me. <laughs> I bet it did. I bet it did. It seemed like forever for me. were one-minute rounds that felt like hours. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I was never so happy to be done with yeah. something in my life. Uh, yeah. Well, we go through this cat class uh, there again. Uh, we got four divisions today. I, I haven't counted up how many we got through here all day, but uh, we got four divisions and three classes in the first two divisions and then four classes in the okay. last two divisions. Whoa, 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 whoa. Looks like we got four classes in the second division also. Yeah. So we're going to have uh, four, eight, 12, 15 classes today. 15 classes. Mm -hmm. So we got three in the first and then four, four, and four. Yep. 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 Four divisions of crossbreds. And we'll pick us an overall crossbred winner tonight and punch the last ticket into the limousine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Well, they, they worked our ground up for us a little bit. It was getting pretty hard yesterday. The old surface around here, yeah. this this red Oklahoma clay. And it will by the end of the day. Yeah, too. yeah. And we were talking about that this morning on some of these calves yesterday afternoon. It got up here to about 85 degrees, 80, 85 degrees outside yesterday. And we got into that main on Jew class yesterday, and these old calves got to panting. I mean, it got – some of them got pretty hot. Now, today we're going only supposed to be in the 60s, and it's raining here in Oklahoma City today. Yep. So um, there was a steady – Steady downpour of rain this morning when we were walking in here, but uh, it's supposed to rain most of the day and keep it somewhat cooler today. So hopefully these calves will be a little fresher. Yesterday afternoon, some of those calves got, we were talking about some of those calves, their tops were kind of falling on them, and it, it got pretty warm. Boy, it did. It did. Especially uh, right during that main division. Oh. They, uh, they were getting a little toasty. You know, uh, I was talking to Mark Hogue there a couple months ago. He was out there with the judging team, Western Illinois judging team in uh, at Sioux Falls out there. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, oh, we were just talking about shows in general and, and judges and who's judging shows nowadays. And he was telling his students that, you know, in his mind, in the hog ring and really any, live, any species of livestock, he thought it was good to have judges that were, he called them, and I thought it was a good term, trenchers. <laughs> trenchers. Yeah. He said the guys that breed them, calve them, sell them, feed them, show them, like, you know, trenchers, the guys that are right down yeah. the middle of it. You talk about in the steer industry, Bob May, He's he a would trencher. have created the trench, lived in the trench, yeah. and has basically... You know, I mean, he was showing, he was winning steer shows. When the first steer show I ever went to was in 1992 at Kansas City Royal. Bob May won that. Uh, Stinson was the boy's name, last name, that won that steer show. So, 91, and we're in 2024. 24. So, you're talking. Yeah, I know. 34 years of right down in the middle and he was doing it way before that so oh, I know. You're, you're talking about oh. as many years of any species right. i would put him up against anybody in terms of number of years competitive on a national level showing all right oh it's not even show steers not even close i told the story i mean for those of you i don't want to be repeating myself because i am getting up up in age i don't want to show any signs of <laughs> yeah yeah but yesterday I was telling the story about Bob and how he got his start. And he got his start right here at the Oklahoma Youth Expo. And so in 1974, Bobby uh, uh, wanted a calf. And yep. his dad said, well, we don't have the money to go get you a calf. But he said, I'll bet you can find you a calf at the Oklahoma Youth Expo in Oklahoma City. And his dad handed him all the cash that he had. And he took off in a car and a bumper hitch trailer with as much cash as his dad gave him. And he came down here, and he found a calf. He took him home, bought him, took him home, and he wins the Wisconsin State Fair in 1974. Would have been in what, August of 1974. The next that. year, and they'd lost their farm. It was tough times, and they'd lost their farm. And a family friend hauled them down here, hauled him down here with his truck and trailer. And this kid was going. This guy was going to buy Bobby's steer. Yep. Bobby found the calf he wanted, and it was too expensive, and so they left. And the guy said to Bobby about it, got about an hour outside Oklahoma City. He said, are you going to swell up and be mad all the way home? And he said, yeah, yeah. we should have bought that calf. And as they turned around, they came back, gave $525 for this calf, and Bobby went back to Wisconsin, and he won the Wisconsin State Fair in 75. And that steer brought 13000 in the sale, and that's the money that Bobby took How about and that? began his, his his business. So there's a there's a very, very, very strong connection to the May family in mm -hmm. Oklahoma. Yep. Uh, both both uh, Danny, his brother, and his sister, Carolyn, all both live in, in the Stillwater area yep. to this day. And so um, I've probably spent more time with Bob May in Oklahoma than I have in Wisconsin, to be honest with you. So, well, hey, they've got these calves kind of pulled in here. They've got their top five calves, kind of what they've done. For those of you that are watching, uh, they've kind of narrowed it down to these top five. They'll talk the top five in each class. Um, and they've got kind of pulled out their top five in this class. Of course, these are calves that probably could be considered 
you know, still progress steers. Steering first there's Kenley Martinez from Mustang FFA. He's, you know, probably none of these steers just exactly market ready, but uh, boy, there's good lineup of cattle. Yeah. Yeah. This black and white calf in, in fifth hole is the one that I kind of was drawn to when he came in. But This is the class that the guys out back with yeah. from the northern state fairs that are looking at trying to yeah. find them a yeah. Trying to find them a like state Bob, fair calf. Like by like the story you just told about Bobby. They're yeah. trying this to, is the way they're looking at this class, this weight to yeah. Yep. Take one home and kind of kick them out to pasture for a few months and bring them back in and start uh, start feeding on them. I had a couple guys text me about a review of dinner last night. <laughs> it was very good. Extremely, extremely cheap on my end. <coughs> Do we have? What? Um, I mean, seriously, we have to talk about this again. People don't want to hear about your sides. I know. It, it was good. We had uh, went with the whipped mashed potatoes, <laughs> the lobster mac and cheese, and the corn, and the corn. Your the lobster mac and cheese was twenty eight dollars a side. I know. Worth yep. every penny. Worth <laughs> every penny. Well, that little. You know, I've had a tendency to let my mouth overload my <clears throat> derriere no. once in a while. No. Occasionally. I, no. Well, it did last night to a tune about 450. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Here I am. <laughs> Thank you. Here I am. You know, and I normally like these in God We Trust calves, but that some bitch let me down yesterday. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> yep. He let me down yesterday. Speaking of in God We Trust, we probably have one out there in the second hole. Probably. <laughs> well, I don't know. His head's pretty low. <laughs> can't always assume. Uh, can't always assume. Well, I'm kind of wondering why they don't like that calf in fourth hole. I can't like that yeah. calf. Yeah, I think what a guy is struggling whoa, with. Whoa, whoa, whoa watch whoa, out. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're probably weighing out just market readiness, kind of, you know, how they're going to place their uh, emphasis here on this deal. Well, I think they're. he's reaching for the mic. He's done. He's done. Yep, here's Bob. I apologize for Brock and I taking quite this long, and I would confess, and in all the, all the shows, not that it's been a, a huge amount of shows, but the shows I've ever judged, I've never taken this much time in a lightweight class. And, and quite frankly, usually those lightweight classes or some cattle, they come out and you're just like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I really like one, love one in this class. And this is an incredibly hard class to put together in terms of there's so many different types and kinds. I'll be real honest with you, I might as well be. When these come in, the steer, that the spotted steer that stands third in this class, Brock and I talked, and I said, I think we'll probably start with that steer. And the more we evaluated these cattle, um, I'll give you the reasons why we did what we did. This calf that wins the, wins the class, that's, that's a, you know, he's not market ready, but that is a market looking steer to be sure. He's bold, bold through the center part of his body. And I don't think we realize till late in the game just how pronounced and bold he is from hooks to pins. Super good down his top line, coming out of the backside of his shoulder. He's pretty attractive headed. Does he have a little bit of, of uh, excess in his, in his crest and in his chest? Yeah, just a little bit. Boy, for the product that thing moves around, he goes really good. He's wide through the center of his quarter. We just feel like all things considered, we, just, we want that steer to win the class. Love his feet, love the way he goes. The deceptive steer in the class, and, and nothing marked like him, but yesterday, I confessed yesterday that the, the champion shorthorn steer, I did not realize just how good that steer was because so, he was so oddly colored. He was redneck, 
and then his color pattern just went way wacky and I didn't realize just incredibly, he was incredibly sound and incredibly stout and you're wondering why am I talking about that steer? I'm talking about that steer because this steer, he's, he's kind of dull looking, okay, as far as his hair's kind of in a dormant stage. He's tremendous out in his hip, he's big boned, he's big feet. He, once in a while he looks like he gets a little close on that front knee, love the way the neck comes out of the shoulder. He's just, like we talked yesterday, he's, he's a project. I mean, he's not there, he's not market ready. I think I, I heard somebody make a comment yesterday about why is he talking about prospect steers? This is a market steer show. Because these are pretty much still progress or prospect steers. Maybe not prospect, but for sure progress. And so th these cattle still got a ways to go to get to the market readiness. And we know that when they come in the ring. But we really like a lot of things about this calf. Is he just a tick dull looking? Just, just the stage is hair in, he is, but that's good, good cattle. This is the steer when they first come in. He come into the game just a little late and I went down and I thought, you know what, that's a really good calf, and it is. He's got huge feet, good through the center of his body. He doesn't blend back into his flank as good as the two that we, we put up in first and second in this class. And then we love the way he goes. We really, uh, we really commend him for that. He looks a little staler up in his head. He's a steer that isn't quite as nice around his tail head. His pin set sets just a little close together, but high, high quality be for, sh for sure. I'm not even sure if I should even be admitting that when we first saw these steers, this is the one I thought we'd start with, and he ends up in the third hole. Awful, awful good calf. Like to specifically drop that tail head down in and give him more power around his tail head. Standing still, you can justify using this calf to win the class. And that's how good these cattle are on the top end of this. Standing still, he's got a look to be desired. He just gets a little jammed up in his hock. We'd certainly like to change that, gets a little short strided. But yeah, that's a really, really good calf. When he goes, he hammers that hawk in a little rigid for us. This deer here, when he come in, he come in early in the class. He might have been the second or third one to lead in. I'm like, well, we know we got a good one to tie to here. And he is good. I got to balance him up better. I got to drop him in his flank to meet his chest at this light stage. You know, we wonder what the balance will look like when he becomes a fat steer. But more importantly than that, he's quite rigid in the top part of his skeleton. He wants to get up in his back. He reaches up under himself when he goes in motion. Standing and still, you can be drawn to this steer saying, now why in the world would that steer be standing fifth in this class? He, he, could, he could go a lot higher if we don't walk him. When we, when we walk, his comfort level just gets a little out there, but high, high quality to be sure. You don't very often see a class of lightweight steers that has this much quality from top to bottom. Congratulations to your class one winner in the crossbred market steers, Tegan Gibson from the Yale FFA, followed by Nikki Grubbs from Watonga, third, Cayman Collins from Atoka, fourth, Miley Cato from Savannah FFA, fifth, Kenley Martinez from Mustang, sixth place, Sophia York from the Raiden 4-H, seventh, Jackson Atkinson from Sulphur, 8th, Hudson Prater from Tuttle 4-H, 9th, Wyatt Breel from the Westview Boys Home from the Hollis FFA, 10th, Jesslyn Broderick from Fort Townsend FFA, 11th, Stanton Broderick from the Fort Townsend FFA, 12th, Mitchell Teal from Stonewall, and 13th, Ben Eddy from Lone Grove. We now well, Corey, that was, uh, again, very difficult class for them to kind of place. Lots of differences, lots of different types and kinds. But first in that class was Tegan Gibson from Yale FFA. That calf weighed 1,080 pounds. Congratulations to Tegan. And second in that class was Nikki Grubbs from Watonga uh, FFA. That calf weighed uh, 1,050. So now we're getting into some 1,100-pound uh, calves, uh, 1,140 to 1,165. We've got 10... Ten entries in this class. Uh, we have uh, Shelby Patrick uh, from the Woodward County 4-H with a 1,140 pound calf. And then also Shelby Patrick has the second calf in this class. So the two black calves down on the far end are both exhibited by Shelby Patrick. One weighs 1140, one weighs 1144. Then the baldy, uh, the baldy calf there is Asher uh, Poland from Norman 4-H with 1,149-pound calf. 
Then we have Lillian Masters from Morrison FFA with 11.50 pound calf. Darla Fessmeyer from Oklahoma Union uh, with 1150 pound calf. That's the uh, that's the gold color honey colored calf right there. Then the black baldy, the little star headed black calf uh, with a little girl with the ponytail right there. That's Sailor Norvell. Uh, it's probably uh, we probably know that name, don't we, buddy? Oh yeah. So that's Tyler's little girl mm-hmm. uh, from the Amber Pocasset 4-H Club. Yeah. Then the smoke still the silver colored calf. That's Kyler Pettigrew from Miller 4-H 1153. Then the black and white uh, calf, uh, kind of the main looking calf right here in front of us. That is uh, Kale Dickens from the Hennessy FFA. Then the two yellow calves at the end, the young man with the cowboy hat on, that's Cutter Bow from the Yukon uh, FFA uh, with 1,159 pound calf. And the sweet little girl on the end down here in the green shirt, that's Raylan Unwind from Sulphur 4-H with 1,165 pound calf. Well, I am dang sure glad you made it today, Kent, because you are way better at announcing <laughs> those names, and especially the towns in Oklahoma, than I would be. Well, there's times you live here for 30 years, you still don't know how to announce some of these towns. Bl- uh, Blaine, Blaine, Blaine was very quick to correct me yesterday. She was. I got, she made me a little nervous sitting here. She's kind of royalty. I think this is my fourth year, and I still get caught up with the <laughs> Pocasset. Pocasset, yeah. And get corrected on the Dur- yep. Durant, Dur- Durant. Durant. Well, you can. most people that aren't from Oklahoma call it Durant, Durant but it's, it's yeah. Durant. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Durant. Durant. Coeta, that's another name mm-hmm. that people have a little trouble with sometimes. Yep. Wetumpka. <laughs> Yeah, there is a uh, there's a bunch of tongue twisters. <laughs> well, that's a heavy duty orange steer there for a lighter yeah. weight one. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. He's pretty he's pretty burly. Four eighty one. Oh, Raylan Unwin. Is yeah, that, that would that's, that would be? Uh, yeah, yeah. Ray Unwin. That's daughter. Ray's the young girl. Well, the crowd is starting to form. It's funny how, as the day goes on, how many people get stuffed in this place. Oh, boy. Yeah. Miss uh, Miss Judy Collins, Miss Judy Kinder Collins is here already. So she is uh, OYE royalty. She'll, she'll go down here and take her place on the rail down here to my right. <laughs> yep. She sits down here every year. Must did, have the grandkids showing did I, again today. Did I call? Did I call Danny May Bobby's step or half brother yesterday? Did I say that? Well, I don't remember that. Well, I, I guess I guess I didn't do that either. But I was corrected. I apologize. They're brothers, aren't they? They're full brothers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely full brothers. And I apologize if I said that yesterday. But they are full brothers. And Danny is my neighbor. He lives a half a mile from me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, here again, folks, we got uh, 10, 10 entries in this class, and as you can as you can tell from your video screen, um, these calves have gotten considerably burlier. <laughs> mm-hmm. These these are starting to look like fat steers again, but they don't. You know, our heaviest one in here is eleven sixty five, so probably still what I would consider a progress steer. Absolutely, they're starting to look a little more fat steer looking. Yeah, they are. Especially this one here, this black mm-hmm. one with the white and his flank, and this end one. Yeah, one yeah. Those two. Yeah. 
Those are the two calves that I was drawn to when they came in here. So tonight we're going to have the grand drive. Yep. The limousine's going to make its appearance tonight. The steer and the car. The steer. The, steer, the limousine steer and the car. And speaking of the limousine steer, he's kind of. Yeah. They, he's he's kind of the one they were drawn to yesterday. Would you agree? Yeah, there's a lot of people say, yep. you know, just in terms of the way they talk to them, right, a lot can right. change when they get out there. But right, right, right. But just from what. Uh, yeah, from the way they described them and stuff, they, as some might say, went off on the limousine. Yeah. Well, if there was odds in Vegas, yeah. he, he would be. In terms of the breed steers. He'd be yeah. about a four to one right now. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's no doubt. Yep. Hey, you know, that would be a good fundraiser. What's that? We set the odds for this for this show. Yep. On the On the division winners. Yep. We kind of set odds on it. People can place their bets. Is that illegal at a junior show? Miss Walton Webb. There, there's been talk about it. I know they tried to put something together. I think it was in Fort Worth one time. They were going to have a Calcutta format. Oh, really? And basically just list all the cattle online. And then if you buy the winner, just like golf tournament. Oh. If you buy the winner. And he wins. And he wins, you get a percentage of the pot. Mm hmm Huh. We could do that. You and I could do that. We could do that today. Yep. We could do that today and we could donate we could donate half the half the money goes back to the guy that wins it and the other half goes back to OYE. We'd be heroes. <laughs> Don't you agree, Allison? You know what's been the, you know what's been really good the last two days is Allison's voice hasn't been very good. We it's haven't still, had, we haven't yeah. had to listen to her. She hasn't been real chatty. <laughs> Every time I walk in to do one of these Walton deals, she rolls her eyes like, "Oh, God, why do I have to deal with you? I'm your favorite, one of them." Yeah, look at you covering your. At Tulsa, one year in Tulsa, you didn't think I, you did, I wasn't your favorite when I was complaining about having to be up there in that crow's nest and not reading the numbers. <laughs> hey, if we if they put us back in that crow's nest in Tulsa at that Coliseum again, I'm bringing binoculars. Huh? They are? No, they're not. Oh, we're going to have to talk. <laughs> We're going to have to talk with Brandy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Corey, they've got them split up again. They got, well, they only got four this time. No, they got five. I didn't, I didn't see that calf. So they've pulled their top five. Well, I don't know about you, but that first calf up there, that's the second entry from that young lady from Shelby Patrick. She's showing she's showing one of her calves. Which one now? Well, the young lady, the young lady that's in last place. Yeah. Yep. That she's got both these calves. She's got first oh, and last. No kidding. Yes. And she gave she gave the, she gave the other calf to her, a buddy of hers, and it's went in the class. I think she picked her own calf to show. How about that? How about that? Yeah, so Shelby Patrick from Woodward County at 4-H has got both entries, two entries in this class, and she's got one in first and one in last. If you ain't first, you're last. How about it? <laughs> in this case, if you're, you can Bobby. be first and last, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. Well, they're going to bring. Oh, they're going to switch They're going to bring him, bring Put him, him fifth. in. Yep. Made top four, though. Made top four. Made the top four. So they are now 
cussing and discussing these this class, and they're moving this silver calf back down. Looks like Bobby's going over to grab the mic. I think they have done. They've they're got done. It figured out. They're done. Oh, Brock's going to talk this one. Oh. oh. It should have been a little quicker. They've got to get they, just a yep. little quicker on the draw. we got to get a microphones and holsters <laughs> and do like the Old West. They well, just they don't flick that button quite quick enough. And, and I'm going to tell you, well, I think he's over there. Just He's just pulled his sift. He's pulled his sift, see, over there. He's yeah. just talking that He's just talking yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it won't take too long. Nope. No, no, no. All right. All right, here, here we go. Here's Brock. Well, we've got another impressive class of crossbred steers here to get things going. And uh, the young lady that wins the class, we thought did so quite handily, especially when you put him on the move. He just gets out and goes so much better than his contemporaries. Uh, but with that being said, we do think this calf is a little bit out there. Uh, he's freaky in the way he's made. I love the way his neck ties into his shoulder. He's really cool looking from the side, big bone. And as we said, he gets out and goes real well. When you get him behind him, he's really big up high. We'd maybe like to add a little more oomph in on the lower side of him. In fact, if you could compare these two steers on the top end, I think you'd have a really, really good one. Uh, but the one that starts off is a little more our kind. He's definitely a show steer, especially when she gets in park like that. Really comfortable place for us to start. The gold steer that comes into second, uh, this is a meat house. When you get in behind him, that thing's got a lot of meat on the top side of his skeleton. He's really bold constructed, uh, but with that being said, it shows when you get him out on the move. He's a little bolder in his shoulder, a little straighter in the angle to it. When he gets out and goes, he's just a little short and choppy. I think he bends his hind leg adequate, uh, but it's his front end that gets him in trouble when you set him into motion. It's probably due to the extra power that he's carrying. The calf that comes into third is one we thought if you peeled the hair off him, he might be even more impressive. But he is a little straighter in the angle to his shoulder, and he struggles a little worse than that gold one when you set him into motion. If we could clean him up on his structure on both ends, we'd really like that calf. You could maybe slide him up a spot. Uh, the two that round off the top five, the black one here gives you a really cool look from the profile. He's very well balanced, uh, but for us, his structure was the issue as well. He gets a little rigid on his ankles and short and choppy in his stride when you get him going, but a calf that's got muscle and look to be certain. Red calf that rounds off the class is the least haired, and that's not why he stood fifth in this top five, uh, but that's a pretty good animal under the hide. He's got some meat, he's got some body. He just also needs to be cleaned up in his structure. I know that's a common theme here in this top five, but if we could make him get out and go a little better, as you can see, he's a little bit rigid. Uh, if we could clean that up, you maybe slide him up a spot. Congratulations to your class two winner in the crossbred market steers, Sailor Norvell from the Amber Pocasset 4-H, followed by Raylan Unwin from Sulphur. In third, Kyler Pettigrew from Miller 4-H. Fourth, Asher Pollen from Norman. Fifth place, Cutter Bow from Yukon. In sixth, Lillian Masters from the Morrison FFA. Seventh, Darla Fessmeyer from Oklahoma Union. Eighth, Kale Dickens from the Hennessee FFA. Ninth, Shelby Patrick from the Woodward County 4-H. We now have your class three of your crossbred market steers. Make okay, we're back. Uh, the winner in class two there was uh, Miss Sailor Norvell. Uh, of course, Sailor is the daughter of Tyler Norvell, the director here of OYE, which is... Uh, Kind of a big deal for that young lady. Her her very first steer show, and boy, I tell you what, what a great calf uh, to win that class too. Um, uh, I found out that calf. So here I am out of a primo cow with, and that that calf's got big wild parts. He's big footed and stout built. Good calf. Weighed eleven fifty. Congratulations to Sailor. Second in that class was uh, Raylan Unwine. Uh, of course, our good friend Ray Unwine, my good buddy Ray Unwine. That's his little girl, and uh, she was second in class. And, again, that looks like probably an In God We Trust calf, peach-colored calf, weighing 11.65. So as we go into Class 3, uh, this is the final class of uh, our first division. We will be selecting our divisional champions following this class. Uh, we have Olivia Rollins, a black calf down here on the end. We've got 13 head in this class, and that's Olivia Rollins uh, from Tecumseh FFA, calf weighed 11.80. Hudson Hunt from the Tillman County 4-H on that silver calf weighing 11.87. 
Trayton Cordes from Cashin 4-H on 1188. And then the black and white calf right next to them, the little girl with the ponytail there, that's Sienna Salas from Nahavaho 4-H, or FFA. And that calf weighs 1189. Uh, young man with the black hat on there, that is Cade Weinrich from Mustang FFA. Calf weighs 1194. Then Canyon Dixon uh, with this big uh, uh, cream-colored calf here weighs 1195. Next to him uh, is the black, black calf weighing 1196. That's Clara Whitman from the El Reno uh, FFA. And then Cassidy Collins from Tishomingo on a calf weighing 1197. Quinn Cowley, uh, young man right there from Morrison 4-H, weighs 1198. Then Camden Weatherly uh, with, with K Pals 4-H with 1199. And then at the end of that, uh, young man in the white shirt there with that black and white calf, that's Bronk Fletcher. Uh, uh, Comanche County uh, 4-H at 1199. Of course, Bronk, uh, uh, young man, uh, uh, big time uh, uh, family there, uh, showing cattle down in that uh, in that southwest uh, uh, Oklahoma area. And then the white calf there, the cream colored calf, is Grace Harton from Medill, FFA on 1199. And also out of the same FFA chapter is Isaac Grimaldo from Medill FFA on 1199 pound calf on that blue roan, real pretty blue roan steer. So in this class, we have 13 head. They go from 1180 to 1199. So once again, uh, as we go through, uh, again, uh, beginning our day here, following this class, we're going to be uh, selecting our first division champion. These, this in this division, we go from uh, 1,000 to 1199. Okay. My cohort in crime had to sneak out for a while. Don't know where he ran off to. <laughs> Maybe I ought to pull a guest speaker in here. Who could I pull in here, Allison? Everybody looks a little sleepy this morning, don't they? <laughs> it's a rainy morning. I promise I won't give a weather report all day, but it is nice to have rain. We're our bull sales next Friday. Anytime it rains a week before the bull sale, it always adds about $500 to the average, so I'm happy. So I want to give some shout-outs to everybody. If you guys want uh, to uh, text us today, of course, you can text uh, Corey or I any comments or concerns don't get belligerent don't be ugly but <laughs> have we got our have we got our connection problem everybody was complaining about the connection was bad yesterday huh oh i know i know but you can go on you can go on oie's webpage and watch us you can go on facebook and watch us or you can get on the webcast and watch us and i've never had trouble with the webcast ever <laughs> so Brock and Bobby are standing in the middle of the ring right now. They're kind of uh, going to put these calves in motion. That, that's going to that's going to sift the wheat from the buckwheat right now. But there's some big old burly calves in this class. Just for uh, for those of you at home watching. As you go down the line through some of these cattle, uh, um, when we get into these weights, you know, we're creeping into 1,200 pounds, so these calves are going to start probably putting on some finish or should be having some finish on them. But here again, these are the these are the weights. This is kind of the ideal weight for a lot of these guys up in the Midwest. They can come down here and kind of find these calves that are in the right weight to go back to these big state fairs in 
August and September. And this, these calves are borderline still there. I think, you know, they're, if you can find one fresh and you can find one sound um, that kind of can hold through the summer, kick out and bring back in for these state fairs, um, these, are the, these are the ideal calves for that. Kind of going through these calves right here, there's a – a lot of differences when you get in this weight class and this and these divisions, this younger division. Um, big old calf going across there right now, that black and white calf. That is Bronk Fletcher's from Comanche County. He's kind of the burly. He's kind of the big man in this deal right here. They have got these cattle on the side profile now. And, of course, we want to thank all of our ring crew uh, that's, been in, uh, that's been helping uh, Bobby and get these cattle around the ring. They did a really good job yesterday. We had a few escapees yesterday, but nothing major. But... Uh, these guys have put in just as many miles or more miles than uh, than our judges did yesterday. So, so once again, for those of you that have never uh, witnessed this uh, evening, this evening uh, it is quite a production, full of pyrotechnics, and uh, we've got smoke and mirrors going on all night tonight. For the grand drive, they'll bring all these kids in that have won all their breed champions in all species in the market show this week. They'll bring in a big old stretch limousine. All those kids will be in that stretch limousine. They get out, and we've got rock music and fire and, and fireworks going off, and it'll be it's quite the spectacle. Uh, they've got a big uh, uh, iron uh, kind of scaffolding up here in the ceiling. It's got all the trophies already on it. Uh, and uh, it's pretty cool when they lower that down for all the trophies for these kids. And, of course, we give out over $350,000 in scholarships um, to these young people. Uh, you don't have to win uh, to get a scholarship in this in this uh, arena. Uh, and my hat's off to the great people of OYE and uh, everything that goes on with it. Um, it is a humongous production. I know we're in the, let's see, the 100th year was – 2015 so uh, we are in the 109th year of OYE and it is just keeps getting bigger and better every year so uh, so many so many people to thank uh, but uh, the major sponsors uh, that we have here uh, in the ring here today is Sunglow of course Sunglow is a humongous sponsor and we couldn't do it without the great people from Sunglow uh, of course, Express Ranches and Express Personnel Services, uh, Bob Funk and his team. Uh, hey, this is, uh, we couldn't do this without Mr. Funk, and what a great, great uh, man and a great uh, operation and great organization. And they they, they pour the dollars and the effort uh, into our young people of Oklahoma, and we are so thankful to have Mr. Funk and, uh, and his crew here. And um, um, now I'm being blessed. Oh, you're bringing me goodies? Oh, for her. Oh, God. So, anyway, so, hey, another thing uh, that reminds me, too, Blake Kennedy uh, from Kennedy Ventures just just uh, got up here a little bit ago, and he made it to the OYE, and we want to thank Blake for uh, all his efforts in getting the, the announcement that we had yesterday. We broke out that uh, the Cowboy Channel is going to be, uh, yep. going, going to be carrying um, – the Grand Drive tonight. So if you folks want to get on the app, on the Cowboy Channel app, or get online on cable, on RFD TV, uh, the same channel, the same company, we want to thank the Cowboy Channel for bringing us the national finals and all the rodeos. I think their big deal this summer is 100 rodeos in 100 days. And uh, the Cowboy Channel has been a huge, huge ad, um, addition to the, to the agricultural segment. I mean, what a great, what a great uh, friend to agriculture. And they're going to be carrying – the Grand Drive tonight on the Cowboy yep. Channel. 
I was wondering what the deal was on those rodeos. I was, I just came across it last night, and they were in North Dakota covering a, <laughs> a rodeo in uh, Valley City, North Dakota. Yep, yep. This summer they'll do 100 rodeos in 100 days also over the summer, and it's kind of fun, you know, in the evening kind of turn on the Cowboy Channel and see where they're at and what's going on. Of course, my good friend Kirby Snore, she's got her brand-new program going on now on RFD TV on the Cowboy oh, Channel. Yeah. I did not know. What's yeah, it's it? called Farm Her. Okay. And F A. R M H E R and it, and, it, and it highlights women in agriculture, farming, oh. farming women all over the United States. Very cool. Not to give my good friend a free plug on here, but uh, but uh, Kirby, of course, raised in the, in the in this business. Her family uh, yep. from Chowchilla, California, and uh, her and her two sisters uh, grew up in this business. And uh, and uh, what a great what a great young lady and what a great voice for agriculture, Miss mm-hmm. Kirby Snore going to be on the cowboy channel or or if you download the app cowboy channel plus you can watch it on your phone tonight um yeah justin mcgee brett carter and i had him on cattle drive live there um boy sure a huge advocate for uh, agriculture uh big time influential in the cowboy channel and the starting of it and uh rfd tv and what it's done does all the wrap-up shows for the in a far. Yep. I aspire to be Justin McKee. You do? Oh, what a great guy, too. Yeah. And, he's, and a fellow Kansan. He's from Coffeeville. He's from that Coffeeville area. But he li- he did a brief, brief stand up there close to Tulsa, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I shouldn't say brief. But he, that's, what, that's how Brett got to know him was uh, they were neighbors there up by uh, – oh, where did Brett used to live up there by Tulsa when he was working for Doc Tooth? Sepulpa, not Sepulpa. I don't think it was Sepulpa. I, don't I forget know. the name of the. But Justin, again, great, great young man, um, and uh, big time, big time supporter of agriculture and the voice of. He's he's got a great voice, not only a great talent, uh, but he believes in, in this business and the cattle business, the agricultural business, and of course, uh, it's always good to have someone that's on our team in a, in such a high profile position. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Well, there's a few more differences in this in this deal. That last calf kind of came to the top pretty easy, but here they're going to yeah. have to. They were just telling me the uh, the calf in third there, the silver calf. Is that a Weatherly boy? Yeah, that I is. They said, yeah. yeah, yep, yeah, from K Pals. Mm-hmm. Calf's got a good show steer look about him. Oh yeah. What is he, what does that calf weigh? He weighs uh eleven ninety nine, right at twelve. Eleven ninety nine. Hey Justin McKee is beef is oh, from, from oh, Lenapa. Oh I thought he was from Coffeeville. He's from Lenapa. Is that Kansas? Lenapa's Oklahoma. Oh, that's Oklahoma. There you go. So who sent you that? Who is that? I don't. I don't know. I can't even give them credit. Well, I don't it's a six two zero number. So that's a, a Kansas number. That's a Kansas number. I thought he was from Coffeeville. He's not very far from Coffeeville. He's from. He, he's, he's, he's not. He's, yeah. He tried to be a Kansas. He tried to be a South Coffeeville guy. Like you're <laughs> trying to be an Oklahoma. I am an Oklahoma. <laughs> I am in Oklahoma. You can't live here this long and not get kicked out. <laughs> he grew up in Edna. Where's that at? Class, uh, we've got a steer to start this class with that I think end to end, he just, he's got to win the class. Now, is there a couple flaws in this steer? Yes, I'd like to, I, I'll admit, he's got all the look in the world. You can't deny him that, and he's structurally sound when he goes in motion. He is not as stout in the lower one-third of his body as we think he should be. He's good behind his shoulders. He's good in his top line. Real fresh looking. Love his, uh, love his underline, the way his chest sits in him, the way it matches up with his flank. Good, good width from hooks to pins. He's just an obvious choice for us to start this class while admitting that we wish this calf had a little more true power in the lower part of his one-third of his body. This is a calf we'd love to start the class with, okay? I think Brock and I talked, I said, you know, we don't live in slick sheer country, but if that one's got enough depth aside, and maybe he doesn't, 
you just think you could whip the hair off that dude and, and go play. That thing is really, really good. And you could say, well, if you like him that well, why didn't you put him first? We, we got to soften him up inside. His barrel coming out of the top of his spine is good. He's got shape up high. I just wish that calf had a little more true uh, substance of body through the center part. I mean, his chest is good. His bone's good. His neck is good. He's getting a little bit of a width to his crest, but his neck comes out so, so awesome. Got some muscle out in his hip. I really, really like this calf. He goes first if we just could make him a little softer sided. <coughs> Excuse me. The steer in third, you've, you've heard the slang Brock and I have used, maybe me more, me more than Brock. This is just a meat and potato steer here. He's the roughest haired steer in the class, and that's not what we're here for, to decide who's got the best hair coat. We're hypocrites. We want them to be, we want them to be as good a haired as they can be, but we also, our job is to evaluate these things under their hide, and we really like this calf. Does he get a little plain and just a little vanilla looking? Besides his color, of course. Just up in his front, yeah, he does, but mid-body, mid rib shape, good enough from hooks to pins. Love the way the pastor and set in this steer, really good in his hock. Just a really, really good cattle. I like this old blue steer. He come in, he was on the far end when they come in. If this calf could go better out of his front end, then he probably goes ahead of the white steer. But he, he labors out of his front end. As you get behind his shoulders, I don't know why you'd want to change that steer very much. Deep, deep bodied, good rib shape, good from hooks to pins. Could widen his pins maybe, but he's level hip. Just really good. As you watch him go to the scale, you'll see he, he gets a little, little laborsome as he goes in motion. Need a little more freedom of movement out of that front. And then that causes him to want to get up in his spine just ever so slightly. Same here. We absolutely love the hip design of this calf right here. This calf is long-hipped, he's square-hipped, and if he could keep his ankles down, and I don't mind one that gets up on his ankles every tenth step or whatever the case, or a lot of times it, it parallels with nerves, but this calf has issues on his ankles, and I'd certainly like to change. Awesome, awesome calf, standing still, he's really, really good. I just got to make him a little different in the ground. You can see in order for him to go in motion, he has to swing that hind leg. He doesn't flex at his hock, and I think that's what's causing those ankles to go up. I would just like to make a comment about the seventh place steer going out. I complimented that young man. That is unequivocally the best handling steer in this class. I told that young man he did an awesome job feeding that calf. I'm talking about the young man with the cowboy hat and the green shirt on. That is the most commendable uh, handling steer that was in this class. Your class three crossbred market steers. Congratulations to your class winner, Clara. Whitman from the El Reno FFA, followed by Camden Weatherly from K Pals 4H. Third, Cassidy Collins from Tishomingo 4H. Fourth, Isaac Grimaldo from Medill FFA. Fifth, Bronk Fletcher from Comanche County. Sixth, Hudson Hunt from Tillman County 4H. Seventh, Kenya Dixon from Winniewood FFA. Eighth, Quinn Cowley from Morrison 4-H. Ninth, Cade Weinrich from the Mustang FFA. Tenth, Sienna Salas from Navajo FFA. Eleventh, Trayton Cordes from the Cashin 4-H. Twelfth, Grace Harton from Medill FFA. Thirteenth, Olivia Marlins from the Tecumseh FFA. We'll now show for your Division I Crossbred Market Steer Champion and Reserve Champion. Okay, guys, we are back, and uh, what a uh, great little lineup we got here in our lightweight division. We got Division I Champion coming on, winning that last class was Clara Whitman from the El Reno FFA, calf weight 1196, and second was Camden Weatherly from the Cape Owls 4-H on 1,199-pound calf. So our division winners right now coming in is Tegan Gibson from division from class one. Uh, that steer weighs 1,080. That's that uh, kind of smoky, uh, baldy calf. Winning class two was Sailor Norvell. Uh, that calf, that black and white calf, weighed 1,150. And that calf, uh, we found out, is a here I am out of a primo cow. Yep. And then uh, the calf that wins the last class again, of course, that was Clara Whitman from the El Reno FFA on 1,196-pound calf. So, nice little lineup on our Division One, Corey. Yes, it is. It really is. 
We were just uh, talking up there behind us, and uh, yeah, this Division One crossbreds is the depth of quality was probably as good as it's ever been. Right. And hey, I'm going to clarify something right now. I was right for once. What? Justin McKee is from Kansas. He grew up in yep. Edna, Kansas, which yep. is the home of Doug Paul. Yep. Scott Manley grew up right there east of Coffeyville. Back out here and get you a Division One cross champion and. Uh, just like yesterday, the quality kept coming, and it certainly has not been disappointing. The calf that comes out of that first class, as Dad said, uh, we say this a lot, but meat and potatoes. Got a lot of meat, got a lot of body, just a good, honest feeding calf with a lot of practicality. Then you come to your calf out of the second class, and you got a show steer in this one. Not only is he cool, Mark, but, boy, when she gets him parked, that thing is intense. I love the way when she gets his head jacked up, Love the way that neck ties into his shoulder. He just gives you a really cool look from the side. Then you get in behind him, he's really big up high. As we said in class, we'd like to power him up down low. We'd like to see him with a little more forerib and a little more punch through his lower quarter. But that's one there that gets out and moves so well. He gives you such a cool look from the side and he's got plenty of meat up top. Like we said, we power him up down low and it's game over. Uh, the orange calf that comes in second to him is probably a little more ideal for us in terms of power and body shape. That's kind of been what we were after uh, yesterday, and I feel like we're trying to continue that today. If we can change the angle to his shoulder and see him get out and go better, we might have a different story out here for this grand drive. We really like that orange steer, but his movement's just a little unacceptable for us today. We come back to our third class winner, and like our second class winner, he's a little out there in terms of his look. When she gets in park, that thing's cocky. He gives you a really balanced look from the side. Like our class winner, we would like to power him up, maybe even more so our class two winner. We would, if we could see this one with a little more power up high, he probably doesn't quite have as much as the steer out of the second class. But his look is elite. You set him into motion, it's elite. You get in behind him, he base narrows, and he needs a little more power everywhere. We're going to get another look and get you a top pair. <laughs> okay, well, we, they have discussed this uh, division, and... Uh, Bobby and Brock are. And then they'll go ahead and take, they'll have to take quite a few out of this division. Well, they're going to have to. To, yeah. uh, to get your true, you know, right, top right, right. 30 or whatever out of the crossbreds. Right. So we'll go. Uh, well, they've got, there was 20, there was 36 in this in this in division. In this division, mm -hmm. yep. So they'll probably take seven or eight probably. Yeah. Here. And then in the next division, there's uh, 30, 40. Mm -hmm. There's 40 in the next division, so similar. Yep. yep. And then the next division, well, I don't know if this class, if this, if this continues. I bet it doesn't. I bet they pulled them 1299s out, and they're just going to have one class of big ones. All right, they're going to walk out there and pick. Sailor the Norvell. Be your champion division that, one. You bet. Okay. So Sailor Norvell on a Here I Am Primo calf. She's got a big old smile on her face when she's coming out of there. Cute little old thing. That is a good calf. Big parts, wild neck. He is a Here I Am out of a Primo cow. And second in that class he was, was. He was lot one in Laramie Priest sale. Oh, he was. Yep. I did, somebody just told me that up okay. above there. Well, that it, the next one in class second to her was the sailor was Raylan Unwine. Of course, Ray Unwine, a good friend of ours, his little girl with that mm -hmm. big, probably here, probably in God we trust. I, now that one there is it in I God would we trust. That would be an in God. I we trust. would agree. Yeah, peach colored calf, big burly, big bodied, really good hipped and awesome structured. Jakey likey that one. Yeah, <laughs> he's a wide built. They. Uh, they talked to him in the Grand Drive here, um, said he was the wide build option of that class. Not as quite as good looking as that black steer they used, but they're going to come down here. Looks like take Division Three. Who mm -hmm. got there, Jake? They got their eye on him. That's Clara Whitman from the El Reno FFA. And Clara Whitman on 1,196-pound calf is going to be your reserve champion. Congratulations yep. to Sailor and to Clara. That brings in... Witherspoon boy. Yep. Yeah. 
Those two kids wouldn't be very far apart. They would live pretty close to each other. Amber Polkast at El Reno ain't that far apart. Okay, so now they're talking. Now they're going to tell the boys how many they need to pick. Yeah. So now they've pulled in. Um, they've now Camden Weatherly from the Cape House 4-H. He comes in following Clara, and he's going to be your third the way it looks. Yes, sir. So congratulations to Camden. He makes the sale. He's the third high steer in this division. Following him is Cassidy Collins from Tishomingo. They pull, they pull little Cassidy in there. Now they're going to go get that peach get colored that calf. On yep. Unwins. Yep. There he goes, Raylan Unwin. Fourth in this division. Yeah. Got the legend Todd Kennedy just walked up on us. Yep. The chief, the big chief. He's been eating at the Hog Show buffet over there. Yeah. How do you get those people to bring you so much food over there? <laughs> Where's Tahine at? Where's Tahine at today? Full She's not here. Cinnamon rolls. Tahine's not here. Tahine better bring some cinnamon rolls. Yep. <laughs> Well, fifth overall is going to be your class winner from class one. That's Tegan Gibson from the Yale FFA. Congratulations to Tegan. Tegan four. makes the sale. Four division. There's three classes in the first one. There's four classes in the rest of them. I would say three, four-ish. Yeah, three. That's, that's hopefully by three. So following Tegan is uh, Nikki Grubbs from the Watonga FFA on that black and white calf. Looks like Brock's going to go pick the third calf out of the second, or, yeah, the fourth calf out of the second division. So that, um, the third calf, that's Tyler Pettigrew. So little Tyler Pettigrew here, 1,153-pound calf with that birthmarks on him. He's going to be the fifth one in this division. Looks like we're going to do a sixth one yet. No, no, he is sick. Anyway, three, four. That is the sixth one. Looks like we're doing a seventh. So he's sixth. So looks like we're going to do one more. So again, first in this division was Sailor Norvell, then Clara Whitman, then Camden Weatherly, Raylan Unwin, Tegan Gibson, and Kyler Pettigrew. It looks like we got to have one more picked. Okie dokie. Looks like I'm getting. Okay, Bobby is going to go select the young man that was second in class one. That's Nikki Grubbs. He will be seventh in this division, and I think that is going to finish our division. Looks like, no, looks like they're going to take eight. Wow. So then they, following uh, Nikki in that division, third in that class was Camden Collins from Atoka with the, the white spotted painted up calf right there. And that is looks like the calf they're going to take. So, little Miss Camden Collins from Atoka FF or 4H, she's going to be eighth in this class, in this division. I apologize. I think they take a bunch of extra calves in this just to uh, as backups. <laughs> well. I just got, I just was reminded of something. And and so the ninth one is going to be, looks like Cassidy Collins. Cassidy Collins 
So it looks like Cassidy is going to follow Cayman, Cayman, and those two sisters are going to both make the sale. So congratulations to them. Looks like they're going to do 10. Well, I just have gotten a little tidbit of information that reminded me of something, and I guess I completely forgot that too. But um, my dear friend, Mr. Gerald Callahan, who God bless his soul, a man that uh, – um, we lost this last uh, spring, or this last fall, I guess, and uh, this would be the first OYE without J.C. running around here, and uh, I've just been reminded that Gerald Callahan was also from Edna, Kansas. So a lot of famous people come from Edna, Kansas, but uh, none famous more famous than Justin McKee and Gerald Callahan. So the 11th calf picked, or 10th calf picked out of this division would be um, Shelby be Shelby Patrick. No, that's not right. That's Cutter Bow. That's Cutter Bow. Well, he was fifth. That's Cutter Bow. He is selected and to make the sale. So I bet his mom and dad, Jason and April, they're probably really tickled about that young man getting the sale. Hey, I was also reminded of something else. Guess who else was from Edna? Who who else was from Edna? The great Gerald Callahan. Oh, was he really? No He's care. a Kansan. And he don't he probably don't want me splattering yeah. out all over the world, but you know what? He ain't here to get on me. Yep. But I love him. I miss him. Okay. Going into the next division. They took 10 out of that division. They ten. did. Yeah, I knew they'd, they'd take quite a few. I mean, that, probably alternates, right? Yeah. Because they'll take, I'm going to say in the big 30s, maybe 40. They'll, they'll take quite a few crossbreds. Okay. Okay, so the next division, Corey, uh, we're going from 1210 to 1239 in this class. 1210 to 1239. Yep. Uh, we've got 13 head in this class. And the first calf down there, the yellow and white painted up calf, that's Sarah Christian from Stonewall 4-H. Her calf weighs 1210, also weighing 1210. Next to her is that uh, that uh, gray painted up calf. That's Ashton Connor from Coweta, FFA. Next to uh, Ashton is Jackson Zorger. Uh, big man, he had some couple really good calves yesterday. I think he even maybe had a reserve division yesterday uh, from Duke FFA. Uh, weighing 1219, also weighing 1219, is Paisley Shaw from the Amber Pocasset 4-H. Next is Landry Ramey from the Tonkawa FFA on a 1,221-pound calf. Next to Ray Landry is Leah Dickens, Hennessy FFA on 1,224-pound calf. Next calf is Dalton Garcia. Of course, Dalton's standing right here in, in front of us, uh, solid black calf from El Reno. Calf weighs 1225. Then the gold calf right here in front of us is Jaden Washman from Shattuck, FFA. That calf also weighs 1225. The black and white, black, black, black baldy calf is David Workman from Stonewall 4-H on a 1,230 pound calf. And then Waylon Dishman on the black and white big burly calf right here from Porham, FFA. And that calf weighs 1235. A uh, young, cute little blonde right there with the solid black calf. That's Briley Breckenridge from Westville 4-H on a 1,238-pound calf. And then Reagan Bowles from Verdon uh, weighs 1,239. And the last calf in the class is Cason uh, Abernathy from Altus FFA, way down in the southwest part of the state on a 1,239-pound calf. So 13 head, and they go from 1,210 to 1,239. Absolutely. I see our judge, uh, <clears throat> Bob May, went without a tie today. Yeah. Yep. Hey, you can't top the one he had yesterday. I mean, yeah. why even try? Yep. Seriously. Think, he didn't think, want to uh, disappoint the crowd by oh, having, an inferior, having an inferior tie on. <laughs> You're going to have to get home, buddy. This little, this little nor'easter's coming through South Dakota. Yeah, so, yeah. The, my wife just said they've moved it back to Sunday and Monday, basically, oh, okay. basically now. But it's still going to be uh, 
be a sizable amount of snow, it sounds, which we need moisture. Right. You're just, boy, piling that white stuff up. <sighs> this time of year. Of fun. Yeah. This time of year sucks. Mm -hmm. yep. Everybody wants spring to get here, and then you get t 24 inches of snow dumped on you. What does the weather look like? Next weekend or next good. Friday for good. the for the, uh, good. the bull sale. Good. good. Looks uh, good. Upper 50s, low 60s. Oh, great. Yeah. Yep. Come, It'll be good. Come down and enjoy this nice Oklahoma weather again. Hey, we they, they said it's it's really damp out in tie outs here. <laughs> Moist. Mm. <laughs> Need the tall rubber boots, not the short ones. <laughs> Well, it looked it looked like this morning when we were coming in here, it looked like it was going to set in and do it all day. So, mm -hmm. which is good. We need it. We love mud in Oklahoma. Makes that wheat grow. For those guys, Absolutely. for those for those of you that are watching on Walton and don't understand Oklahoma agriculture, we like to graze that wheat off till about the first of April, and then we just let it go and we try to make seed off of it. Yep. But it's really planted in the ground for cover and for pasture. But if they get moisture, a lot of times oh, yeah. they'll get a good crop. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, that that wheat is good good feed. Oh. Them stalker cattle and that's cows. Why, and that's good. why them calves are bringing so oh, much yeah. money. Them yeah. four-weight calves bringing three, three, hunt, three bucks to three three twenty-five. They're all coming south. Okay, well, Bobby's gone down and handled these calves. He's at the end down here. Brock's following him. Yep. Oh, boy. Brock put his hands on that last one, and that calf hopped up the ground two feet on his back end. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't really kick at him. I think it just started. Reared up? Yeah. Did a little bunny hop. <laughs> Hey, it's your favorite song. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Dancing Queen in who, the background. Okay, $10,000 question. Who sings, sing who sings this? Who sings Dancing nah, Queen? You see that? Let's bet dinner. Yeah, Let's bet dinner. That, I'll, I, I'm not even going to tempt that. I Come have on. no idea. That's back ABBA. from the ABBA. What, ABBA. Yep. Don't tell me. I could me see you, you with a one of them leisure shoots on doing – you know that John Travolta disco. I could see you king of the disco back in the eighties, weren't you? You were. proud of it? Yeah, I guarantee you. I was. I could cut a rug. <laughs> John Travolta with Saturday long, Night Fever, curly locks. Saturday Night Fever. Saturday Night Fever, great one of the greatest movies ever. That movie came out my junior year in high school. <laughs> so it was kind of a big deal. Okay. So now we're getting into these uh, this division. You know, we're going to start getting some burlier calves coming in here. And pretty good calf right here. This yellow calf's nice. Way well, stout. Look at the bone mm -hmm. on that calf. Well fit, well presented. Yeah, he is stout. There was a black steer when they come in. That That's that Jaden Washam from Shattuck. Is it, the, is it right? The one right here, yeah. This black calf here? That one with the young man that's yeah. got. That's Case and Abernathy from yeah. Altus. That's a good calf, too. Kind of bluish color, isn't he? Or no, I'm talking about what? What's three three fifty one? Yeah, yeah. That That's, calf's black as the ace of spades. Oh, I thought he looked like he was kind of that one right ahead of him's blue color. Oh. <laughs> Somebody just texted me said my senior prom was the theme fire. <laughs> 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 I won't say who it was, but he's an idiot. <laughs>
Yeah, the year before it was the wheel. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That's a good calf. Show steer, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he's got the big yeah, pipe, too, think now. They'd like, what, what's that calf weighing? 12, 12.39. 12.39. And yeah. that yellow calf, that big yellow calf that came through here was 12.25. 12.25. Right here, coming right yep. here. Yep. Those are the two. Mm-hmm. Don't have anything about Division One on the pulse yet. Yeah, we could probably get some information that way if they give it. Everybody was giving me, everybody was giving me trouble yesterday about not giving the sires and dams, but we don't know them. They don't give us that. Over like over in the hog barn, they make those kids fill all that out. Yep. Yeah. We got to go through the back channels. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, they moved that. Good black calf there. That what was that boy's name? That one we talked about. Yeah, that's uh, last that's one. Abernathy. Abernathy. K Case and Abernathy. Yeah. They moved that one up to the top, to the one hole. It's a pretty nice calf. Really good calf. I guess they don't like my big burly calf here. Probably doesn't move good enough. The yellow calf? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's got on the stand. He's pretty he's good. A, pretty awesome, and he's got a lot of muscle. That Bob's big on them feet. And oh, I his know. One back, left foot could yep. be just a little better. Yeah. But I think, yeah, Brog's pointing at him, and he's pointing south. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> he's going head. He going head up there ways anyway. Yeah. That calf is just, he just got way more. Yeah, that's what Brock just, he put his hands far apart and he pointed south. <laughs> I think that means he's going to head up there and be either second or third. Slide him up a little bit.
Oh, watch out. Whoa, that's lad. that calf that jumps. Yeah. Bobby's talking to that girl with the yellow calf. <laughs> yeah, how about it? <laughs> Down to five. Brock's telling Bobby how it needs to be done. Now, now Bob's going to tell Brock how it will be done. Okay, so coming into fifth. And that's Landry Ramey. Oh, here's Brock. Here and start our second crossbred division. And boy, we got a really good one here to start this class. And he really just fits the mold to what we've been looking for. He's got that show steer look from the side. He's really balanced and deep and soft through his center portion. He gets out and goes really, really well. We love the way he sets him down when he gets into motion. Then you get in behind him. He's got more than enough power to go along with it. Takes it down to a good base with just a really good calf to start the class. That's a good show steer. Calf that comes into second is another one that fits the mold of what we've been looking for. And actually, he's probably a little more to be desired of what we've been hunting. However, his front end structure, as you can tell, my dad asked this young lady as she was walking him to let his head down a little bit and slow him up. Maybe it'd help. And it did help, but you can see it standing right there. He toes out, he stands plenty wide. That angle to his shoulder isn't quite correct as we would like to see it. You get in behind him, that thing's got a ton of power. We love the way it comes out of his spine into a bold rib cage. Uh, but if we can fix that structure on that one, uh, we send him up to the top of the class. Calf that comes third, the debate between third and fourth. Uh, we liked this fourth place calf originally, but as the class went on, his structure just didn't hold up. He's a little straight off of both ends. Calf that in front of him isn't perfect structured either, but when you get behind him, he carries a little more punch down low. He's a little bit smoother in his pattern, although he doesn't have quite the hair coat as the calf that came into fourth. Like we said, we really like this calf. He's got a presence about him from the side. Just a little straight off both ends, and it shows when he goes. He gets a little short in his stride. He wants to camp up in his top when you get him moving. Uh, the calf that rounds off the top five is also another smooth pattern, well-balanced type of calf. He maybe does get a little bit of chest floor into him, but he's also deep and through the center of his body. He was the least muscular of the fifth of the five when you get in behind him. He needs more from hooks to pins. He needs more down his top, and we need to see him with more lower shape as well. Excellent top five in the second division. Nice job. Congratulations over here in your crossbred market steer. Your class four winner, Kaysen Abernathy from the Altus FFA. Followed by Jaden Washman from Shattuck FFA. Third, Reagan Bowles from Verdon. Fourth, Jackson Zorger from the Duke FFA. Fifth, Landry Ramey from Tonkawa. Sixth, Briley Breckenridge from Westville 4 H. Seventh place, Ashton Connor from Coweta. Eighth, Waylon Dishman from the Porum FFA. In ninth, Paisley Shaw from the Amber Pocasset 4 H. Tenth, Leah Dickens from Hennessee. Eleventh, David Workman from the Stonewall 4 H. 12th, Sarah Christian from Stonewall. 13th, Dalton Garcia from El Reno. 
FFA. We'll now move to class five of your crossbred market steers. Class five. Okay, Corey, uh, winning that first class in our Division Two is uh, out of that big class of 13 was Cason Abernathy, Altus FFA, really good, awesome structured, really good looking calf, solid black calf weighing 12.39, and second was that uh, that honey colored Jaden Washman from Shattuck FFA on that really big stout burly calf weighing 12.25. So walking in the ring now is um, this would be our class basically five. Yep. Today. Um, so this is uh, two more classes in this division. Yep. Twelve forty to twelve sixty nine. Yep. We got Savannah Warren from Cleveland County 4-H. That's down by Norman. Uh, all these yellow calves in this first these first seven calves are all yellow or cream colored. Samantha Graves from Washington County 4-H on a 1,242 pound calf. Then Carson Caldwell, big young kid, uh, tall kid right there from Chickasha, weighing 1,249. Cashin Bashir from Worcester 4-H on a 1,254 pound calf. Paxton Mallory from Guthrie FFA on a 1,257 pound calf. And Colin Coach from Tushka FFA uh, on a 1,258 pound calf. Then comes uh, Eli Hanks from the Olive um, FFA, uh, 1,260 pounds. Uh, and then we go, uh, which is this black calf right here in front of me, and then go to Hunter McDaniel. Uh, Hunter's got this uh, painted up uh, smoke or silver colored calf from Elgin, FFA weighing 1,264. And then you've got the solid black calf. That's Paige Daub from Carter County uh, 4-H. Again, um, Carter County, 1,265-pound uh, um, calf. Then you got Lucy Travis from Mangum, way down in the southwest part of the state, 1,265-pound calf. Briley Fuss from Twin Mounds 4-H. Uh, her brothers had a pretty good day yesterday, having two division champions, uh, 1,268. Then you got Delaney Troyer from Adair FFA. That calf weighs 1,269. Sarah Durbin from Cash uh, down by Lawton weighs 1,269. And then final up, that's Clara Whitman from the El Reno FFA on a 1,269 pound calf. Of course, Clara was reserve in Division One. I. I thought it was his. <laughs> so. Well, by far the deepest class we've had uh, uh, as of the last. Who who did you say the girl in the green was? What's that? Third from the end. Well, I think she was second. I think she flip flopped. What's his tag number on his ear? Mm, he's got his ears ahead. Flip his ear, we'll say, we ain't able to tell. There must be one out. Somebody's out of this deal because there's only 13 in the ring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's the girl there that, that the, rounds out the class? That is Clara Whitman from yep. El Reno. She's the one that had to reserve Division One champion calf. Okay. 61. So that is Briley Fuss. That's the little Fuss girl. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. A lot of color in this class. A lot of color. Lots of color. Yeah, they tell me that these yellows and whites are the hardest thing this time of year to get to keep their hair coats. And, boy, that doesn't scare them off from, from feeding that color. <laughs> no, not here they don't. Yeah. You know what we haven't seen a lot of is red ones. Yep. We haven't yep. seen a lot of red calves. And you, normally in Oklahoma we'll find a lot of red calves. There's getting to be a few more popular red bulls that, uh, you know, hopefully yeah. they'll, you get to see. But, you know, I I never thought about that until a couple of years ago. Brandon Horn told me that, that the red color pattern, it's hard to get quality cherry red show steers. And when you think about it, there's a lot of, lots of silver, lots of yellows, dang sure blacks, and, and, but, boy, 
good red ones are few and far between. Yeah, they're hard to find. Uh, and when you do find a good one, it's hard to beat them. Shockey's had that one. Mm -hmm. That, that one, one year Denver. in Denver. Charlotte is probably one of the best ones of those colors that's been. Yep. That but was the year. That was the year. That was the year, the four years that, that Baylor won, Shiloh won, Baylor won, Shiloh won. They went back and forth, back and oh, forth, back four and forth. years in a row. Yep. How about it? Yep. Yeah, Mark Hogue on the microphone in class, he said that calf was a zoo animal because he was, what, well, i got to remember this, he had feet like a rhinoceros, yep. bone like an elephant, body like a gorilla, something like that, yeah. It was three different types of animals. One of the best terms I've ever heard, and I hope I get to use this someday. Mark Hogue said in Fort Worth, this one's way more gorilla and a lot less ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> they come up with some animated terms anymore. Yeah. Look at the good old boys club up there. Yep, yeah. they're gathering up. They are there. D-Ron made it today. Yep. Is that D-Ron sitting up yeah. right next to him? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy oh, there's a he, lot of old stories told oh, up there there's now. a bunch of lies being told up there right yeah. now i remember when i wonder how yeah. many times that said today i mean tell back you. in the day <laughs> they're, right, they're, point, they're pointing down here they know we're talking about them <laughs> oh boy maybe we can get him down here to we can interview him. Oh, we di I did last year for just a little bit, just a little bit. It's hard to pry a word out of them them guys. Oh, here comes Daddy Fuss. <laughs> Sit right there. Yeah. Hey, don't be coaching her. She's fine. Leave her alone. <laughs> Pay one thing about you, Fuss. Your kids are cute, but they ain't very tall. <laughs> this one right here. She's about to pass him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one? Whose is that? What's this black cap? Huh? Isn't that yours? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Mitch's daughter. Oh, that's not one of yours. Oh, okay. I th well, I thought all fusses. <laughs> all fusses are created equal. All fusses are created equal. <laughs> Here, I'll get out of your way so you can see the stock. <laughs> Ring staff has uh, new sets of jackets today. Yeah, they're all wearing. Ring staff's got all new jackets today. Yes, funny we didn't get had. ours. Yeah. Boy, it's yeah. It was hot yesterday. And actually, yesterday they had full fledged jackets. Today yeah. they're vests. They're vests. So it got a little warm yesterday. Yep. They backed off the. That'd be hot. Whoa, 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 steer. That calf had a bigger foot. He'd be pretty rock star, but he's got little feet. That is a nice calf. Said he's winning doubt. Winning doubt. Yep. Whoa, whoa, easy there. Easy there, big fella. How widespread is the rain today? Well, let's look. Give you a weather report here from OYE. Radar. Yep, pretty widespread. <laughs> well, 
Looks like about half the state is covered in water. And I know. It's good rain. Rain's good anytime we can get it, huh, Matthew? So we're standing here with the the father of two divisional winners yesterday. Them fuss boys come walking in here. Oh, one's your nephew. Oh. He's he did, did your son get a new hat? He looks like he got a new hat. So he got him a new one and cut the brim down to three inches. Well, easy, easy. Well, watch out, watch out. Oh, boy. Boy, I'm telling you what now. Boy, she look just at, got shoved in front of And look at that calf just stood there. Oh, boy. Is she okay? Oh, that calf just ran right over her. Boy, I mean, didn't end up. She got shoved to the side of the yep, end, but she yep. got pushed in front of him for 20 feet, I bet. She couldn't, yeah, she was caught. Well, I think she's going to be okay. She's just, mm. she's going to be okay. Mom and dad are coming in. Yeah, mom and dad are coming in. And Bob Bob, give his words of encouragement. Yep. She's trying to she, and she get herself collected a little one, bit. She kind of got surprised. It wasn't her calf. It was a calf behind her that ran over oh it was yeah it's not her calf her calf's the yellow or the silver calf oh i got you and that calf you. just stood there when she got hit that calf just stood oh. there got her glasses knocked off that a girl wow. that a girl hey that'll be a that, story she that, talks about 20 right. years from 20 yep. years from now yep that is uh sarah durbin that is sarah durbin from the cash ffa she just happened to be in the wrong place. She just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and got blindsided. Good job, Sarah. Boy, that's uh I'm not sure you and I would have popped up that quick. I'll guarantee you. <laughs> I'll guarantee you they'd had to bring a freaking <laughs> truck in here. <laughs> yeah. They'd, they'd have carted they'd me did, off. They'd have had to go get that crane over there from that new building and <laughs> done a little lifting, heavy lifting. Not a girl. She's a trooper now. That old calf just stood right there. He did not move a muscle. When she got hit, he did not move. And to make matters worse, she's going to be last in class. Yep. I think they had actually pulled her. Oh, and, and she, she was she coming. Taken, oh. She had taken two steps this away. I got you. And to put her calf in place, and that's the time that black calf bolted. Oh, my. And got blindsided. Mm -hmm. Yep. She got blindsided kind of like May's going to get blindsided yep. this summer. Mm-hmm. What did, what He's did, got it coming. What did they call that? <laughs> Hmm? He's what got it coming. They call that? He's got it coming this summer. He's got it coming. Hey, did your goat win? Did your goat win? Yeah, they don't don't announce it till tonight. I know. <laughs> so this black calf must be a Glover calf. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Dustin's son, he, he misses showing because he is a coaching yeah. son of a gun. I mean, coaching needs a referee shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious.
that calf looks good. He does. Who who is that there in the fourth hole? Well, I'm well, going to guess that's him. Out, yeah. I know that's Hunter McDaniel. Hunter McDaniel. They're going to walk him again. That black calf. Walk seven of them. I like the way this lamb judge over here pulls, sifts them cat, them goats yeah. or them sheep off of there, and then he talks to those kids before yeah. he releases. Not them. every one of them, but he. Yep. Some of the top ones that he's dismissing, he just kind of. Yep. Talks them very briefly. Which one was Fusses in this class? Fusses is this. Uh, That's his niece with yeah. the black steer. His niece is with the black steer, but, but it's one of these. That one right there. That yellow one. Right there, yep. That was the second one. That's that Samantha. That's Samantha Graves mm -hmm. from Washington County. Not to be confused with the Samantha Graves from Missouri. Not to be confused. Because if she's from Missouri, she's ineligible. Yep. We need to check her birth certificate. Yeah, we need to check her, her ad. We need to check her postmark. Yeah. Address <laughs> and birth Post, certificate. Yep. Whoa. Whoa! Watch out, God buddy. Dang, that's that same calf. Yeah, it is the same one. It's the same it? calf. The one down here, the Fuss Girls. That's, I think that's the first time that calf's got away. I bet you that rain's just got them a little bit uh, on edge today. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Well, it got them feeling good. Well, they're taking a little time. Yeah, yeah, they really are. They actually got still got six of them out here. So they've got the Clara Whitman calf that that uh, is kind of acting up a little bit. They got him up there in first hole, and then they got Samantha Graves. They've got the uh, Hunter McDaniel from from Elgin there, black calf. Well, they just pulled him in. So he's going to be sixth. And then they're pulling in the Clara Whitman calf. He's going to be fifth. Well, they're liking that calf in third hole right now way more than I am. He's a little taller, prettier, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And they're going to pull that. They're going to pull that little uh, fuss girl up to first. That's Briley Fuss from the Twin Mounds 4 8s That's uh, Matt says that's his niece. It's his brother's little girl. She is going to the front of the class. Then we're going to have an orange, a silver, and a white. Yeah.
I think they got them placed now. They just wait and get that one. Or no, they just pulled them up and oh, did the old, to look at did the side by side comparison. They did that several times yesterday. Yesterday, when it was close, they'd pull them up beside each other and haven't combed on anything today. Sixty-seven. Started the day yesterday. Bobby was he combed them all up and. Well, he's grabbing the he's microphone. Yep. So I'd like to start out by saying this class, this was a rough one. And, I, and what I mean by that is we saw a few classes like this yesterday. The last class, they, they kind of sorted themselves pretty handily, okay? You got some cream on the top. And this class is high quality from here to that end. It truly is. There's a couple of them got a little straight on us down that way. But we wanted to get it right in our minds. And so with that being said, I half, give you a half apology for taking quite that long. I mean, I, we needed to do it to get it right in our mind. So with that being said, we, we both agreed from the start that these two were going to come to the top of the class after we handled them. Good, good handle to them. The base width is just better on this gold steer. They're both high quality. If you want to switch them, hey, go for it. When that little girl gets her steer led good, uh, it's okay. When not, he's got a little more chest bone there, and he's got a little more stuff right under his jowl there, under his jaw, I guess. Better not talk pig terms in here. But when we got them right up be beside each other, it was definitive. They're just more top and loin and true shape down to the hock on this gold steer. Now, one thing that Brock noticed it when, when we went out around, he's a little pigeon-toed, and you could say, well, that's nitpicking. It, it is. It's nitpicking, but we just want to describe what we're seeing absolutely love that steer his density through the mid part of his body he lays into his shoulder good it, even though he pigeon toes he stands just a nickel wide on that front end but when you compare these two steers the width between the front legs and the back he just got more lower one-third of density in his body and to me that's not even arguable a heck of a pair of steers this steer that comes in second he's really good i mean you're there in the stands you can see what we can see really fresh to the touch, good behind his shoulders. He's good in his underline. Yeah, his chest bone and chest floor sits a little lower, so you could say maybe he doesn't balance up just perfect, but I'm sure not beating him just for that reason. I'm beating him just because we got two steers that can get out and go, and we're gonna go with the steer that's got more power. This steer here, this white steer, he absolutely grows on you. That calf, you know, he's lost most of his hair. He's got no hair from his midrib forward other than a little glob of hair there. Whoever got this calf ready did an awesome job because his hair's getting pretty patchy. He comes out nice out of the top of his shoulder. We think both these steers are, are adequate in their bone. Where we think the differentiating factor, while we like both these steers a great deal, we think there's more natural muscle shape under the hide on the white one, and we think his barrel's a little truer. It's got a little more roundness to it, sets low. Both of them are deep enough bodied, but we think the overall rib shape of this steer and actual muscle dimension under that hide is better on the white one. <coughs> we like this steer from the start. When he come in, we liked him. We'd like to relax his tail head just a little bit. And I think if we're going to put him in third, and we considered it, we did. He was standing in third before we switched him. I'd want to put a little bigger foot under him, but more so than that, we could have lived with that. I, I need to make, make his midsection more dense, a little more roundness to that rib shape and to his cage. That's, that's an awesome five steers there. Congratulations to your Class 5 winner in the crossbred market steer, Samantha Graves from the Washington County 4-H. Followed by Briley Fuss from Twins Mound, 4-H. In third, Paxton Mallory from Guthrie, FFA. Fourth, Cashin Bashir from Worcester. Fifth place, Clara Whitman from the El Reno, FFA. Sixth, Hunter McDaniel from Elgin. Seventh, Paige Dobby from Carter County, 4-H. Eighth, Samantha Warren from Cleveland County, 4-H. In ninth place, Colin Coates from Tushka, FFA. Tenth, Carson Caldwell from the Chickasha, FFA. Eleventh, Isabella Poindexter from Shattuck. Twelfth, Lucy Travis from the Mangum, FFA. Thirteenth, Sarah Durbin from Cash, FFA. We'll now move to your class six of 
your crossbred market steers, class six crossbred market steers. Okay, hey, uh, class winner in our last class against Samantha Graves in the class five uh, of our second division. That was, uh, she's from Washington County, uh, 4-H, and that calf weighed 12.42 on that big yellow calf. And then uh, Briley Fuss uh, from Twin Mounds 4-H was second in that class at 12.68. Coming in the ring now is class six. Uh, this is our uh, third class of this second division. That first calf is Drake McPhail from Schneider FFA, Schneider FFA um, with a 1,274 pound calf. Then Jace Hawk from Rogers County Young Cattlemen's. That's 1,274. And the young man in the blue shirt there with that black calf, that's James uh, Edlin from Rock Creek 4 H. And then you got Addie Thompson on that black baldy calf from Prague FFA on 1,280. Case and Crump from Wetumpka, 1,284. And then a real burly calf coming in there. That's Trip Yoakum from Sepulpa FFA and Trip Steer weighs 12.89. The yellow calf coming in here, the first yellow calf in this class, that is Case Walterscheid from Duke 4-H. That calf weighs 12.91. Then Emma Case with this gray calf from Moreland FFA weighing 12.92. A young man in the green shirt here, that's Chisholm Setzer from Hobart 4-H. That calf weighs 12.92. Then you got a black calf from Regan Adams from Durant 4-H with 1298, and then the paint calf coming in. The white and gold paint calf is Sadie Plague from Guthrie FFA. Calf weighs 1298, and then Mason Keeling from the Valiant FFA. That calf weighs 1298, and the young man in the cowboy hat that's Caden Brockride from Grandfield FFA, and that calf also weighs 1298. So 13 calves in this class, Corey. And next class we've got eight calves, all we're going to weigh 1299. All, so there's one pound yep. difference, but they broke them calves away from this class. So, yeah. what, what's the boy here in the green? That is Set, self? Setzer, Setzer, Chisholm Setzer from Hobart. Okay. Good calf. So we're getting as close to 1,300 as we're going to get today in yeah, this class. Yeah. Or is that the nope, next class? Next that's class. the next class. Yeah. Yep. yeah this, so there's, this there's division's going to be the last four, under 1,300. The last four calves in this class mm -hmm. all weigh 1,298. Oh. And all eight calves in the next class are all 1,299. Okay. So they could have broke. They could have broke. Yep. Those four calves in with them last four. The next mm -hmm. eight made a 12. Except yep. they chose to put these in, made 13 here, and we got eight in the next class. So, yep. But the next class is they can't talk about weight because they all weigh the same. There's eight of them. Mm -hmm. They're getting the <clears throat> getting the top shape and the width in them. Yeah, they are. Heavier they get. This calf's burly. Yeah, well, he is. He's like a box. That's, is that Harlan? That's Harlan's boy? son. Trip. Harlan, That's Trip. Yep. yep. That's little Trip. The tougher the classes get, it sure seems like the number of people coaching goes up exponentially. Oh, yeah, there's lots of coaching going on. We ought to hand out referee shirts here yeah. today. Yep. That's for sure. <laughs> Stops, it gets a little like he is right now. He gets just a little easy on the loin. He's got a 
down a little tight. He, he's not quite as smooth down that top. He doesn't go quite as good into his loin from his uh, uh, last rib and even in from his loin into his hip. Either way, if we could smooth that out just a little bit, I think he can move on. Does he have enough to take over take our first place? I don't think so, but I think he makes it closer between second and third. Can we smooth that out and put that there? I don't think he's as naturally wide as the first, second, third. I don't think he's quite as neat as the way his top shape and top line is made in comparison to the one in third. If we get the one in fifth and one that really handles good as far as muscles concerned, we put this one in motion and his front end does fall down and fall out and just a little bit. This one gets a little straight on both ends, a little straight in his hock, a little straight in his shoulder. I'd like to make him a little more. Uh, his angle's a little different when we look at him from the side and we put him in motion. Have you heard what time the grand drive starts tonight? Nobody said a word. You know what time the grand drive? Five o'clock? No way. Oh, scholarships, scholarships. start at five o'clock. What time will the show begin? Six? Is that auctioneer talk? What? It is? Holy buckets. What? I asked her what time's the show start, and she goes. Oh, she did? Yeah. Sophisticated salesperson hey, she's, here. Hey, she's. She gave me the. Oh, yeah, she's got. She's got more. Sign yeah, she's six. got more. Uh, she's got more save than we want to give her credit for. Oh, we got one bucking playing again. Whoop. Two of them. He was about to head, head to the, the sheep, sheep ring. Show. And they got the easy. Boy, oh. he just, he's not wild. He's just bucking. Well, he about ran over that little blonde. Boy, he did. We got two loose now. Yep. We got one. Black one's caught. Well, the paint horse was not. He, he was a no, result. Think, yeah. He was a result of that black one. Hey, that's Chappie out there. Chappie he, caught it. He must have something to do there. Or maybe he just jumped in. Yeah, them two, they didn't get away because they were wild. They just they were feeling good. needed a little exercise. They just needed a little exercise. That's a really wide built one right there below us there, that boy and God. Oh. God dang these calves are feeling good. And that, is that a different one? That's that's a one? different one. That's a different one. No, that's one. the same one. Same one? Yeah. Yeah, that was that same little boy. That calf is just feeling good. And once he's gotten away, mm -hmm. he knows he can. Hmm. It's a stout silver calf right ahead of yeah, us here. Yep. Yeah. Humongous hip in that calf. Mm -hmm. Pretty color, kind of a yeah. bright, bright silver color. Yeah, I love that color. Well, the anchor is helping that boy now. Oh, the Henley anchor. Anchor. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, boy. Look at Parker's showmanship abilities. Yep. This is an unfair advantage. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Calf ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's got him tied yep. down. Yep. Might as well just hitch him to that post. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he got him now. Yeah, we got him now. Yep. Parker's right there to rescue. He's, yep. he's got one eye on what's going on and one guy one eye on him. One more class after this, right? Mm -hmm. Division two mm -hmm. champion. Oh, now that calf's showing very well. It's a good calf. He gets his old head. When he gets hey. in parked. <laughs> huh? Look at Parker. He's shaking. He's still got oh, it. Oh, he's, he's still got it. <laughs> Look at him. He ain't leaving either. Look at him. He's kind of like the sheriff. Yep. Well, and I take you, I tell you what. Some people break their calves with donkeys. <laughs> I think they need to get him a Parker <laughs> because all that calf needed was just a little attitude adjustment. Yep. Yep. And he was just the guy to give it to. Needed a little Parker. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a donkey. You need a Parker. Uh, <laughs> people are going to start naming hey, their donkeys Parker. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm going to tell you, when, when we get on that first tee at the country club, yep. when he swings, you – you almost want to duck. Really? Oh, my God. He can hit the ball far? Uh, and he hits it hard. Straight? Mm. Not all the time. No. But when he when it goes <laughs> when it goes astray, it goes a long way long astray. Ways, if it, yeah. yeah. A lot of times it, he'll hit it so bad that he'll, he'll have a good lie because it's in the next fairway. <laughs> yeah, use it. Yeah. Use it on the next time. Yeah. And he, and he, yeah. But when the wheels fall off of his bus, it's not <laughs> All good. four of them go rolling down the road. Is there a lot of trees in Stillwater? Yeah, a lot of trees at the country club. Yep. yep. That's bad. A lot of old trees. <laughs> South Dakota, it's a little. Yeah. There's a few with trees, but there's a lot of them that are wide open. Well, I, I play in Miller occasionally, and there's not many trees in the Miller yep. country club. You can club. put it on a fairway, but it might be two <laughs> fairways over. Still be still be in yep. playing it well. Oh yeah, there's no OB there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. We got down to seven now. Yeah. Halfway there. Well, that calf is a. He's kind of a show calf, isn't he? That black calf, that little yeah. boy. Yeah, he's like, he's the show he's, steer of the he's, he's the show steer of this group. He's showing real well right now. Yeah. Bob and Brock kind of <clears throat> taking some time and admitting yep. they're taking. A lot of time on these classes today, uh, and they've done this before, done it all their lives. They, 
they know what it's like to take care for care of one for 120 days every day all day every day and and come to the show for 10 minutes in the ring and by golly they're gonna make sure they're confident in what they're doing here Pulled that silver steer in there. We're down to five. I didn't get this young man's number. I don't no, want the he's steer. Got it, he's, he's got, got a star on his head. That's the calf with a star on his head, right? Mm -hmm. I think he was the very first one in the ring. He he was. Mm. 183 or Yeah. Yep. 133. 133. That's Drake McPhail. Got a star in his head like that. He's probably got a broker in his pedigree somewhere. Uh, I would think so, yeah. <laughs> That's my story. And then you got little Trip uh, Yoakum's in there. And who is 180 or That's two? that Chisholm Stetzer. Stetzer. That's that big stout Oh, that's calf a silver from Hobart. One. From Hobart. What's 289? 289 is Mason Keeling from mm. Valiant. That's the kid in the blue, and then I missed the little the paint horse. I yep. think that's Sadie Plague from Guthrie. That last one there in the blue shirt, um, I see he's got a Rogers livestock tag. He, I see Blaine ringside there. He must must have come from Rogers yep, livestock there have. in Missouri. Yeah, there's, there's Blaine. California transplant. Transplant, yeah. Down to five, and they're discussing them more. There's probably a lot more to sort through in these lightweight classes because, like that one in first, he probably doesn't quite as market ready. You know, he's probably not quite there, but he's probably the fresh one of them. And because he's not as heavy conditioned not quite as stout appearing but just a lot more to weigh through probably in these these early classes right Macy grabbed it speaking of transplant she's an yep. Iowa transplant yep. went to Texas and now is she back in Oklahoma yeah she's at Redlands Redlands yep And she's the assistant coach at Redlands. Okay. And doing a really good job. Kids Who, love her. Who's the head coach at Redlands? <laughs> Don't know. Well, it's not Callis anymore. There's that calf again. Oh, he let go again. Well, he tried to hang on. This weather's got these calves feeling frisky today. The anchor... Did not do his job. second division but one thing that dad and I settled on pretty early was old silver up here and boy that's just a good looking calf and just brings a lot of good to the table he's got a good look from the side he's really balanced especially when he jacks his head up like that that's the best look we've got of him so far and we've had a few pretty good looks when you set this one into motion uh, him and the calf in second we thought they both got out and moved really well we thought the steer that wins the class just had more genuine width and shape to him uh, when you got in behind him when you lay your hands on that one his degree of finish is awesome he's maybe actually almost got too much he doesn't have too much but he's really smooth in his degree of finish 
fish. We really liked it when we got our hands on that one. Calf that came into second, uh, he rivals him in terms of balance from the side. We sure like that about him. I would like to clean him up on the top side of his neck. He gets just the nickel crusty up there and maybe tidy him up through his chest floor. From his shoulders back, though, he's very bold through his forerib. He's deep and soft through his flank. And like I said, when you set him into motion, he goes really well. When you get him behind him, I would like to see him a little more pulled apart, probably from hooks to pins more than up into his back. He does have good back shape. When you get back there to his hip, I'd like to see it just a little bolder. The calf that comes third was the problem child in class. As you can see standing there, that thing is incredible standing still. We sure like that about him. And actually, he does handle it pretty well when he gets out on the go. He's good footed and good boned. When you get in behind him or in front of this calf, you'll notice he's very bold up through his shoulders. You get in behind him, he wants to bow out on them back legs ever so slightly, and he's pretty little. Uh, but that thing's really good built. We liked a lot of things about him. We just didn't think he fit the two that won the class near as good, especially in terms of size. He's pretty quick. The orange and white steer that comes next, uh, this one's really deceiving, and it takes a little studying to find him. Due to his color pattern, we kind of had a shorthorn steer like that yesterday. And uh, this one, once you really do study him, he actually gets out and travels pretty well. We love his body shape. He's got a lot of power when you get in behind him. Like the steer that was second, we'd probably like to pick him up in his pin set and make him a little bolder there, but he's got plenty of power. Calf that rounds off the top five is one that just ran into a really tough class. He's got a smooth pattern. We like the way his neck and shoulder lay into him. We probably need to see him a little deeper back through his rear flank, rear flank and see a little more bone under him to compete with the calves in front of him. But impressive top five in this Division II class. Congratulations to your class. Six winner, your crossbred market steer, Chisholm Setzer from the Hobart 4-H. Followed by Mason Keeling from Valiant FFA. Third, Trip Yoakum from Sepulpa. Fourth, Sadie Blagg from Guthrie FFA. Fifth place, Drake McPhail from Snyder. Sixth place, Emma Case from the Moreland FFA. Seventh, Riggan Adams from Durant 4-H. Eighth, Case Waltershy from Duke FFA. Seventh, or excuse me, ninth place, Addie Thompson from Prague FFA. Tenth, Caden Brockry from Granfield. Eleventh, James Edelin from Rock Creek 4-H. Twelfth, Kaysen Crump from Watonka FFA. Thirteenth, Jace Hawk from the Rogers County. Okay, buddy. Class winner in the last class, Chisholm Setzer. And the calf that was right here in front of us, parked him right here in front of us, that big silver calf parked right in front of us. He ended up winning that class, weighing 12.92 from Hobart 4-H in second. Mason Keeling from Valiant on a 1,298-pound calf. And speaking of 1,298 and 1,299, we got a class of eight calves all weigh 1,299. Coming into class here, uh, first calf in the class um, is Carly Swink from the Perkins Tryon FFA. Calf weighs 1,299. This one right here. I guess she's out. Yeah, she scratched. I say. I don't, yep, don't she scratched. Her. Didn't look like her, did it? No. So uh, the first calf is London Horn from Lakiba Sickles. I wonder if she's related. Is this is this Casey's daughter? Could that be Casey's daughter from Lakiba Sickles? What's the, what's her last name? Horn. Oh, well, I don't know. Well, that's where the boys were from. Okay. So anyway, that's London Horn. From Lokiba Sickles FFA, that calf weighs twelve ninety nine, as does all the rest of them here. Shea, Sage Shank from the Amber Pocasset FFA, on that gold, on that honey colored calf, that yellow calf. Claire Harton from with the white calf there from Medill Four H. Then uh, Cohen Varner has the black and white calf right here from Tishomingo, and then um, his fellow Tishomingan right there next to him. This is Brock Daniels from Tishomingo FFA. And then Houston Dixon from Winniewood. He's got the big black calf right here in front of me. 
and he is from Winniewood FFA, and then Creighton Carpenter from Leedy FFA, right here in the yellow calf or the kind of the cream-colored calf. So all all these calves, all seven of these calves weigh twelve ninety nine. This will be our final class in Division Two. Parker Henley walked in front of us there just a minute ago. I told him uh, pretty sure tomorrow there's going to be ten donkeys that get named Parker <laughs> after that last class. Uh, <laughs> half of them because they're breaking donkeys and the other half uh, for other reasons. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. A little smaller class here. Yeah, There's just seven, seven in of this them. Class. Mm -hmm. Bob's going to wedge in there between the that yellow and black calf in front of us. Yeah, I don't know why they got them so bunched up in there. They got the whole ring. Yeah. Oh boy. Need a helmet. That black calf kind of raised up at him. They all weigh twelve ninety nine, boys. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, the head judging coach at Redlands is. Spencer Scott. Spencer Scott. That was actually just named Coach, Coach of the Year. Right. I think that's in Houston. They're, they're, I think they round out at Houston. I think that was just, just happened recently. And his little brother is the head judging coach at Tech. Hey, Brett Carter says that black calf in front of us does found out that what Bob did to Kung Fu Kent last year, and he put that leg right back down. He said, I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> okay. He watches Oklahoma City News. Yeah. <laughs> did you see what he what did he do? Look at him. I don't like either one of them nope. very much at all. You got the good old boys club and whatever you call that. Derelicts. That's what you call that. <laughs> They're the derelict. That's Those are the ones that sit in the corner when the teacher walks in the room. They get put in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they just show up on Saturdays. It's a Thursday, the last day. <laughs> and who did you say that boy second to last there was? 648. That is Houston Dixon from Winniewood. 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 You know Home where Winniewood is? Joe Exotic. That's right. <laughs> I only know where it's at because of. Uh, it's, it's the exit off the I-35. It's got all the horse sheds over there on the east oh, side yeah. of the highway. Yeah. Because of, uh, oh, what's that deal you watch on TV? That <laughs> I don't watch anything on TV. You, don't, you didn't watch Joe Exotic during COVID? No. You didn't? I don't watch TV. Oh, my goodness. Everybody wants to talk about The Bachelor and all this. I watch Yellowstone when I watch any of it. Now, and it's gotten boring. On Netflix. It was on Netflix. Oh, I don't get Netflix. Tiger King, they call the it. Tiger King, yeah. yeah. Tiger King. Charlie Long's next door neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> Is Charlie still up there with those idiots? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's up there. Mm-hmm. I know.
Gosh, we got it. We got we got the who's who. Yeah, Parker did. By Parker. golly, he said he was coming up here. Yeah, he's up here. He said he was going to come talk to you. <laughs> uh, Shut him. He won't want to look at me. Look at him. Get him. Yeah. He's all serious. Yeah. He's telling war stories. Yeah. Anchor stories. <laughs> yeah, when he, he, he said he was coming up here to talk to us. Well, get up here. You can talk to him. I don't want to yeah. talk to him. Because I'll start asking Betty. I'll go start asking Betty's at golf game, and he ain't going to like it. Mm -hmm. All righty. We're down to five. Down to five. Mm -hmm. I like this calf right here. Mm -hmm. Look how he holds his head and neck up. A real stout red or yellow roan calf right there. Yeah. That's that that's that horn calf. Oh, okay. And you could believe that having a little short horn in them, huh? Mm-hmm. I didn't catch who that first one was. I don't recognize that young lady. Another class that's kind of tough to kind of pick through. Yeah. For, well, that, for all that of them, Wayne calf has got a big square back. Oh, he does. So all those calves that weighed 12.98, two of them were in the top four. So they'd have thrown them in here. That'd have been even tougher. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be your fifth place calf. Big yellow That's calf. 310. <laughs> and they don't have her. <laughs> I don't have that number. wonder what that is. She don't have a number in well, her, her number. Well, her number don't. She, it must have been from her last. From her last. They forgot to change her number. Oh, I see. keeps going here and uh, we've got a really nice class of uh, crossbred steers I think this wraps up the second division if I'm not mistaken we got a really good uh, hands-on favor to win this class in this black steer he just he's just real complete he's fresh looking he's fresher than the steer we'll talk here in a second I like the angle to his hock I like the length and angle to his pasture and he's good footed is he the biggest ended steer we've seen today or yesterday? No, but is, he's got enough. He's real good and pronounced up in his top. His condition is, is like I said, just simply fresher than the steer we're going to talk here in a second. And we really like the, the butterscotch colored steer that goes second, but we just think this one ties it together. A little harder to build one like this. Nice headed, fresh neck, good in his chest floor, balances up in his underline. Just a good, good calf to start this class with. As I said, the butterscotch steer, if that's the color he is, uh, good, good calf. He, in our opinion, is a little overcooked. He's just a, just a tick stale to the touch. It's not bad. It's just not as good as the one that beats him. He's good from hooks to pins, maybe not as wide pinned as the one that beats him, but he's a calf that's got good enough feet under him, goes somewhat north and south on his front too, and he just, he's just a good, good, complete steer. We would like, if we're going to put him first, we're going to freshen him up a tad, and then he's going to go first in this class. We, do, we discussed three and four in this class, and we've opted to stay with the white steer. He's a little longer bodied. He's not perfect behind his shoulders, but he excels the calf. We'll talk in a second behind his shoulders. He really comes up out of his neck, neck good, uh, like the freshness of his front end. You could argue when looking at him, well, I'd like to drop him down in his flank. So would we. We'd like to drop this calf down his flank and balance him up in his underline. I think his flex is good enough when he goes. It's not perfect. I think, I think the restriction in his hock is what causes this calf to get just a little shorter stepping than we like to see one. If you're, if, and, and I don't mean this derogatory at all. <clears throat> this calf here is a freak show, and, and I, I, I'll explain what I mean by that. That thing is so good neck. He's so, if you're a butt cutter, and I know that slang, if you're a butt cutter, this calf wins the class. He's got so much definition and shape out in his hip, a little round for our liking, 
But having said all that, we got to make him better in his forerib the way it joins the backside of his shoulder. But specifically, if you have our vantage point, he's really restricted in his hock. He's got some swelling on the inside and outside. Not terrible. It's not a big ball, but it's certainly got some puffiness in that. He doesn't have the athleticism going forward. But he is, he's got some incredibly, incredibly neat pieces, and we'll give that to you. I'll reiterate, if you're a butt cutter, he wins this class. He's got a tremendous amount of red meat. We wish it was tied together. The iniquity that this calf suffers is if you want to go to the backdrop and get a cool picture, this one will do it for you, but he doesn't have enough muscle. You know, we, I wish we could combine those two together. He moves good off that back leg. I, I guess I would tell you when they, when they give up and they void muscle like this, they better be able to move good because you don't have as much product to move around. He's got a tremendous look. He would pull up to a backdrop and make you look really good. Just, he, he just is a little narrow based off of both ends and just doesn't possess enough true mass in the lower one-third of his body cavity. Your class seven of crossbred market steers. Congratulations to your class winner, Houston Dixon from Winniewood FFA. Followed by Creighton Carpenter from Leedy FFA. Third, Claire Harton from Medill 4-H. Fourth, London Horn from Lakiba Sickles FFA. Fifth, Sage Shank from Amber Pocasset FFA. Sixth, Brock Daniels from Tishomingo. And seventh, Cohen Varner from Tishomingo 4-H. We'll now show for your Division II champion and reserve champion, crossbred market steer. All righty. Well, when he half done after yeah, this. Yeah, winning that class was Houston Dixon from the Winnie Wood FFA on a 1,299 pound calf. And of course, second was Creighton Carpenter from Leedy, uh, way out west, uh, out in uh, Kurt Steerwalt country. Uh, 12, again, 12, both, all them calves in that way, 1,299. So, um, so now we're ready to select our division two champion and reserve champion steer. And of course, out of that last division, we took 10 calves. Uh, 10 calves out of that last division, so I assume we will again. And who do we got coming here? Well, your first class winner, class four winner, this was Kaysen Abernathy from Altus FFA on this black calf, big, stout, burly, big-bodied one, weighed 12 to 39. The uh, butterscotch calf or golden calf coming in next is Samantha Graves. That is from Washington County 4-H. On 1242, I think that Matt, that was Matt Fuss's niece, yep. right? And then the silver calf, the real pretty silver, big burly calf we liked uh, in that third class of class six is Chisholm Setzer from Hobart. That calf weighs 1292. And, of course, the calf that won the last class, that is Houston Dixon from Winniewood and on a 1,299-pound calf. So we go 1239, 1242, 1292, 1299. Yeah, this will be interesting yeah. here if they yeah. uh, if they deem that black calf, yeah, a fat steer. Yep. If he's a fat steer, he'll he'll be as yep. competitive as any. Yeah. Because um, he's a show steer too. Yeah, he's he's probably the show steer of the group. But if they don't think he's quite ready, he can get left out too. I love the silver calf. Yeah. He's a meat and potatoes. <laughs> I love that calf. Body and muscle. But he's so good. He's so symmetrical from mm. his from his chest floor all the way back to his rear flank and down to his stifle. He, mm. He's got a lot of hair. That calf's real hairy, but, boy, he's got a big old bone, awesome set to his leg. And he's a pretty, pretty oh, silver calf. I love color. that silver. Yeah, he's kind of pointing mm -hmm. at that silver one. Mm -hmm. Bob just did. We're going to walk these four.
And who's the one that's four hundred thousand? That is, uh, that is class uh, two. Yeah, that is Samantha Graves from Washington oh, County. Yeah. That cast very sound. Moves really good. Yeah, they haven't got the. Uh, here, Bob's. Uh, well, he's going to walk them. Oh, well, he's going to walk the seconds. Yeah, they want to see the. They want to see the seconds walk now. Yeah, they haven't posted the. They haven't posted the. Uh, class winners. I guess they're not posting class winners. Looking at that second in class three, one that was second behind that silver calf. I'm sorry. I just, I like them. I like them built like that one. When you think of a fat steer, that's what one should look like to me. I know he's probably not the sexiest necked one, but. Have a little dust, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Folks at home, you better be glad he muted himself. Mm. I need a towel. You would have blown the microphones out. <laughs> He's kind of hunkered in there on that silver one and that yellow steer at a class two, and then now they're handling that second to that silver one. Well, they're still talking about it, aren't they? Yep. I bet they don't think that black calf's got enough on it. Yeah. He just not. Just a little prospecty. Nice steer. He is good. He is. I mean, he is. Really, he's probably the really best sound. looking he one. He just yeah. needs. I think he's in the well, light 1200s and just needs another 100 pounds to be competitive. Even if he had, yeah, 100 pounds would do it, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Looks like Brock's got the mic. He's just going to wait until they get them talking those sheep they sifted off over there.
Plus, yeah. hmm? trying to. Sarah. Oh, that's an that's not a sift over there. That's an actual class. Yeah. Yeah. That's the seconds over there against the wall. Yeah. Or maybe he's pulled. That's a class. Yeah. That's a class. I've enjoyed listening to this sheep judge. Yeah. He describes them really well. I don't know who that is. Do I don't you? either. Seemed to know Bobby, though. Yeah, Bobby and him knew each other. <laughs> What'd Fuss say? <laughs> he said it's starting to smell like landline in here. So Fuss just said, Matt Fuss is sitting here next to us, says he went over and watched the pig show today, and he said, I love the way they're describing them pigs now. He said, they're big bone, heavy, big footed, heavy bone, and really hairy. <laughs> they're starting to describe hogs like they describe, like, yeah. like they describe show steers. Oh, that is, uh, that's Steve Sturtz from uh, oh, Texas. Steve Sturtz. He used to work for uh, right. Wises back when Copas, right. Copas right. was there. Yep. Here, here. Take, hey, yeah, here, I'll talk here, to yeah, here. They're just just about done talking that class of lambs, but uh, we'll uh, when we come back on here after they talk this division. We got Parker Henley just walked up here after his showmanship clinic down there in the show ring. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Uh, <laughs> I campaigned one yesterday to reserve I, breed, and hey, then today I, I didn't do so fair. I yep. got uh, two over here, and we got four head. There, there's actually five or six of them in here that are in contention. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and talk on the on the class winners here so far. Calf that came out of the first class, we really liked him when that calf came into the ring. Uh, he's just really smooth and complete, really sound when you set him into motion. Got a killer look when he gets in park. Uh, maybe when he gets out here and we compare him to his contemporaries, he needs to be a little stouter when you get in there behind him. He just needs more punch down low especially. He's probably got enough up on the top side. If we can just widen him up down low, give him just a little more punch, and maybe that comes with time on that one. Uh, but he just needs a little more to maybe compete for that champion spot. Calf that comes out of the second class, uh, frame-wise, he's probably larger than the two than, than the calves on either side of him, but he packs a punch with that. You get in behind him, he's got a big old top, he's big through his pin set, he's base wide, he's got a nice look from the side. Maybe we would like to tidy him up the way his neck ties into his shoulder, but he's long-necked and he's good-chested. Now the pair that comes out of the next class, uh, that was a close pair. We like that silver steer quite a bit that leads off the class. As you can see, when young man gets him parked here, that thing just gives you an elite show steer look. He looks like a fat steer. He's covered very smooth. Like we said, he's maybe pushing the limits on the amount of cover that he has, but the way he handles is so elite. He's so smooth in his finish. He's got it back through his 12th and 13th rib. Set him into motion. He's extremely comfortable. I would maybe say if we had a bigger showman on the halter and could hold his head up a little more when we go, I'd make him look a little more appealing. But young man, when he gets him parked, he jacks that head up, and you can see what we see in that calf. 
Uh, the calf that wins the last class, uh, just a really smooth, complete type of calf. That was a little bit of a tougher class to sort. He maybe doesn't have the bells and whistles. He's got a balanced look. He probably needs to be deeper and softer and just have a little more punch to him. But he is a little more appropriate in his condition than the calf that comes second in that class. Dad and I have uh, already discussed it. We're pretty sure what we're going to do. We'll get you a grand, and then we'll evaluate a couple of them for that reserve spot. But put your hands together for this impressive Division two. All right, well, they're going to pick her champion division two here. Looks like Brock's headed toward that uh, division. Class, class three. three. You bet. That would have been uh, that Chisholm Setzer. Yeah. From Natalie. Chad Chaplin, I believe, Holbrook, is what yeah, I was. I, Chappy Scaff here, maybe. Yep. Somebody said uh, Kirby Eves and Chaplin, maybe. I seen Chad grabbed him when he won that class. Look at oh, Chappie. look at him. He's, He's got a big old <laughs> smile down there. <laughs> He's got a smile on a bad day, but it's, it's real <laughs> big today. Yep. That brings in uh, Mason Keeling, second in that class. Whoa, yeah. Jakey oh. about went. Yeah. Over he got his belly a little ahead of his feet there. <laughs> uh, that was a good cat. This this whole class surely That's they'll good, go several yeah. deep right here. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, and they do. That's Mason Keeley in that class. Yeah, that was a good class. That's going to bring in. That's going to bring in Trip Yoakum, Harlan Yoakum's boy. Mm -hmm. He's going to head up there. This calf is extreme. They, uh, in some areas, yeah. They, they liked them and called him the problem child. I yep. believe is that right? Got a little. Uh, yeah, that's a. He, he's he's unique looking. Mm -hmm. They're milling over that third. The calf up there in the front of the line, I think, that's uh, was just on the screen. They're yep. yeah, going to go to the gold calf. Class two winner. Who was that class two? Oh, Samantha Graves. Yep. Yep. Hey, Fuss has had a good, uh, good yeah. couple days here. Yeah, they here. did, yes. Very good. Matt was up here uh, a little bit ago. Oh, yeah. That's his niece. That's Fuss's niece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they the Fuss family has been very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going back to class two. Oh, and that oh. Mm -hmm. That's a nice calf. Good. Yeah, I told Fuss there. He's uh, he had quite a little show string. Yeah, yeah. No. Next one in, that's Paxton Malloy. Paxton, Paxton Malloy. I asked Matt, it, it, his boy's hat looked a little bit newer than the one he's had the last couple of years. <laughs> and he's, he said he finally outgrew it. They had to, had to order a new one. and Went up there to that Abernathy uh, calf yep. next. That's fifth. Fifth. I thought that calf was nice. Yeah. Obviously, it was at a weight disadvantage in this division. but I think he was 12-19 fighting against 12 in the big 12. Good deal. It's a high quil high quality animal for sure. They're gonna line up a, a few more here. They took ten in the first division. I don't know if that'll be the case in every division or how does that where you probably know. Well, you know, overall I think there's like twenty uh sales Cro slots in the crosses. Yep. And, you know, historically speaking, gonna use trip yokums there next yep. out. Um in sixth. But You'll you'll line a true sale order out of the crossbred, so yep. I mean the chances of more than ten lightweights making it into those top twenty are probably fairly slim. Yeah, you know, and I'd say that you just pick them to have them. Right, you know, there there's historically speaking, probably you know fifteen or plus calves in this next division that'll probably be in Make that twenty, sale, just because yep. you get into that fighting weight there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Flag. Yep. Flag. Guthrie. Yep, Sadie Plague from Guthrie here with this colored up one that they talked about liking out of that good tough class. Yep. 
Which young man in the cowboy hat brings another one in here. Surely I'd say he. McPhail from Snyder. Yeah, McPhail from Snyder. And uh, they talked about the depth of that class. That was the fifth place steer in that class. So, yep. Hey, my calf, I, I, I got up here. He's going to be coming out in a minute. I'm, I might have to get you, back down yeah. there to show. <laughs> I, I'm going to get a sale slot here. Uh, hey, and I tell you, that calf was really showing well after you got him, know. got I, him settled down. Yeah. Jake, he was up here, Ben. Houston Dixon. Houston, Houston, Houston Dixon. Dixon. Class, uh, Four. From Winniewood. Yep. Winniewood. Jake, he's been up here talking about your golf game. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's not real good right now. This is Creighton Carpenter. Yeah. Creighton Carpenter. Yeah. It's not good. I. I'm just going to say, I think there's an old saying about uh, throwing stones in a glass house or something. <laughs> What's How's that go? Yeah. Thou shall not. I know. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you went from a, from a 20 down to a 2 since I played with you last. <laughs> at your age, people tend to get real good at golf, you know. Ninth, Creighton Carpenter. He said you hit it a mile. All right. We're going to go up here. Looks like he's going to go with this gold calf. out of. The, oh, no, no, I was nope. wrong. Nope. White one. So that is uh, Paxton Malloy. Paxton, Paxton Malloy. From Guthrie. That's 10. It's 10. That's what they're going to pick. That's all of them. Going yep. to take a little restroom break yep. here. Yep. But. Yeah, I know uh, we don't have to pick on everybody's golf game here or anything like that. <laughs> We're just – Jakey and I are recreational golfers. Uh, Sunday morning recreational golfers. We're, we're good. We're not going to try to convince anybody that – You're going to be on the PGA too. Yeah, I'm not going out for the U.S. Open tryouts or anything like that. But <laughs> but I, I don't mind to go play. Oh, yeah. Me and Jakey – we had a little scratch match against a few of our neighbors back last summer there. And, uh, you know, when, when there's money on the line, our golf game gets a little better. Way better. Yeah, and more serious. Yeah. yeah. We're pretty – it's, it's more of a friendly yeah. Sunday morning mm -hmm. church day. Yep. I'm kind of one of them that will swing for the fences a little bit. But yeah. when there's money on the line, I like to play a little more conservatively. But uh, – yeah, we were old Justin Johnson and, and Garrett Cloud there. They thought they were going to whip us, and uh, they found out differently. As I <laughs> I chipped in from above the green, yeah, and oh my that, goodness! That yep. Oh, how about that? Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Billy Rash. Yeah. 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 Just doing a little watching. <laughs> Yeah, I hadn't seen stories? him in a long time. Yeah. Oh, any oh boy. Well, yeah. what have you guys uh, you enjoyed your view from up here? Oh, this is a, this yeah, it's been good. This is the King Row, right? Isn't I know it? it's nice. I've yep. been down there bouncing around, looking at hogs and and goats, and mm -hmm. kind of going yep. around here. I saw sheep. Yep. We saw. I don't know if there, there was a Hampshire bara. That won the Hamps yesterday. They said oh, something else. I don't know. If he's a show steer, it'd been my kind. Uh, <laughs> Todd Kennedy come up here, and that's all yeah. he could talk about is the Hampshire barrel. Yeah, he's pretty good. They said he's going to be competitive tonight. Yeah, uh, both of them, I'd say. Yeah. They tell me I got to get back over there for a crossbred in a little bit, but. Oh yeah. But they were going to get into the heat here. It might overlap a bit. Yeah. Now this next uh, division. Yep. It's total speculation here, but uh, they, you know, the the rumors are going around that we might see some nice stuff here in these next four classes, four or five you, classes. You usually do at this deal. Yeah, yeah. But it uh, sheep. Heck, it was a Hampshire day. The the sheep that won the the Hampshire uh, sheep yep. deal there yesterday, I thought was uh, exceptional as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Sadie Allen there. 
from Elk City. Absolutely. And they typically bring nice ones. Oh, yeah. Um, Did she win last year? I think, well, I don't think she won the sheep show, but I think she won the goat show maybe. Oh, that might have been it. And I then, thought that name sounds very familiar. I'm pretty sure she had a, a sheep in the top three and okay. maybe even a goat in the top three. But Yep. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and may have that same thing happen yeah. again this year because she had a division champion market goat as well. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. not picking, but uh, I've I've heard rumors that there was a there was a good goat and and then maybe the the third division there it looked like. Yep. And, yeah. So I've yep. tried Cade, to. Cade happens judging that they said. Oh yeah. Yeah. He did a good job. I had to go. He said he was going to teach me something, so I went up there and watched you a did? little bit. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, he raises quite a few of them. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. How about how is it sitting or you know. You've been helping with the show. You always do. From last year, you know, obviously you had a little different role. Mm -hmm. You surely appreciate what Bobby and Brock got to go through down there. Yeah, no, it, it is. It's it's challenging. This is, uh, in terms of haired steer shows, I would say just number of entries. Um, yeah. I don't have this exact figure, so don't quote me wrong, but I, Fort Worth would be first. But I would yeah. say the number of steers here would be, uh, second, second, yeah. second most. Would be second most, yeah. And so, these guys uh, do such a good job of getting them fit and presented, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's just it's such a big deal. And so, uh, it is unique, uh, you know, in this this time of year with haired steers and all that. But mm -hmm. these guys kind of got it figured out and how to keep the hair oh, on absolutely. them and yeah. uh, get them here, even though it is a little bit of a challenge, but. The yeah. the structure of this show with there's so many classes and breeds. Uh, well, I was that's what I was gonna say. Fort Worth maybe beats this show numbers wise. To me, watching Fort Worth, watching this one, there's more classes that are ten deep in terms of pretty good quality right. that are harder to sort through. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's it just seems like these guys know, and they get them spread. At, you know, get them yeah. into different divisions, and so it's pretty fun going through those breeds yep. and seeing those cattle like that. But uh, absolutely, yeah, it was a it was a real real honor last year to judge it, and I had a good time. And uh, yeah, you know, and there's just any more. It, this deal's getting so competitive. There's so many good cattle raised every year, and and you know, I've had. 20 people asked me the last 24 hours, you know, what do you think? How are they doing? I said, here's the deal. You come to this show. There's six head in every class. When they loaded them, they thought they were riding in a limousine. Mm -hmm. And you've got to put one of those six, six, and it just, it is what it is. You right. know, and, and uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, there can only be one winner in every breed and only one winner at the end of the day. I remember last year in the key show, Yeah, uh, there were specifically three calves that, like, I could tell they came. There's no way anybody got them dressed and led them up to the ring and didn't Not, think they yeah. were going to get in the limo. Yep. And, uh, you know, it, you, you know, you got to be aware of the situation going on. And, and yeah. I obviously knew how I liked them, but it's, it's hard because uh, – you know, I also knew every one of those kids yeah. and uh, exactly. think highly of them uh, yeah. and big fans. And so that was the hardest thing is, like, I, I recognize you got a good one and, and uh, you know, it's nothing personal or yeah. anything like that. But that's ultimately the, the premise behind put livestock logic shows. Between, yeah, put logic, you know, into what the, your placing and alignment of the animals is mm -hmm. all you can do at that point. But, right. yeah, that's – I actually told Jakey that key deal last year was salty. You said three. There was probably six of them. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I agree. There There's was, probably more there that thought that same more. thing. That, that, that key deal, I'm not sure we saw a breed this year as deep as yeah. that breed was last yeah. year. Yeah. There were some fun times last year. You know, I, I thought like uh, even like the Semitols last year, yep. there was eight classes of yep. Semitols and uh, – you know, obviously the one that uh, of of uh, Braden Callis's that won that division, yep. uh, he he hit me very hard. But uh, there were so many, you yep. know, classes of good cattle late in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was uh, it was enjoyable and yep. fun. And I, I mean, the breeds were very good this year. And, and you know, I talked to several people about it. You know, in this deal, 
like you said, people spread out, people hide here, and they go this direction or that direction. And some years the breeds are tougher. Some yeah. years the crossbreds are tougher. Last year those breeds were tough. Yeah. Well, I told somebody that's probably why, uh, you know, I, I don't know this. We might – the crossbreds will probably be tough as heck to this yeah, year that's because I, yeah. everybody was like, oh, you know, the the breeds were so tough. But Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's exactly right. It'll be fun to see. Yeah, we're going to get into – they're going to walk a class in here, and we're on class eight. Uh, got several coming in. Good yep. Good black steer right there. We're going to get them over 1,300, 1,310 to 1,325. There wasn't any of them weighed between 1,300 and 1,310. <laughs> I think they tend to break that yep. division at uh, yep. 1300, 1300 on the on the even dot but yep 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 Corey, what do you got com- what do you got coming up here after this uh, I go from uh, got some bull sales next week got to come back down here actually Thursday to uh, Griswolds your yep. hometown oh yeah that bull sale on Friday and uh, yeah, just kind of finishing out bull sale season and uh, collecting bulls and kind of getting, we're starting to flush a lot of cows and it's that time of year. Yeah. Make next year's calf crop. For sure. Getting a little rain in Stillwater today? It, uh, when I left the house this morning, it was raining, raining real good. Was it? Yeah. Well, they said tie outs here are pretty. Pretty swampy. Water, yeah. Well, I was coming in here a little after seven, and the interstate was uh, was was puddled up pretty good. Mm-hmm. Now we've got a we got a, a text message that came in here, and uh, Jakey and I are not soliciting any golf matches uh, any anywhere. If you want to give us some strokes. Yeah, we got to come to Stillwater Country Club, and we're going to handicap it uh, for our abilities. But uh, we we will outperform our handicap, is what we're saying, if there's money on the line. Yeah, buyer beware. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to beat anybody straight up, but yeah. <laughs> Brett Carter, they've been talking about handicaps in the golf game. Brett Carter said he got that messed up. They're, they are wow. handicapped. And uh, anyway, we got to get a little information uh, coming in here. We got a uh, couple nice end uh, steers in this hey. class. We got to get back to the the main thing. Todd Kennedy's listening. He wants in on it. Hogs against cattle. Yeah, yeah. Blake Kennedy. Yeah, Blake mm-hmm. is, yeah. That's what I said. I know. Come get you some. Yeah. Uh. Hey, Travis Pembroke just texted me. His bo- him and his boy are traveling down the road listening to us today. They are. Hope they're getting a little rain out their way. I hope so, too. Um, had a good day the other day in the heifer show. It he looked did. like, yeah. yeah. Reserve Supreme uh, purebred heifer, Maine. Very heifer. good. Yep. Hey, that little Pembroke, he's a showman now. He is. Oh, he yeah. comes to play. He does. Yep. Is this uh, 265? Is that that's that uh, Lewis boy, right? That had champion uh, key. Is that that yellow steer his? 265. Yeah, Trip Lewis. And 432 is Carly Costler. Oh, does Ricky, does he do all, Ricky Oaks, does he do all the way back? Yeah, Richie does there. Yeah, okay. he, uh, yeah, Rick. 
he is he tends to weigh me back once or twice he in does? this deal, yeah. Have you ever weighed out? <laughs> I would weigh out today. <laughs> they had a plate full of cinnamon rolls down there. Yep. Oh. Oh boy. If if you're not from Oklahoma too, there's a place in Guthrie right off the road called yep. Missy's Donuts. It's the best donut in Oklahoma. It is. Yep. In Guthrie, just right off that exit. Right yeah, there. yeah. Okay. They have two locations, but they have an interstate one there that's right next to the Starbucks. It's in an old like fast food deal. Hmm. It is incredible. Really? It's like Missy's Donuts. I'll Missy's stop Donuts. I'll have to hit that up. Yep. Um, we keep them in business. It's a it's a OSU judging team kind of morning stop. Yep. Anytime we head south out of Stillwater. Yep. Which so, is probably quite often. Yes, very often. Mr. Jimmy Harrell, he's going to get a closer look here. He thinks there's some nice steers in this class. Mm-hmm. Boy, he keeps a bird's eye on stuff, don't he? Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, I uh, I like to t- we like to keep him in the loop and walk around because he loves to look at good livestock. And uh, he- I've noticed that uh, Cattlemen's Congress, you'll see him watching the Maine Bull Sift, the Angus Pin Show. He's he he's hovering around anytime there's good cattle. He's around. He likes good ones, and, and he'll tell you if uh, he, he he ain't going to let nobody give him an opinion. He knows it. And, yep. Uh, he's he's into this pig business now, actually. Oh, he is. Oh. I did not know that. Oh. Really? See, he's got a grandson and uh, another employee of the bank that uh, uh, Ryan Terry and Brayton Kimball, and they okay. are starting quite the hog business out here okay. in western Oklahoma. And they have rounded up quite a little uh, foundation sow oh, herd. Wow. So Jimmy, though, uh, he, he likes to be around good livestock. And uh, he watched that entire dark cross guilt show from the first one that came in. No the kidding. last one stood on the pin. Troy Sloan was telling me he watched every hog come in the ring and studied every one at 83 years old on the ring, never sat down Just once. trying to get a handle on it. And he went and bought the second high seller in that sale. He did. Oh, yeah. He was mad his... He was mad. He wanted to buy that uh, champion, too. but Well, that's what I, I just saw Snapchats of that this morning. And 175000 is that right? 175 yeah. Oh, boy. And who buys that one? Premium yeah, blend? Yeah, premium blend genetics yeah. there, Laird. Yep. yep. But there was a <clears throat> good group of them. I think he pushed it along pretty good there, yep. though. But he was telling me when they first had the guilt sale over there, they decided to have it. And uh, they weren't sure I was going to go, and so they talked him into coming over there and putting some money in. He didn't yep. ever own no pigs, but uh, he bought the champion gilt. He said it was $1,000, and uh, he said he uh, he kind of likes to buy them. Holy cow. Uh, Boy, it, that deal has exploded the last oh, three yeah. years, hasn't it? I know listening to Blake and Todd Kennedy, you know, after that deal, it <clears throat> it has just exploded. I mean, the whole hog industry has, but that sale in particular is just become off the chain yeah my wife jakey my wife texted in and said uh oh he's not listening to me here but uh yeah if we're gonna we're gonna invite all these out here if we get beat the the green fees got to go on jakey though for bringing <laughs> in all these people now but oh boy we got we got three steers left yep. out here we got um, norvell that's Trip Lewis. They're going to walk around there. Which, that's Nor. That's Norvell girl there in third. Well, I'm not or sure second. what they're going to do here. Okay, they're going to walk these three. No, we're just going to walk. Well, Blake Kennedy said, "Loser buys dinner." Yep, we can do that. We can do that. They said that's fine. We just don't know whether it's McDonald's or. <laughs> hey, what do we got here? I need to get a little information on. Okay. The second calf in the lineup. Yeah. Won the prospect show. Who's the first calf? That is uh, T- Tanner Vaughn. Tanner Vaughn from Chandler and then Trip Lewis and then Madeline Norvell. So Norvell is going to the front. 
of where, this class. Where would that Norvell originate? No, no. Jakey has given us bad. But we like this class of steers. Uh, on this top three, and it, this class is deep for sure. In this class of three, we've got three steers, and we, we would like to take parts and pieces from two of them and combine together. The steer that wins, he wins the class. I mean, it's him. Uh, he's, he's a show steer. His neck comes out just real high out of the point of his uh, shoulder, good headed, good chested. Really good through his center body. Now, as a slang, he's not pus gutted, but he's certainly good in his middle. I, th I think at times, uh, personally, and I've had some people agree with me that are a lot smarter than I am, that we just go so overboard on middle on these cattle. And, and, and for me saying it, people are like, well, he's got them old 1980 ones. I'm like, no, I do not, not even close. But I really like the freshness of this calf. He's good out of, his, out of the top of his spine. He's good in his rib shape. He's certainly good in his depth. Is it overkill? No, it's not. He goes in motion really, really good, really beautiful from hooks to pins. Is, is he the stoutest steer we've seen in the last day and a half? Nope. Is he stout enough? Yes, he is. This calf that comes second, I made a comment a couple, three classes ago. I said, if you're a butt cutter, and I know that's slang, but if you're a butt cutter, then this steer starts the class. This calf is loaded with red meat. He's just in a little different package than we think we like. He's, his shoulder sits forward in him. He's pretty round in his shoulder. Yeah, he's big, prominent hip. He bows his hock just a little. Really good calf. His extension out front is good. He just, yeah, you've got a little more muscle in this calf. I wish, and, and we've had some opportunities all day yesterday and some today. Well, we've had some, well, the last division, we had a calf that was a show steer and stouter than onion jam. This one here is really, really stout. I wish it was in a little different package. I'd like to lay that shoulder in him a little better, but really good calf, just screams muscle. I'd like to put it in a different package. Definitely doesn't set that hawk to the ground with it near as much comfort as the steer that wins this class. This calf is kind of a combination of the two in terms of he's more of a show steer than the one that goes second. So you're like, well, why didn't you just follow? This one does lack some muscle. He does lack some true underline. He gets a little higher. He just, he's just a little harsher and drier in his lower one third than with the two that go out ahead of him. But you can see it too. That's a high, high quality dude right there. Then we get down to the curly haired uh, milkshake colored calf. Just really, really nice in his angles. Good bone. Gets a little flatter as I compare him to a couple of these cattle ahead of him. Big bone, big feet. High, high quality, fresh enough up through his front end, good from hooks to pins. The steer that comes in, in fifth in this class, this calf is as good as any calf in the class through the center of his body, okay? He gets a little plainer in his chest and a little plainer up in his front one third. And then, like the third place steer, I just like to explode him, give him more cow in his lower one third. But boy, the middle part of his body, he's probably the best rib shape of any calf in this class. I got I to gotta cool him up a little bit and I got to give him more shape and design uh, to get him any higher. Congratulations to your class eight crossbred market steer winner, Madeline Norvell from the Amber Pocasset 4-H, followed by Trip Lewis from Davis. Third, Tanner Vaughn from Chandler FFA. Fourth, Carson Young from the Canadian County 4-H. In fifth, Jacob May, Stillwater FFA. Sixth, Carly Kessler from Pauls Valley. Seventh, Baylor Brockry from Tillman County. And eighth, Caden Russell from the Colgate FFA. We now have Class 9, Crossbred, Market Steers. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, the cattle have really acted good the last couple of classes. They're afraid they of didn't, They did not need <laughs> They did not need your help down no. there, thank goodness. Yeah. No, uh, we, uh, we're running along here, first class of the middle heavies. We had uh, Madeline Norvell win with uh, Here I Am from BM. And uh, we're rolling right along here. So, 
Boy, that's a cool calf oh, yeah. right there. Neat colored. Yeah, boy, he is, isn't he? He's kind of a kind of a gray little kind of hint of spot there. Boy, yeah. that's a wild colored calf. Gray baldy. Yeah. They're the best colored ones. Kelton Arthur. Mm-hmm. Who's the girl in the boot right there? 261. Got a Yukon FFA chapter member there, I believe. Mm -hmm. 61. Mm -hmm. That is Caden Offelt, Offelter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a good big class of steers here. Got thir 13, it looks like, in there. Yeah, we're in those low <coughs> 13s, yep. 1330, 1350. Or 12, there's 12 head in there. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you know it's getting more serious when the uh, coaching behind us ramps up and you oh, start yeah. to see Kai Steerwald and they're all a few more guys. Uh, They're I'm all behind. sure Kelton's dad's Jared's got to be close here. Might very well be. I do love this show. It's always been a tradition uh, that Richie and Mary Lou, uh, yeah. they kind of single-handedly pick their ring help. So it's quite an oh. honor to get to be out there. I was wondering about that, how that uh, – how that came to be or how you uh well i don't know if it's on the screen but mary lou oaks is standing right there in the center of the screen yep. right now with that deal um and you don't want to make her mad uh she she, she runs the show she selects the show she tells yep. us what we're gonna wear uh when we're judging yep uh and uh it's she's she's head in charge yep. i remember a couple years ago um uh, A couple of years ago, she had a uh, a little minor heart attack there, and actually two weeks later was out here ringing steers around. Two, two weeks later, and was was in the hospital. She holy cow! There's there are not many uh, people like her. And her and her husband over there, yeah. Richie. There are they were they tried and true Hereford breeders? Is that right? Yeah. Yep. But uh, they're from right out there uh, in western Oklahoma, yep. uh, right around that area. But there's a lot of good ring help out here. Um, Matt Oaks, uh, former yep. OSU baseball player and son of Richie, yep. uh, he's out here helping. Uh, we've got several extension. Uh, Any Joe's out there. We've got Dave Jett. Macy. Uh, oh, yeah. Gretzka? I got a couple of my students out. Yep. Macy Gretzka. Uh, she was an OALE member and helped and then uh, has a standing uh, invitation to be back here helping and is now yep. at Redlands Community College um, there. And, and I forget I forget her title, but it's uh, the, the guy in the black hat there right underneath of us. I didn't see who it was. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, then Eric Schaefer is out there in the yep. ring. Uh, we've got and a couple more folks on the current OALE program here at OSU, which is the Oklahoma Ag Leadership Experience uh, for Oklahoma yep. State juniors and seniors. And uh, they are interns for the OIE, but they also take uh, okay. you know 12 trips a year around the state going to different ag businesses. They go on an international trip, but... Uh, the top ones in the state are selected for that. And they kind of split them up on market show day to do a little bit of everything. Oh, uh, uh, Kurt Larson there with the uh, Noble Foundation. Yes. Was right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Kurt's down there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Taylor Graham. Uh, well, he's a new fixture this year in the ring. Isn't well, he? he wasn't here last year okay. because they had uh, their son Deacon oh. was born uh, Couldn't a, make it. a few yep. years and then had a few complications. And so they were watching me judge 
uh, from the Children's Hospital oh, in, wow. Tulsa in Tulsa last wow. year. And so I had several comments yep. there. But uh, yep. uh, Bailey and Deacon and Taylor are all here somewhere around. Um, but you got new vests today, I see. Yeah, these are nice vests. Oh, boy. That's that's how we get paid here is a new it vest. It is in vests, yeah. yeah. But didn't you had black ones yesterday, didn't you? No. And these are the same ones? Well, we had gray ones this gray. year, but we wore okay. black shirts. That's Mary Lou Oh, Oaks. that's what you, If you don't wear a black she shirt. Tell, she told you white shirts today. today. You're dang right. Okay, that's why I thought they were different from yesterday, but same vest, just different colored shirts. Okay. It looks very professional, though, I will say that. Yeah. Because the kids don't have to guess who's part of the show and who's there taking pictures. And <clears throat> everybody in a gray vest that has OYE on it is there to help and lead their steers around if they get away. I wonder how far away there's people listening. I wonder if people up in Illinois are listening at all. or. Uh, oh, I guarantee you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They're probably too busy, maybe still asleep up there, a few of them, like uh, folks from Elmwood and things like that. So <laughs> lucky if they wake up this early. Yeah, that's right. That is exactly right. They're more afternoon type. People. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, we were talking yesterday, you know, it has taken a little bit longer than it did last year. That having that second man is good from the standpoint of catching things, seeing stuff, and all of that. I get it, but boy, it doesn't. You don't have to talk to yourself like you did last year. You know, mm -hmm. you get it. You get your mind made up. It's done. You don't have to, you know, talk to a person with you. It just takes a little bit longer to talk through things in every class. Yeah, you know, I've I've judged with several people. Uh, in has been associate and uh, uh, my my friend Chad Holtkamp uh, he's listening in Iowa oh, yeah. uh, up there today uh, but we've judged together and you got to kind of have a good plan you don't need to talk about everything uh, and uh, you know you, you got to have kind of have a plan going in of, of uh, going to do some big things and keep it rolling and yep. and uh when, when you need to talk, you need to talk, but there's also – can get overboard, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's got to be the right two guys together that are, they're, you know, used to communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. And obviously Bob and Brock are done everything together in life thus far, and it's a perfect combination. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was – telling Jakey earlier I was talking to Mark Hogue there in uh, in at Sioux Falls at the mm -hmm. judging contest there helped with that and uh, he was saying that he loves it and, and we were talking hogs but when you got trencher hog show judges he called them trenchers and I think it's a great term because like these guys right here there's no doubt in terms of showing steers mm -hmm. Bob May that's a deep trench he lives in oh, you yeah. know 35 plus years of competing at the highest level mm -hmm. um, obviously there's nobody as qualified as him in that particular industry in terms of years and what he's done no doubt is he an in god I, i'm not going to bet you on that one the other one i was confident <laughs> oh, boy, now he's a genetics expert, Kent Jakey. <laughs> An expert of everything. Hey, have you heard about his basketball deal? Last year, him and him and Bob, when Bobby was up here, he was mouthing about May's. He was going to, he could out-wrestle May. Well, obviously, that, you know, went to uh, the, to Junior oh, yeah. Nationals at where May pinned him. Oh, yeah. And I uh, so this year, yesterday, he was saying, you know, it was unfair Ray grew or May grew up wrestling. He's done it all his life. He grew up playing basketball. We, you know, it, it's only fair that they they play basketball and play his sport. And he's got to he's got to come to uh, yeah. and look at look at what they come up with. Oh yeah, hooping in the hills. Right. 
Well, there's there's Jakey one thing man. about Jakey. He's even when he gets beat, he's gonna <laughs> keep trying to figure out some way to make himself not look bad. I can tell you that. Gonna Don't just keep up. fighting. Oh you know, man, never gonna admit it. So he's. He's never seen Bob Mayfield play basketball, though. Boy, yeah. back in the day, he used to – he he didn't do that bad. Hmm. Boy, that's a cool-looking calf right mm -hmm. there in front of us. For sure. Getting them sifted down. Boy, these silver cattle and yellow cattle – there's getting to be more and more of them all the time in there. That's right. That's right. There's something about the way they look. In, I mean, not in terms of putting a tape measure on them, but they just kind of pop out there in the show ring a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. I love a perfect gray one, like yeah. a perfect silver one. Now, they say this time of year these uh, silver, like, smoke ones – they are hard to keep their yeah, hair. That's what I told him. That's what everybody tells me. And for them having a hard time to keep their hair, there's a lot of guys tried. Yeah. <laughs> because there was a lot of. Well, right here, top I five mean, steers are there's all. There's a lot of silver colored. cattle in this show. Yeah. What's up, buddy? We're going to get these down to five and do a little rehandling. Bobby, he's come pretty close to getting kicked about ten times here. That's not fun. No. Are you a big handling kind of guy? Yeah. I, I mean, I know you handled everything last year, but. Yeah, I think on these these haired steers, I think it's important of yeah. how to how they come out of the back of their shoulder yep. and uh, more from a, a muscle standpoint and uh, you know maybe you know obviously handle and finish and and things like that. But I the the big thing is you want to I mean guys are so good, but just handle how they square up behind their shoulder, how their loin edge feels, and uh, yep. that's that's pretty important, I think. Yeah, I love it when you lay your hands on her back and it's big and square. Yeah. You know, Bobby, when he was up here last year for the breed steers, when you were judging, he was talking the the difference. This show, it seems like in particular, um, there can be quite a bit of age difference in the cattle that are here. Oh, and, sure. And trying to. Pick out which ones the young ones, which ones the old ones are. You probably don't like Midwest State Fairs. Most of them are born February, March. You know what I mean? Here, there's cattle that have been wrapped around from Tulsa. There's cattle that are true October fallborns. There, there's probably a difference of a year in terms of age. Oh, for in sure. In all the breeds, without a question. There, uh, there's a lot of variety. Yeah. Boy, that one right there looks like a baseball cap show steer now. I bet. Kent's breaking them down up there. <laughs> Everyone on here is lucky that he doesn't have a microphone in front of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got down to four there. Oh, this calf's gonna be fit. Just pulled in. It's 235. Who was that that just pulled in? 
Who is that they just pulled in? Traylon Henderson, the last one. In Traylon the Henderson. And now they're going to pull another one. 183. Kelton Scaff yep. wins, That's followed Sierra by uh, Caden there from UConn, I believe. All right, here comes Brock with a few comments about this class. Well, we have another very interesting class here in Division Three. As the second class comes out here, we got another dominant class winner. As we thought the class winner in the last class was pretty dominant as well. This one's so impressive. When he hits the ring, their initial thought was, does he have enough cover? Because he's so fresh and cool looking through that front one third. You get in and get your hands on this one, and he's the best handling one in the ring. Not only does he have enough, but he's very smooth in his finish. Get around behind him, he's got a lot of power. You set this one into motion, we sure love the way he goes. You get him parked and you just want to take a picture of him. Our debate came here between two and three on a pair of calves that are real nice and offer some trade-offs. We thought the calf that came in second did so in a little fresher package. He's cleaner in his chest. We like him up through his crest a little better. And then you get around behind him and we just thought he had more product to him. Set him into motion as well as the white steer. They're both dang sure adequate. Uh, we would just like to see this one maybe a little deeper and softer about his lower third design. But I think he's got enough. White calf that comes next. Another one that's really soft to the touch. We like that about him. Set him into motion. He does a really nice job on a big foot and bone. We would like to clean him up in his chest floor ever so slightly. He does have a nice, uh, he ties into his neck and crest really well. We just need to clean him up. He's just a little plainer in his feature. Same could be said about this gray calf, and we really wanted to like this one when he first came in, but the longer you study him, he is just a little plainer and coarser about that front third. You set him into motion, we would like to see him reach and extend a little more and step down on a softer heel. He's got a nice foot underneath him, we would like to see a little more bone, but a really nice steer here. And calf rounding off the top five, this gray calf, he just gets out horse. That's a heck of a four steers that beat him. He's a little straighter about his design up front, got a little extra tail head. If we can see him a little softer in his forearm and flank, maybe the story changes a little bit. But a really nice top five in the second class in Division Three. Congratulations to your class nine crossbred market steer winner, Kelton Arthur from the Ripley FFA, followed by Caden Ofolter from Yukon FFA. Third, Allie Loveless from Mustang. Fourth, Sierra Collins from the Frederick FFA. Fifth, Traylon Henderson from Caddo. Sixth place, Pacey McIntyre from the Forgan 4-H. Seventh, Caden Gosnell from Copen from Copan FFA. Eighth, Claire Jansen from Amber Pocasset. Your ninth place, Jaden Coates from Kanawha. Tenth, Trevor Wiley from Paul's Valley FFA. Eleventh, Cora Sullivan from Lawton FFA. And twelfth, Hannah Sharp from Rock Creek FFA. Well, but that was a good class. Mm. That was that the heat's been turned up here. Nine, ten, and eleven are coming in here. So winning class nine was Kelton Arthur, Ripley FFA on a thirteen hundred and forty three pound calf. And second, Caden Offalter from Yukon FFA. That calf weighed thirteen thirty nine. So walking in the ring now, we're starting with No. It was about to hurt my ear. We go <laughs> going <laughs> We go to we there go to go. we go to class eleven and class eleven, uh, the, the uh, kind of the grayish calf to start this is Tyler Blankenship from Ripley FFA on a thirteen hundred and sixty pound calf. Uh, next is Cade Hillis from Dixon FFA down in uh, Ardmore area, Ardmore Medill area. That calf weighs thirteen sixty three. Then we've got Ruby Bell from Bristow FFA on a thirteen hundred and sixty five pound calf. Ashley Purvine from the Thomas Faye Custer FFA on a 1,368-pound calf. Then Bryson Cooper with the yellow calf, a gold calf there from Maple 4-H. That calf weighs 1,369. And then the young man in the gray cowboy hat uh, with the black calf there, that's Keaton Harrington. 
uh, from Caddo FFA on a 1,370-pound calf. Next to him is Ford Freeman, Altus, F, or Altus 4-H. That yellow calf weighs 1,371. And then the uh, white calf here is Caden Cunningham from Collinsville FFA on a 1,375-pound calf. Then we've got Jewel Scherler from Chattanooga FFA uh, down there south of Lawton area, 1,377. And then the next black calf, that's Madison Shout uh, from the Piedmont FFA. And finally, uh, the dark gray, mousy gray calf is Clinton Cheney from Medford 4-H up in north central Oklahoma. So, again, 11 head, Corey, 1360 to 1379. Well, i tell you what, another good class here. There we go. Another good class. Really good. Boy, look at that one. I right know, there. I know. Oh, buckets. That bell calf is a rock star, in my opinion. Bobby's got his hands on that calf right now. Really kind of shorter-backed, big-legged, really good neck mm -hmm. set. Real fresh. He looks good. That's a good and, calf. Uh, and then who was this calf down here? Uh, is that, that Madison that's Shout? That's Madison Shout. Oh, yeah. Yep. Thought that's, I seen Miles ringside there. Yep. That's, uh, that is uh, Madison Shout from Piedmont. Those two there are kind of the – they're, they, they're kind of the rock stars in this deal. Some might call them burly. Yeah. This bell calf is some kind of good now. Super complete. Haven't seen him move yet, but, mm -hmm. boy, he's good looking. Yes, he is. And what, what weight are we at here? We're uh, 1360 to 1379. Oh, so yeah. We're, we're getting into that ideal we're weight. perfect, yeah. Mm -hmm. That bell yep. calf weighs 1365, and the shout calf weighs 1379. We're in the realm of possibilities. Yep. Do you see the cool marks on this black calf over yeah. his eyes? Yeah. He's got mascara on. Yeah. Or eyeshadow. Mascara. That's mascara, right? <laughs> I'll never know. I, I don't either. <laughs> mascara. Eyeshadow. It's eyeshadow? Okay. Oh, it's eyeshadow? got correct. Well, it's on his eyebrows. He's on. It's on his eyebrows. Isn't that mascara? Oh, mascara's on their eyelids. Oh. Eyelashes. Eyelashes. So yeah. That's eyeshadow. Well, I tell you what, if you notice, he's got white eye eyelashes. So he does. He's got the eye shadow. He's got white up in his, up on his, uh, and up on mascara. his nose. Yeah. And lipstick. <laughs> yep. We were both right. Could call that steer Revlon. Yep. <laughs> hey, look at his name. I know. He's got a tag in his ear. His name's Browse. His name's Browse. How about that? That's Snapchat worthy. He's been involved in, uh, in the show industry for years. His family has been involved. He is just able to make a show in the country that I know of. And uh, let's put our hands together and thank Mr. Steve Sturge for doing a great job of working with our kids. We appreciate you, sir. Alrighty, looks like they got these <coughs> all gone through and handled. Is this the is this the third class of this division? Yes. Got one more one more class. We're gonna go all the way up to Yeah, we're going to go all the way up to 1,400, Yeah, and then we're going to pick Division Three. Yeah, we've got one more class after this. So everything after this will be 1,400 and bigger. That next division goes up to 1,600. Yep. So we got a 200-pound difference in the next division, and we only had a 100-pound change in this class, in this division. So... We're going to get to see uh, how these uh, calves move right now. The guys have put them in motion. 
So for you guys watching at home, as these calves turn the corner here, here comes that, that bell calf's turning the corner right now. And, uh, oh, yeah, he moves. Takes a big, the calf's good now. Man, he motors. That calf is good now. Show steer. We got Browse coming. Here comes Browse. Right in front of yeah. us. <laughs> What's that boy's name? That kid is, that is Keaton Harrington. Keaton Harrington, Keaton Harrington. He's from Caddo. Then here comes this uh, Madison Shouts calf. Turning the corner right here. That's a nice calf. He's not as burly as that other one, though. He come out of our country. I'm yeah. pretty sure he come from the Ryman Ranch up yep. there in Reheights. The Reheights Hills. I bet he's glad he's in Oklahoma today rather than up there tomorrow or Monday. Well, Bobby's starting to pull calves. Boy, he has got. I'm telling you, who, got, who is that young man that I don't just know, got pulled he's, in? He's for, got the flow. 471. Going, dude, that kid wins. Cade Hillis from Dixon FFA. Yep, he wins the hair contest. He wins the hair contest. Yep. He has got the flow flowing. All right, they're going to get this <coughs> sifted down. Yeah, they're moving now. Pretty quick, like. Yeah. Them six. Down them to six. six. Them six fall together pretty good. That shout calf's got a big old square back in him. Yeah, he does. <clears throat> really good on the profile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Bob was giving yeah. Madison. Yeah. Heck, he get, that calf got his hands all black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think Sullivan probably does pretty yep. well at this show. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they do at every show, I think. All right, going to get down to five and yep, walk them down. five. Yeah, we got it down to five. So this is coming here. This is Ruby Bell from Bristow on a 1,365-pound calf. Now, is that all the same Bell family that's yep. oh, been yep. showing? Yep. All them kids are all 
And where are they from? Bristow. Bristow. Right, up, right up the interstate yep. just outside of Tulsa. And then here's the kid. Uh, this is 126. That is Bryson Cooper with that yellow calf. Bryson's from Maple. And then 363, that is Ford Freeman. Great name. Young man in the green shirt with the gold calf. And then you've got 075. That is Jewel Scherler. And then Madison Shout. I think it's down to two calves, but yeah. All right, I think they're making their minds up here. It looks like right. Well, I'm going to drop this comment for one of our listeners that says I haven't been g it too much today, but I'll bet you old Browse is out of a county Ocal, probably. Probably. Yeah. How's that, Thomas? Yeah, I tell you what, I'm proud of you. You've <laughs> I've been pretty good about it. Yeah, you really have. You'll throw a, throw a jab in there every now and again, but pretty quiet. Yep. Here's Blake Kennedy. Nope. KV. All right, she's going to, Bob's yeah. hollering for the shout calf to yep. come up to yep. the, so toward the Ford Freeman, south end. Ford Freeman will be fifth, and then uh, Bryson Cooper is going to be fourth, and they got it down to the three calves that we thought was going to be. Yep, we got three calves. Looks like Madison's going to be second. Well, they're done. Behind Are the bell done? steer. Yeah. Oh, he's Looks reaching like for it. Yep, yep. They're done. So we're definitely into some smoke here. Holy moly, we get into this class. And, and I guess I needed to start this way. We've been told that uh, Brock and I both, and I apologize for this, and this isn't a half apology, this is a true apology. I guess while we're talking these classes, we pull the mic away from our mouth after we've started talking them. So I know you came here and you want to hear the reasons why we did it the way we did it, and you deserve that. So we'll, we'll try to do better. This is a whale of a class of steers here, uh, specifically these two on the top, really, really good. Okay, both of them are really good. I'll tell you what we see. At, at first in the discussion, this steer that comes first in the class, I think he was the third one in the ring, something like that. And of course, he caught our eye and we really liked him. And for as good looking as he is, typically when you get him this good looking, you're like, oh, do they have enough shape, true shape over all that look, all over, the, over all that phenotype. This steer handles incredibly well. He's really good on his feet and legs, really good from hooks to pins. That's not to take anything away from the second place steer. Where we differentiate these two, and that's our job, we like the freshness of the front on the steer. His chest floor sits in him a little better. Both steers come up out of the top of their shoulder equally well. We think the balance of the second place steer gets just a nickel's worth in question. Uh, he's good flanked. But when his chest sits in him floor, uh, down like it does, it just seems to throw him out of balance just ever so slightly. We love the running gear under both of these cattle as far as their reach. I think the first place steer excels the second place steer in his front one third. And I think when their hoof hits the ground, I think the second place steer jams his hock in a little more rigid and we'd like to change that about him. And we're, are we saying we don't think that's a smoking good one? No, we're not but we got a pair of smoking good ones in this class. The third place steer, he's a little harder and a little drier through the center of his body. A lot of muscle in this calf. Good from hooks to pins, nice fronted. He doesn't have the body shape of one and two in this class, and his tail head doesn't sit down in him quite as relaxed. This is a steer here that's a lot of high, high cutability here. He's a steer that we wish he was a little deeper bodied and a little deeper flank to go with that 
but really nice the way he lays in his shoulder. He does get a little close at his knee and wants to turn this right out ever so slightly, but we appreciate his freshness of handle and his freshness of front. When he goes in motion, he gets just a little short step and we'd like to change that about him. This calf, you've heard us talk a few times today, big, big, bold body. He's, and, and I know this is a slang term and I don't mean it to be slang or disrespectful, but he's a little overcooked. He's, a, he's, he's pretty soft to the touch. You can see the, the fat developing in his chest, up in his crest, he isn't quite as fresh as some of the cattle in his class. That's a really high quality calf. This was a good class. You know, when you get in these classes and you're like, doggone it, where do we start to, to go on that far end? The, 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 the end you don't want to have to put any kid on. And this was one of those classes. It just wasn't cut and dried. It was very deep class. Congratulations to your class winner in the crossbred market steer, class 10. Ruby Bell from the Bristow FFA, followed by Madison Shout from Piedmont. Third, Jewel Schuler from Chattanooga FFA. Fourth, Bryson Cooper from Maple 4-H. Fifth, Ford Freeman from the Altus 4-H. Sixth place, Keaton Harrington from the Caddo FFA. Seventh, Kaiden Cunningham from Collinsville. Eighth, Clinton Cheney from Medford. Ninth place, Ashley Purvine from the Thomas Faye Custer FFA. Tenth, Tyler Blankenship from Ripley. Eleventh, Cade Hillis from the Dixon FFA. We now have class 11 of your crossbred market steers making their way into the show ring, class 11. In the sheeper ring in, a, in our class 5 crossbreds, the class Okay, Corey. Boy, that was All a good. Right. That was a good, very, very, very good, very, very good class. And winning that class uh, again was Ruby Bell from Bristow, uh, the Bristow um, FFA, I think. Right? Yep. Yeah, Bristow FFA, um, and that calf weighed thirteen sixty-five, and that is a here I am calf for those of you watching. Second in that class, Madison Shout. Uh, Piedmont FFA, that was on a Ryman Ranch's calf uh, up in Rehide, South Dakota, uh, shown by Madison Shout from Piedmont on a 1,379-pound calf. Okay, we come into this uh, class 11. This is the final class. We go from 1,382 to 1,399, Corey. And uh, this first gray calf here in the ring, um, well, that says that's Crease Richard, but that ain't Crease Richard. 263 maybe that's 263 so that's trip lewis yep i thought that looked like trip that's trip lewis from the davis 4-h that calf weighs 1384 kale garver from the lexington ffa on a 1385 pound calf and then the silver calf the cute little girl right there that's mckenzie hladdock from hennessy ffa the calf weighs 1388 then the gray strip face calf right here and the little girl in the yellow is miranda hansen from eufaula 1390 the black calf right here in front of our stand is Price Poe from Cherokee FFA. That's a 1,395-pound calf. Then you've got, um, no, that's that's Miranda Hanson. Then 575, that's Price Poe in the black calf right here in the blue shirt. Uh, Cherokee FFA, uh, 1,395. Then Denver McKay. Denver's got the silver, kind of the cream-colored calf right here. Uh, really good calf of Moholt. Orlando 4-H, and, and that calf weighs 1398 Then you have Parker Buck uh, from the OK Union 4-H Club at 1399 and also at 1399 that's Jace Bowe from Union City FFA. So, again, we go from 1384 to 1399 Now, I'm not saying you're the only one that calls that color cream, but if that is cream color, I don't think well, it's what do healthy you call to put it? in your coffee. Well, what would you call it? <laughs> you call it mocha? Uh, to me, I don't know. What I don't do know what it? you call that. What but I'm just it? saying I don't think cream is it. It's kind of a – it's not really silver either. I don't know what color it is. I don't either. But I just feel like if you put that color cream in your coffee, a guy would be scared. Well, maybe it's – 
month old cream. Hey, the Pulse just come out Division Two. Yeah, I saw that. Champion uh, crossbred that silver calf of uh, was a Chisholm. Man, Setzer is he was sired by businessmen out of uh, Chad Chaplin six twenty one cow. Chad and Grady Chaplin uh, had both them on yesterday. Uh, they raised that calf, uh, sold by Grady Chaplin, Ty Webster, and uh, Kirby Eves was involved there. And uh, the reserve division, too, was a tricked-out wizard. Another one raised by the uh, Ryman Ranch in South Dakota, sold by Blaine Rogers and Tracy Gretzka, shown by Mason Keeling. Speaking of Kirby Eves, uh, visited with him up in the stands yesterday. Boy, he just had him a tremendous Houston. Houston I'd say. Um, grand Reserve. Sold the Grand and Reserve uh, champion down there, the Simital and the Brangus. That's, uh, you had that on your bingo card. That doesn't happen every year at that show. Uh, they say that Brangus calf was. Was tremendous. Yep. Big hip. Yep, I've heard that. But, what was he uh, supposed to? Was he? A, what was he? Was he a here? I am. No, he was a standout. Oh, he's a standout. Yep. Okay. And the uh, well, the, hey, looking back on this last division, I think they screwed up. That wizard, that one out of that wizard cow, probably should have won it. Yep. <laughs> Just there's that G bar. The minute you say you're proud of yourself, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help it. <laughs> hey, congratulations to Chappie and yeah, that division two champion. Not a better family right, right. there than. Chad and or Grady. Yeah, Grady and Chad and them guys. I tell you what, I do not watch a lot of shows on the internet, but Chad got asked to do I forget which one it was, but one of them Ohio Best shows. Oh yeah. They asked him to go out there and judge it and I listened to it. You talk about animated on the microphone. He was fun to listen to. I enjoyed it. Hey, speaking of Kirby, he's right up in the crowd, right just right, right there in the blue hat. Oh yeah, yeah. Got Chaplin hat on. Well, I, w I wonder what happened to Crease Richard on this calf, because I heard he was pretty good. Do not know. No, no. Is that the same? Richard's family yeah. that had that fifth main. Last yeah. Year? yeah, it was same girl. Yeah. Oh, it was that calf we liked yesterday, huh? And she had one in this class. Yeah, first one in a crane. Huh. That calf's burly. Oh, ho, ho. look at that! Look at the top in that calf, and the pipe in him. Holy buckets! And I mean, got a big, big caboose on that first calf. Mm -hmm. oh. And who is this boy here in the FFA shirt? The blue shirt. That is, uh, that is Price Poe Price po. from Cherokee. Calf weighs thirteen ninety five. Show steer the bunch. You got Denver, Denver. McKay. Yep. Denver's got. Got that lighter colored calf. <laughs> Creamish. He's kind of creamish. Cream it's like they try to become a silver, but they're not yeah, silver. You're right. You're right. But they're not. When you get right on him, he's lighter colored. When he gets away from you like that, now he looks more silver or gray. Yeah. Yeah, he looks different yeah. out from a ways off. His head's almost silver. Mm-hmm. Boy, Denver's gotten tall, hasn't he? Look how tall Boy, that he kid has. is. That's a good kid. He's a, such a good kid. Another good class. I tell you what, in terms of depth of quality in the class, maybe one of the better ones we've seen today.
this is sure the division that you know you always look for in in the uh, this show division three you know you got everything from 13 to 1400 yeah but that being said the champion last year came out of division four. Oh, really that's right i guess yep. so didn't they yep so show's not over yet nope Boy, that calf at Denver's a show steer. Look yeah, at he's – that's a very high-quality steer. Yeah. And I like that burly one in front of him, too. Yep. I'm going to start whipping Them some two. in here. Them two go together better than that big, chunky one up front. Don't you think? Probably. But that that's calf. a wide calf. Oh, look at that view we're getting right here. For you at home, we're looking at that first calf up in front of the class. He is a truck. He is what the young kids called opened up. Yeah, he is opened up. These two back here a little more elevated. Mm -hmm. Taller at their withers. Yep. That cap that calf at Denver's is really tall at his point of his shoulder. Really good topped. Maybe not maybe doesn't have that center mass like some of these calves do, but boy, he is mm -hmm. a big wide hipped one. See, when he's on the move, he's, look ch he's chubbier. See how he moves? He's almost yep. got a dapple color to him. See how he's kind of got that spots yep. in his? Got, yeah. Yeah, it almost looks like he's got spots on him. Mm -hmm. Well, they got it down to six. Looks like they got it down to five. Nope, 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 nope. She's pulling back in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. So now I would call that calf silver. Would you? That second calf? Or third calf? Third calf. He's a silver. He's a silver. Yeah. He's a full-fledged silver. Yeah, he is. This one here isn't silver. No. Nope. But I just, I don't know what color that I is. I don't either. Look at that. He's giving you a show steer look right there. All right, going to put him in motion one more time, Corey. Brock's there goes going to get down there goes here. Chappie. Right Chappie's going down there to coach a little He's bit. He's going down. That must be his in. Right here, the silver. The silver. His intensity is still high, no but it is what. toned down compared to once Grady got done showing. It's <laughs> last year he was up here, and I'm not sure his feet hit the ground <laughs> running around. Who was the girl, the, the silver calf in third? That is, uh, well, I'm dropping the ball here, son. Yeah, they picked some out of there, hadn't they? Yeah. I didn't catch her. I think that's McKenzie. I think that's McKenzie Hadlick from Hennessy, I think. That's 575 is the kid in the blue. That's Bryce Poe. Mm. Boy, when that one of Denver sets up and does yeah. that, he makes a convincing argument. God, he's so good. So tall fronted and his neck comes out the top of his blade. So perfect. Ah. That girl in that Green little little girl yep. in the green shirt. That calf there's really giving a good look right yeah. there. Wide base. He's really wide at the at, at the ground. Okay. Pull so that big pulling. boy there. Yeah. He was Second. the one. I, he's the one that doesn't fit them five. So twenty seven. That is Kale Garver. He's going to be fifth. And Trip Lewis is coming in fourth.
Boy, that calf up front's nice. Yeah, he looks good. That calf is really. Boy, he is choke necked and big bodied. Look at that look he's given. Look at that look. Holy buckets. Gonna bring Denver. Yeah, gonna bring, Denver bring, gonna up. bring him side by side. side, by side again. Put the silvers beside each other. Here's where a good showman comes into mm. play. Yeah, the that days there's just, he's fighting that stick. The days of uh, <clears throat> just leading them out there and trying to hold their head up are over, over. this deal. It uh, you better have them on point. You better have them on point the whole class. That's a pretty good calf that's going to end up being third, Yeah, looks like. Yeah, that is a really good calf. Like, really complete, really, really balanced. They still showing crossbred sheep over there? I believe so. They are rubbing all over them two silver cattle. Yeah, they are. Trying to get to the bottom of it. And Bob says, let's walk them. Let's em. walk them again. Let's walk them again. Let's do this one more time. Three times. They want to get this right. Let's see if we can get this girl's back number Yeah, here. let's get it here. He's got a ring in his nose for some reason. He looks like he maybe got a little enthusiasm. And he's pushing her all over the place. Looks like me on an amusement park ride. <laughs> 565. That is, yeah, that's McKenzie Halatic from Hennessy. Trying to look at the crowd to see if there's anybody coaching this little girl. I don't see anybody coaching her. Yeah, that's a really good calf in third. <laughs> He's going to be third. Mm -hmm. Whose is that calf in first? Oh. They're what? That's an amazing grace. His name is Pete. His name is Pete. His name is Pete. Junkyard dog, and, that, and her, they are best friends. Huh. You see her drop the halter. Yeah. He does her stuff, and he never moves. And, he, and, he's, a, and he's an amazing grace? From Kirby. Kirby Eve sold that one. That's well, we got a really tough class of crossbred steers here. We're going to leave them stand the way they are. This is a difficult top one. pair in our opinion, and we would like to apologize for taking a little extra time to make sure we got it the way we wanted it, the way we liked the steers. And the calf that leads off the class, uh, to us, we just couldn't find a way to get around him. That thing's just extremely well built. Love the way he ties his neck into his shoulder, and I think that's maybe where he excels over the steer behind him. If you study him through his front end, we like the way that shoulder sits in him a little better. Neck ties a little higher. He's got a little dewlap under there, but he handles very fresh to the touch. Get your hands on that one, and he also excels over the steer behind him. He's got more finish, and he's really smooth covered over those ribs. Send him into motion. I think they're both comparable in terms of their structure and their foot size. We would like to see both of them a little bigger footed. But this one gets out and goes really well. We love his body shape. You get in behind him, and he's just got more turn down to his lower quarter than the steer that comes in second. We really like the length and extension of this calf's neck that comes into second. He's probably longer bodied than the steer that wins the class. When you set him into motion, due to his foot size, maybe I would like to see him travel just a little looser. Get them back legs up under him and go with a little more freeness as you get him out and go. Uh, and then when you get in behind him, he does just fall apart. Or he doesn't fall apart. He just lacks a little of that lower mu muscle in comparison to the steer that wins the class. Really nice pair, really tough class. 
black steer that comes third. Boy, when he gets in park like that, you really want to fall in love with him as you study him. He does get a little deeper through his chest. We'd like to pick him or pull him apart through his forerib. Then you set him into motion. He travels a little narrow coming at you and going away from you, and he will try to kick you. No, I'm just kidding. It's not why we put you third. But we do need to see him come at you with a little more and go away with you a little more as well. Now, the gray calf has the power that we wish the black one had. When you get behind this one, he's ate up with it. He's got a lot of red meat on the top side of his skeleton. He carries it down into his base with. He's big boned. And it, the way he's designed as he's standing still, you wouldn't think he'd have an issue traveling. But when he gets going, he gets outside of himself on both ends of his skeleton. If we can neaten that up, see him go a little more, a little more free, uh, that calf can slide up a spot or two. Calf that rounds off the top five just lacks the overall dimension that the steers in front of him have. We need to drop him down into his flank and see him travel looser off them rear two. If we can do those two things, maybe we slide him up, but today he needs to stay fifth. Congratulations to your class 11 crossbred market steer winner, Mackenzie Laddick from the Hennessy FFA. Followed by Jace Bowe from Union City. Third, Price Poe, Cherokee FFA. Fourth, Trip Lewis from the Davis 4-H. Fifth, Kale Garver from Lexington FFA. Sixth place, Parker Buck from Oklahoma Union 4-H. Seventh, Adrian Walker from Durant FFA. Eighth, Denver McKay, Mulhall Orlando. Ninth, Miranda Hansen from Eufaula FFA. Well, they uh, they got that wrong. Denver McKay was not eighth. Denver McKay was second. So winning that class was Mackenzie Hladdock from the Hennessy FFA on a 1,388-pound calf. That is an amazing grace son uh, named Pete and a really good calf uh, right there. Second was Denver McKay from the Mohol Orlando FFA, and that cat or Mohol yeah, FFA that calf weighed 1398. Really, really good pair of steers right there to uh, to end our fourth division of Division Three, and now we're ready to select our champion. Yeah, he's correcting himself now. So uh, this calf, uh, this first class, this first division winner, this is Madeline Norvell. Uh, Madeline's calf uh, from Amber Pocasset at 4-H. Uh, that is a 1,328-pound calf uh, from Madeline again. He wins our class eight. Class nine winner was Kelton Arthur from Ripley FFA. Kelton's calf weighs 1,343. Our division three, or class 10 champion steer was Ruby Bell from the Bristow uh, FFA. And Ruby's calf weighs 1365. And we're waiting on uh, our last class champion in reserve to come in the ring here. So here comes our reserve, our second place winners. And our second place in class one, that was Trip Lewis from Davis 4-H. Second place in class nine was Caden Offalter from Yukon FFA. Second place in class 10, that's Madison Shout from the Piedmont FFA. And here comes uh, Denver McKay, who was second from or, uh, in the glass class, class 11. And that, he is from Mohol Orlando 4-H. I think he's from the 4-H. From the where did the, uh, I don't know. Where's the, I don't know. They need to get him in here. They need to get Pete in here. Here he comes. On class one winner there, Madeline Norvell from Amber Pocasset 4-H. In the class nine, Kelton Arthur from the Ripley MFA. Class 10, Ruby All right. Bristow, Here he comes. Class 11, McKenzie 
Laddick from the Hennessy. We've heard two names on this yeah. calf. It's either Cowboy or Pete. Yeah. So we're just going to call him Cowboy Pete. Well, going to call him Cowboy Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy Pete. Well, what we've been told is this little girl has a pretty strong connection to this deer. Like they're best friends, and that's the way it should be. Boy, outstanding. Yeah, this is set of eight head of steers yeah, right there. This now. is a pretty good set of calves right here. All eight of them, high, high, high quality. And what what's the weight on the Norvell calf out of the last class? Okay, the weight on the on the first class, the Norvell calf weighed thirteen twenty four. Thirteen twenty four. Then the Arthur calf weighs thirteen forty three. Okay. Then the next class weighs that Bell calf weighs thirteen sixty five, and then thirteen eighty eight. So there's twenty pounds between each one, mm -hmm. roughly. And all very similar. Yep. Boy, all four of them are. Yeah. They're yeah. show steers. They're show steers. I am sticking with my original one. Sorry. I am not opposed. No, Just what? giving my opinion. <laughs> and I like that cat. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I don't know that he's got any wow factor, but the fact that he doesn't have any wow factor is really nice. The chap, he was saying that calf. He was a little grumpy when they were breaking him, mm. Cowboy Pete was. And, boy, you would never guess that right there. No. That little girl. She lo That calf loves her. And, that, I mean, that calf is so good at the ground. Like, he is perfect in his angles and awesome hind leg. I mean, he looks yeah. a little straight right there, but when he moves, I mean, he flexes and goes. Look at her kissing on him. Yeah. She loves him. All right, going to take him for a trip around the ring. Well, structure isn't the issue here. All four of them calves move like cats. I bet you there's going to be some side-by-side -side comparisons yeah, here, maybe. I, I would agree. Might all put full four of them together. Yeah. Got him lined up on the side view profile. And the boys are knee deep in discussion here. Yeah, this is 
This, this would be the fun. Could be. I can imagine you and I in this yeah, situation. Could be all the marbles. This this gets. If this doesn't get you excited about. Yeah. It, he's gonna walk him again. Again. All right, Bob's going to talk this class. Knights of Columbus, this is a whale of a lineup here, and it is, we're not surprised that they showed up. I mean, we figured there was a coming, and here they came. And, and uh, man, we just, I mean, I mean we're, we're so impressed with all four of these steers. The steer that wins the first class, yes, he's a little juvenile compared to the three that stand behind him. Man, oh, man, oh, and, and we came here looking for quality. Okay, we didn't come here with ourselves tied into it's got to be any certain types, any certain kind. They can be, come in all sizes and packages. That is a great package, okay? He obviously is the farthest away from market ready. He's close. He's a little bare over his rib yet. But, I mean, when you talk about quality, you can't deny. Just look at what we're looking at, and it's fun to look at that. Good, fresh front, good chested, good from, from his, the back of his shoulder, back into his loin, back into his pin set, uh, really good on his feet and legs, wonderful, wonderful calf. The white steer that comes out and wins the second class, man, when, when this one come in the ring, we are like, gosh dang, I hope that thing's mature enough because he's certainly fresh enough. He, he handles really good. Uh, love the way his neck comes out of his chest, love the head on that steer, love his chest floor. If we could change him, and I'll just say this, if you're on the other side and like, my gosh, you get one that good, why are you going to change him? Well, I've done this for 50 years, and I've never had one, if I was honest with myself, that I wouldn't change something about him because I don't think God allows you to have the perfect one. With that being said, I wish he was a little bolder in his forerib coming out of the backside of his shoulder, but man, he's got so many parts and pieces, good, very well shown, very well presented, good through his center body. Like I said, if you were just a single term this calf, he is so fresh to be sure. And, and, and I'll reiterate, when we got our hands on him, we didn't expect him to be covered quite as good as he is because he's got, he's got kind of like the first year, a very juvenile look, a very youngster look. He's big, big ended, carries down to his hock, good, good cattle. The steer that comes out of the third class in this, in this third division, we like this calf, okay? We think he, he checks any boxes fresh, like the steer ahead of him. He's better right behind his shoulder than the steer ahead of him. But they're but there's so, so good. So good through their center body. So good to the touch. He's, he looks, he's got a fat steer neck. He's not geeky neck, but he's certainly fresh enough for a steer that's ready to slaughter. Uh, from the top of his crest down into his jaw, his chest sits in and matches up perfectly with his underline. Good bone, good feet, goes in motion. Now, would we, would we try to convince you that aren't down here in the ring with us that he's monster butted? No, we're not going to try and convince you that, but we're also not single trait and just for the biggest butt. He, he ties everything together so well, really good in his sheath and his underline. Got that, you better take a look at me, look to him. We had a tough time in this class. We had a pair of uh, char colored steers that we really, really appreciated. Both those cattle were good to the touch. 
Uh, this steer excelled the steer that stood second in that class, in our opinion, for, for boldness and rib shape and the way he carried back into his flank. He's a steer that we thought was a little fresher in his flank and a little fuller in his flank, but a really, really good pair of steers. Brock and I are going to talk one more time. I think we agree on what we're going to do, but I mean, this thing was so good. And I, I told somebody yesterday, and I meant this, I, the, the guy I said it to kind of chuckled when I said it because he thought I was using it as a figure of speech. And I sat up in that perch with Corey Thompson last year on the podcast and watched all the breeds on day one. I wasn't here for the crossbreds. But my prayer when Jimmy Harrell called me, literally a prayer, is that the cattle would be as good this year as they were last year, although I hadn't seen the crossbreds at that point. But... This has been so much fun. I know we're not done. We may, there may be a steer coming that we like the best of anything we've seen. So don't anybody get to thinking this thing is over because it ain't over till the fat lady sings. With that being said, Brock and I will visit one more time. How about we put our hands together for an absolute incredible division? Here we go. Brock's going to walk over and pick. Absolutely awesome calf right there. That is one good, good specimen. Ruby Bell from Bristow FFA on a 1,365-pound calf. He's your Division Three champion steer. Following Ruby is Madison Shout from the Piedmont FFA. On a calf that was very similar. Didn't you agree? Mm-hmm. Maybe not as bold in his rib cage right there behind his shoulder, but very built, very similar. Now I think just the way they talked him, it's going to get even closer yeah, for a reserve yeah, in this I, division. I agree. Bobby threw a little shout out out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, CT. Uh, I was. I got here at seven o'clock yesterday or uh, last year on Wednesday morning. Didn't have Brett. Brett Carter did it the year before with me. Well, he had boys showing steers. Didn't have anybody to do it with. Ran across him in the barn. I said, "What are you doing today?" And he said, "Not too much." And I said, "Come with me. We." Uh, We'll uh, go do this Walton deal. And he said, well, that sounds awesome. We had a blast. And, uh, yeah, did all the breed steers. And then the next morning, Jimmy Harrell called him when he was at the airport flying out and asked him if he'd come back and judge the steer show. So well, that's cool. That was, uh, yeah, pretty neat deal. Kelton Arthur. Kelton Arthur is going to be your reserve steer. Good steer. Kelton, congratulations, old buddy. From Ripley FFA, 1,343-pound uh, calf. Congratulations, Kelton. That's a good boy right there. Yeah. And I tell you what, Bob said it was in his prayers that it would be as good this year as it was last year quality-wise. From the crossbred standpoint, it's better. It's better. It, this division is deeper and saltier than last year. So now they're going to go pick our, our top ten here. Could be really stout. Going to pick you the third overall. There's already. that good yep. calf coming out of class 11. That is Madison or uh, McKenzie Laddick. That's Cowboy, Cowboy Pete. Pete. Yep. yep. He's going to be third. And that brings in Denver. Look at her McKay. scratch. Look at her scratching his calf yeah. when they're walking. Look at that. Yeah, it's <laughs> that going to be so a sad cool. day when he Yeah, that's going to be a bad deal. Floor. I'm glad I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Bobby's going to go shake Denver McKay's oh, hand. Oh, Denver, congratulations, my friend. Fourth is going to be Denver McKay. That is another great kid. Love that boy right there. He's my neighbor and one of my good, good friends. What a good kid. I got to tell you a funny story. I was driving down 6th Street in Stillwater here this last spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just going down the road, and this truck 
just veers over <laughs> right into me. It was Denver? And it was Denver and his dad. His dad was driving. He oh, rolled, Denver rolled boy. the window down and waved. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Madison Shout's going to be fifth. That's another good calf. Second in that class to the to the division champion. So Madison's going to be fifth. Behind her is Jewel Schurler. And following Caden or Kelton is Caden Ofol Ofolter. I can't say her name. Ofolter. O F F O L T E R O Fulter. She's the one with the. Looks like she's had a little injury. Got a boot. She's wearing a walking boot. So we've picked five of them. Okay, it looks like they're going to pick uh, Madison Norvell, is going to be a sixth. So following Madison or Madeline in that division was Trip Lewis. So Trip will pull into that spot. This poor little girl here is struggling now. She's got that boot on. That calf is getting tired. What's that number? Is that six out? That was six. Six? Yeah. Madeline, Madeline Norvell will be sixth. Bobby's yep. going out and picking. That is um, Caden Ofalter. That is going to be your seventh one. Seventh. That is a good calf. We, we really liked him coming in here too. Mm -hmm. So following Caden in that class is Allie Loveless from Mustang. I don't see you. Oh, there she is. Here's that calf that's to third that we oh, talked yeah. about, how yep. good he was. That's a Blaine Rogers calf yep. right there. Blaine helping on that calf. Whoa. We got one uh -oh. down. Yep. Whitey is not going to be as wide anymore. Whitey is not going to be as wide anymore. And Whitey. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yuck. He laid right in the mud, too. Oh, uh, thank God the show's over. Oh, and she got it. <laughs> she got her spot. So that is. Uh, that is. He Allie picked. Loveless is eighth. Yep. That calf of Blaine's was. And then 575 ninth. of Blaine's is. Um, Price Poe is ninth. And this young lady here in this Claire yellow Collins. sweater. Claire, Claire Collins, Collins is tenth. Or Sierra Collins is tenth. That's ten on boys. Is that what we've been taking? Well, that's what we took out of the last deal. Yeah. I wonder if they'll take being this is the deepest division quality wise if they'll go deeper yeah, probably in this division. Well they took ten so far. They only took one out of that that Ruby one other one out of Ruby Bell's deal. That calf just won that class. Mm-hmm. They're going to go get Trip Lewis. That Looks he was like what third in that first yeah. class. Trip Lewis. Trip Lewis was um, second in that class. Second in that first yeah. class. So he's going to be eleventh.
Brock's going to go get oh. that second out yeah. of class three. Out of class three, that's uh, Jewel Scherler, and he's going to be 12th. I think they're trying to decide how many they need. Bobby and Mrs. Oaks hashing it out. Now Ricky's coming in. Yeah. Richie. Yep. They're going to go back into that last class. Big that's going to be. Um, that's Kale Garver. So he's going to be 13th. Because Trip Lewis would have ha would have gotten that one, but Trip Lewis got 11th. So that's 13 calves out of this division. That it? That's it. So they so they took 13 calves out of that division. Well, now we're going into the big boys. So our next division goes from 1400 Corey up to 1600. So going to be a 200 pound difference here, which you'd expect. Yeah. You know. All righty. One more division, four classes. Yeah. Yeah, we've got 11 in this next class, 11 in the next class, 13 in the in the class 14, and then we got seven big ones at the end. All 1,500 pounders and 1,600 pounders. Finley so, Yoakum was in this first class. Yeah, and that's was that Finley that won last year? Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm pretty sure the same class her steer was in last year. It was in class first 12? class of Division Four. Yep. Okay. Well, maybe. Yep. Maybe luck will hold true for him. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Coming in class twelve, Corey. Uh, we go from fourteen oh one to fourteen twenty nine. So the stock and legged calf coming in. This is Jagger Warman from Timberlake FFA, fourteen hundred and one pound calf. The silver calf coming next is Chandler Baker from Central High FFA, 1,410 pounds. The next calf is Addison Westbrook from Medill 4-H on a 1,411 pound calf. Then Emery Solace from Navajo FFA on a 1,414 pound calf. Also at 1,414, this is Finley Yoakum from Sepulpa uh, FFA. A calf, again, weighs 1,414. And then the silver calf behind him is uh, Maddox Shout. That Maddox's calf weighs 1416. And then the, the big strapping cowboy in the yellow shirt, that's Dagan McPhail from Snyder FFA. That calf weighs 1419. And then Denver McKay comes in with the yellow calf, golden calf. Wow, what a good calf there. Denver's pulling in from Moho, Orlando. That also weighs 1419. Then you've got Lad Turner from the Amber Pocasset 4H. Uh, that is a 1,422-pound calf. Then the young lady with the baldy steer there, that's Bentley Lester from the Sentinel FFA on a 1,429-pound calf. And the final calf in the ring comes from the great Coca John family. That's Kaylin Coca John from the Drummond FFA. And Kaylin's steer weighs 1,429. <laughs> So, uh, again, 11 head in class 12 here, 1401 to 
Oh, another good, yeah. <coughs> good class. Yeah. Harlan must be standing right down here on against the wall because Finley keeps looking over down here the line on him. Daddy, yep, there he stands. Harlan, her dad's standing there on the gate. Where, where do you see? Well, he's got his arms crossed right there at the at the gate where he's coming in. Yeah, that's Harlan right there in the blue shirt with his arms crossed and black hat on. Right here at the opening of the gate. Right here at the gate. Right, see the guy in the blue plaid shirt? That's Harlan standing right next to him. Oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I see him right there. Yep. I thought you were looking. I was looking no, at the wrong gate. Other gate. Yeah, I'm sorry. You were out gate. I was in gate. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And where do we we go from 1400 to what do we go? 1401 to 1429. 1429. Yep. yep, just 28 pounds. But the man, the myth, the legend. The man, the Miles myth, the legend. Oh, Miles Shout. He's got another youngster in this class. Right there. I know. Where'd that, you were where'd just, that child get so much elevation? Right here. Maybe <laughs> no judging, he says. You were just uh, four, four out? Fourth out. Lost track after one. Yep. <laughs> Calf looked good. Looked very we good. Yeah. Hey, we were close. Hey, you got beat by a pretty good one. Yeah, for sure. Doesn't hurt as bad, does it? Doesn't hurt as bad, does it? Oh, it stings. Oh, it stings. It's oh, it stings. Sting. Oh, it stings. It's going to sting till Monday. Oh, it stings. But no, it was good care. Yeah. I thought, I told him, to me, that division was tougher this year than it was last year. Yeah. I mean, the depth of quality. Where all the smoke. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was pretty salty. That's a burly silver steer. You just got done with your big sale out there in Yukon. Best Express best Ranchers. One we what? Best one, we best one you've ever had. How dim good times, KF sale? Huh? <laughs> hey, Not he was high just. Seller, but plenty of in the high seller group. That bull worked really, really good for him. I was so proud of him. He's hardly mentioned G Bar at all. About he didn't mention G Bar. He mentioned good times. No, but a half an hour ago, he said, you know, somebody just texted me and said, you know, I haven't mentioned you know, G-Bar much, and since then, every other thing out of his mouth well, is campaigning. I'm not campaigning. I'm just pointing out the <laughs> obvious. It's not campaigning when you point out you the John's obvious. John's a good guy. John's uh, yeah. a great guy. One step under Moses. <laughs> One yeah. step under Moses. Yeah, probably. One Maddox. step under Moses. Maddox. <laughs> hey, I mean, he, un he un inevitably is my best friend. Yeah. That I've ever had, yeah. So what, uh, you haven't had a sale in five days. When's your next April 26th. One? April 26th, yeah. 26th. Hey, Donnie. How hey. you doing, Donnie? How are you? Good. good. Hey, hey, D-Rob, yeah. we were just talking about how good those good yeah. times cams were. <laughs> hey, I'm sporting Express, too. Now, hey, what, we're partners is, on a bull now. When is that sale? April 26th. April 26th. And we are selling That's a lot bull, of it, bull my sale. buddy. Both cows. Both yep. Cows. A little bit of everything. Needing the bull, April 26th. Go to Express I, Ranches. I, Angus yeah. and Herefords. Oh, yeah. Yep. 34 Herefords. 34 Herefords. Yep. Well, I just want to say hi. Hey, hey. You good see to you see you, Rob. Hey, uh, good job. <laughs> Stay, we're good. We're okay. strong. Stay strong. Stay strong. Thanks for stopping by, Miles. Hey, thanks for stopping, buddy. Hey, you guys are doing great. All we hear is good compliments. Well, that's good. If you want to, if you want to stand here and coach on this kid. <laughs> yeah, he just did. He peeked over there and he says, hey, hey, you're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> they're not on the side. When they're side by side, they're not as intense. You'll notice stuff ramps up. When they, when oh, they, get, yeah. when they get on the, oh. the head to tail. Then you see people freaking out, waving. Then it heats up. Yeah. 
What is that, Kath? In God from Steve. Yep. Well, he's burly. What's this calf? Who's this? That's a good calf. That baldy. Mm-hmm. And that calf there's pretty handy too there. Who is that? Five, 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 triple five. five. Triple five. That's oh, that's the Coca John calf. Oh, okay. And Lester's up front, in front of him. That bar, that baldy. Where would Coca John's calf come from? Lucky nuts. <laughs> no, no filter. No filter. No. <laughs> no filter. No filter. <laughs> He's worse than you. <laughs> yeah, he way, is. Way worse than me. Oh. Hey, there's the captain. There's team captain. There's team captain Madison. Team captain. Hey, your calf, your calf looked good, honey. You did a great job out there. You hit a buzz saw with that one. I said you hit a buzz saw with that one. Just him, just talking to my sweet little girl here, Madison Shout. Just got fifth in that last division, stood behind the champion steer. She was second to the champion steer, and that was a good calf. Look how similar those McKay steers look. That last one he had? Yeah. That one's probably burlier. This one's flexibilities. Yeah. Superior yeah. to the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're going to dig that calf there. I do too. I seen Brock kind of grin when he walked, when he took about three steps into the ring. Yeah. I think they're going to. I'm just going to say that they're going to go off on his feet and legs pretty yeah, good. Yeah. If he's got enough muscle. Yeah, if he's he's not as burly as that one, no, probably. No. No. That, that baldy calf. calf gives a really good you know, he That's a good calf. I, I liked him when he hit the ring. I don't know what he is, but, boy, he has got the look and the body shape. He's probably not as big boned and footed as some of these other ones, but that's Bentley Lester from Sentinel. Them four calves, them five calves right there. Look, your neighbor sitting there by the announcer, or standing by the announcer, standing there, Nolan Fleshner. Oh, yeah. Old how's body he, of, how's he doing buddy of uh, Bob Mays yeah. from back in the day. Oh, yeah. Two two legends. He, I got a picture in my phone I took at it when I was there looking at cattle in December. He's got a blocking chute behind his house that sits there that is about five feet long. And, I mean, it's just... It's pretty cheaply made compared to today. today. Sullivan shoots nowadays. And he said he fit the 1974 champion steer at Chicago in that shoot. You're kidding. Yeah. Sitting behind his house? Sitting behind his house, yep. I'm hoping someday he wills that place to me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's got Absolutely. a great. He's got one of the best little places I've ever seen. He does. It's it's a beautiful little place to have a little sale and set up. Very nice. Well, Finley's not going to quite do as well this year. Finley's in sixth right now, seventh right now. Well, they got it down to their top five. They've got uh, Maddox Shout and Denver there McKay. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. How about That's that old block heavy and run with it. Yeah. I wish we could put pictures on. I got a picture of that blocking oh, sheet that on my unbelievable. phone. that is unbelievable. I mean, nowadays, that, me. nowadays, that back where the upright yeah. goes in the back yeah. would come to their about where their sheath is. Right. I mean, they were a lot shorter bodied and littler back yeah. then. 498. Lad Turner is in here. Total horsepower in the end. Some of them may be cleaned up in the front. Uh, maybe uh, cleaned up as far as the whole body 
There's our top five right there. Yep. So we've got Maddox Shout up front. Then we've got Denver McKay right behind him. And then Lad Turner, Bentley Lester, and Kalen Kokajon. They're going to go pull that silver calf oh, in. Yep. Denver's going to so go. So Maddox is going to be fifth. To the one hole right now, currently. Right, currently. He's going to keep these put. That calf in front of him, that's a burly That's a burly. He's beast telling right Denver, there. go ahead and go on up there. So I think, I think he's Denver gonna win is going to win this class. And I, I, I could be wrong, but I think by the look of that smirk on Brock's face when he came into the ring, yeah. he's got the yeah. good feet. The good, he's got yeah. them good big soft paws on him. He, They're going to the, bring that hey, baldy from, calf from up this view right second. here. That calf's got enough shape. Look yep. at that. And then that baldy calf—that's the Lester calf. He looks like he could possibly be out of a loaded up cow. Yep. Probably. Yep, loaded up or broker, one of the it, – it's probably a loaded but up broker, broker to be truthful yeah. about it. I mean, yeah. let's just be honest. I like that calf when he came in. I still like this calf down here, this Coca John calf. He's burly. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a show – I mean, he's a feeding steer, you know, a big burly yep. bodied one. And then this Coca John calf down here, he's a stout bugger. That's the too. one I like. That's the one. Oh, that's the one. That's I thought about. you were talking about no, the yellow. I'm talking about this Coca yeah. John calf. Yeah, that calf there. He's his a old shapely. Jump, his old jump muscle pops when he yeah. jumps. And that calf's got some product in him. He's very shapely. When he came in the ring, I thought he looked more like that bell calf that won a division than anything in here, probably. But mm -hmm. Maybe not as good necked, but body-wise he is. That yellow calf is really good body, too. Yep, he's going to switch him. He's going to move Coca John up to third. And who's the boy here that? Just got that, switched. That, that is uh, Lad Turner from Lad Amber Pocasset. Yeah. A good class of steers right there now. Good class. They're going to walk this They're going to walk them again. Well, they're going to walk. They're gonna they walk told Denver, calf. Denver, but, you're solid. Yep. We're going to walk these three. They gonna, they're just walking that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, just walking that one. Just not completely. Yep. See, he doesn't have that big, big barrel rib cage in him like them other two do. Don't you agree? Yep. Boy, I think they're looking, looking at, yeah, rear. Rascal. I think they're just studying rear leg structure and just because yep. that calf, initially when you first see him, it looks like he reaches and goes perfect. See, I think they're little, just making sure he's a, that. He's a little tubular, a little shallow. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's going to. They're going to move Coca John up one more spot. And I agree. I love that calf. Yep, here's Brock. Well, the heat just keeps coming. We start this heavyweight division off with an incredible class winner and one that we thought rose to the top pretty handily. For, uh, for their weight, this thing is incredibly fresh. We love his front end and his head. He's still youthful appearing. He ties his neck into his shoulder so well. From there back, he's so smooth. You set him on the move, there's not one to rival him in this class. He walks wide, but not outside of himself. He just walks like a fat steer, and he's still within the realm of acceptability in terms of his weight. Uh, we thought that one won the class pretty handily. Then you come into your second, third, fourth place steers, even your fifth place calf. We have a lot of differences to talk between these. We thought the calf here with all the presence from the side needed to come second the longer we studied him. He is huge footed, huge boned. He set him into motion, he does a pretty nice job from the side. Now the story is to be told when you get into a three quarter view of this one. He's plenty bold through his shoulder and we need to bolden him up into his forerib to match that. Then you get in behind him, all the way behind him, and he's pretty bow-legged on them rear too. Now I will admit he uses them pretty well when all things considered when you set him into motion. He's really thick-ended, like we said. We just need to fix him in behind his shoulders and tone him up in his shoulder, maybe see them rear too constructed a little better before he slides up in this class. 
the brockle face calf that comes next is really unique in his pattern and his design. We like that about him. He's really smooth through his neck and shoulder. He's good from his shoulders back. We like him into his forerib. We maybe could see him drop down into that flank just a little bit. Our problem with him is with the class went on. Is that back left leg, he ain't limping on it, but he ain't using it correctly. He's not necessarily just setting it down with authority and going how we'd like to see him go. Really nice calf, really tough class. The gold steer that comes next, if you're sitting in the stands, you're probably thinking, why didn't this one uh, win the class? He is really good designed from the side. I love the way he parks and gets that neck up. That calf looks really cool when it's parked. Our problem with him in this top five, when he goes away from you and when he's coming at you, he gets pretty base narrow. We would like to power him up in that lower third and we need to see him with a little more bone underneath him to compete in this particular class. Next, we round off the top five with this gray calf and hey, he's just a good, easy keeping, practical type of animal. We need to see him get out and go a little better. He's a little bolder and plainer through that front one third to compete with the four in front of him. But a really tough class, really good class winner. Congratulations to your class 12 crossbred market steer winner, Denver McKay from the Mulhall Orlando 4-H. Followed by Kaylin Kokajan from Drummond FFA. Third, Bentley Lester from Sentinel. Fourth, Lad Turner from the Amber Pocasset 4-H. Fifth, Maddox Shout from Piedmont FFA. Sixth, Emery Solace from Navajo. Seventh, Finley Yoakum from Sepulpa. Eighth, Dagan McPhail from the Snyder FFA. In ninth, Chandler Baker from Central High. 10th, Jagger Warman from the Timberlake FFA. 11th, Addison Westbrook from Medill 4-H. Now we have Class 13 of your crossbred market steers. Class 13. We are back and we traded in uh, Kent Jakey for a minute. My good buddy Brett. What's up, CT? Nope. Oh, what do we got going there? I don't know. We got to tell you, this is what I'm telling you. This is, you can't make this up, okay? Whenever, uh, who was here? Uh, Parker Henley was up here a little bit ago. Okay. We had to turn the volume up on that microphone that you have on, right? So we could hear Parker. Yeah. I know when Jakey got on here, blew, right. blew the ears out. Right. We had to turn it down. Now, you got on here. We got to turn it back. Uh, I was I was afraid that when Jakey was gone, it was still going to be talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure people will find that hard to believe, but right. that's facts. <laughs> you say what we want to. Guy is a wealth of knowledge. So, oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. And he uh, is passionate. hitting the trail this time of year. The trail is right. He took yeah. two days off, flew right. out of Nashville yeah. night before last. Let his tires cool off. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be yeah. All right. Yep, yep. So yep. steer show looks really yep. good. It's been it's been really good. The depth, the quality in this crossbred deal is is uh, I, I think it's better than last year. I sure. really do. Yeah. That division three was salty. That last class Ooh. was salty. Mm -hmm. Very good. What are we at uh, class? Is this thirteen? Uh, this is the second class oh, of Division easy. Four market steers. Thirteen, you're right. Yeah, yep. So these steers weigh fourteen thirty to fourteen sixty three. Yep, that's exactly right. Good. Still acceptable. What yep. it was, yeah. Yep. Well, and I told Jake, you know. There'd be years where you, after Division Three, you know, hell. Champion crossbreds figured out it's sure. always Division Three. Sure. Last year, Division Four won the whole show. Yeah, sure. So. If that one comes walking back in here again, he gonna win again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so he, you know. He Woo. was a he's a lot of calf. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh man, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah. Sugar Ray, is he holding up? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I tell you, I ran into those two at a gas station last night. 
and they looked like they'd been through the ringer. I love him to death. I was afraid after one good day yesterday that yeah that Brock was going to have him on like one of them little backpacks, like them <laughs> like them women carry them kids. He was going to carry exactly. Dad. Yeah, his toes weren't going to drag either. There's a lot of walking on dirt right here for two days time. Sure. Back, just just handling them from that to mm-hmm. that end to that end. Yeah. It's not very forgiving. For no. those that's never been to Oklahoma, yep. this dirt is not forgiving yep. at all. You I better mean, bring a sound one. Oh, absolutely. You, yeah. you better be a sound human being if yeah. you're judging. You better bring a sound calf if yeah. you're showing. Sure. Yep. And, 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 there's, and there's years that those things look more comfortable off this dirt than yep. on the concrete. You know, mm-hmm. it, it just gets so packed. But it's, yep. it's okay. It starts off fluffy and yeah. stuff but yeah for about, boy, five about minutes yeah you're right <laughs> three classes in all yeah. of a sudden yeah i thought I, for years i thought they played the state tournament on the dirt it was so packed <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah i bet oh, that's right oh it's the greatest day I, it, people that's never been here and you look up you see those trophies that they've already loaded up in the ceiling for tonight yeah. It's the greatest show on dirt for a reason. I mean, yep. with no disrespect to any other state fair yep. or major steer show in the country. Did you it's hear, the did you thing. know Blake Kennedy somehow got lined up with your good buddy Justin McKee yeah, or something? Yeah, Cowboy Channel. With Cowboy sure. Channel. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they, they are going to stream that deal through the yeah, Cowboy absolutely. Channel tonight. Yeah, That's it's, it's be. good. Yeah, it's, 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 making, it's making its way that yeah. way. Yep. Yeah. To put this out in front of, you know, the general public and people that aren't aren't in this circle, I think is really sure. cool. Yeah. At the end of the day, getting it in front of, in the Cowboy Channel, in front of somebody else, mm-hmm. sure, we're going to get to display the quality here, but we're also going to get to see, somebody's going to get to see what this what this is doing to the yeah. youth, you know, and... Uh, and just, I have firsthand knowledge. Cowboy Channel sees value in FFA and youth. Yep. It's but but let's not kid ourselves. And me and you learned this through cattle drive. It's only interesting if your kids in this class. And outside yeah. of that, brother, it it's like watching paint dry. Yeah. You know, I'll tell a story about my granddad one time when my brother and I were little. We was in the band one year. And my my granddad shows up to watch us play. <laughs> I was in about what did, what grade. instrument do you play? The drums. The drums. I, I, I could see you. I, That's a good. I, I could beat the hell out of. I was hoping you were going to say the <laughs> yeah, flute. No. Oh, I probably should have. I was going <laughs> to dig up a picture of Black Carter playing the flute. Yeah, That'd have been good. Like, so anyway, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so, he was waiting around on me at this band deal, and uh, they said that uh, my little brother, he was uh, two years younger than me, and he played the saxophone terrible. Yep. And uh, this lady gets up in front of my granddad to leave. And my granddad poked her on the shoulder and said, ma'am, sit back down. I had to listen to yours. <laughs> You're going to listen to mine. <laughs> I had to listen to yours. <laughs> this is oh, the same man. way, though. Yeah. Me and you, are, you, we love cattle showing. Yeah. Yeah. But the general public. But the spectators of it. If you're no not spectator. here studying no. pedigrees, how to mate your cows, you know, sure. trying to learn from it as a, yeah, as a spectator yeah. sport. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we learned. There's, we have a following. Um, but to get it on TV to watch it, mm-hmm. it's not going to. I mean, we yeah. just don't have that kind of draw. Yep. Yep. Lots of color. You know, you notice yep. that. Absolutely. So, Bobby gave me a shout out in the last division. Did you hear that? No, I was, yeah, I was he, talking. He just said, uh, you know, last year he was. You had you you started showing steers. I mean, this yeah. just the history of it. What we started two years ago. Three, was that, three, was four. it three? I, I'm, I almost think this is the fourth. Th- this is the fourth year. Yeah. This is the fourth year I've yeah. done it. Four years ago. You hollered at me and said, "Hey, let's do this." And we, yeah. I come down here. You and I did it. We maybe did it for two years. Sure. Last yep, year, I think it was. Yep. Yeah. Last year, you started showing steers and mm-hmm. got busy. Yep. I still came down. Sure. Didn't have. Just figured I'd find somebody to be on with me, and was going through the barn on Wednesday morning before the breed shows. Stumbled across Bob May. Right. I said, "What are you doing today?" Didn't have nobody. 
Sure. And you know how boring it is by yourself. And oh, yeah. Bobby said, uh, yeah, I'd love to do it. Come on. He said, I'll sit up there a little bit. Then he ended up sitting the whole day, and it was sure. good. Had a great time, and everything was good. And, and then the next morning afterwards, Jimmy Harrell calls him and right. asks him to judge the steer show. And he said then, he said he prayed that the steers would be as good as they were last year, and he said they have not disappointed him. Oh, I would agree. Yep. <clears throat> now, I don't want to be an o- Oklahoma homer. I've said that already, I guess, but here's mm-hmm. the deal. The, there's lots of quality here every year. The best one here can win anywhere. Yeah. You know. I mean, and it's hard. We battle weather. We, we battle a lot of stuff. But if, if, if Bobby thought there was going to be a lack of quality this year. Nope. That was a did talking not, point. Did not fall yeah, off. Well, they did. also didn't bring them all real good because he was judging either. They were going to bring them good anyway. You remind him of that when you see him. Absolutely. It had nothing to do with him judging. They, these guys come to win either yep. way. Hey, I just got a text message a little bit okay. ago. Yep. Just right now, actually. They're okay. We. Oh, I saw who it is, and he can shut up. <laughs> no, this, <laughs> this is serious. This, this is, is the biggest. Hey, this ain't even funny. It is not. This, this is, is serious the stuff. Joe Biden deal ever. <laughs> yeah, it is, too. I got elected the same way Biden got elected. How? Bob, he wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Just Blake Nelson. They said uh, it was unanimous. It was, of course. <laughs> he is the new Maining Jew Board of Directors president yeah, as right. of yesterday. Yeah, exactly. It's awesome. So if, yeah. sh- if stuff goes south, it yeah. is your fault now. I would also remind you the president has no vote, so. Oh, it doesn't? No, uh-uh. Okay. No, they just shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh Nelson so what do you think I talked to Bob last night a little bit about it what do you think about this basketball deal this summer uh, what what basketball deal you haven't heard about it no Jakey thinks it's only fair since he had to play May sport that this year he was a basketball player in high school, I guess. He swears that he it made was. 86 free throws in a row. I thought he was homeschooled. I don't know. No, he but probably did. I, 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 I got to check the facts of this. But he said he made 86 free throws in a row in high school. Had the school record for nine years. But anyway, we, uh, he, he started saying he was good at basketball. And actually, truth be told, Bobby was pretty salty himself back in the day. So, but. so growing up, yep. The the story always was that sugar that that, that Bobby, Bob, I mean that was his that was his deal. Like mm-hmm. they played at their barn at their barn. They yeah, played when yeah. he was on the. He road. wrestled in high school, but when they were showing steers and like him sure. and Ken Haberger, they would play basketball. When they got together at, at each other's barn, right. they would play two on two or through however many Who guys was, was there between those two. It was a push. <laughs> Yeah, they lowered it to eight yeah, foot they, so they could both yeah. dunk. <laughs> Maybe seven. Maybe yeah, seven. <laughs> yeah, it was oh, a push. Yeah, exactly. It was definitely yeah. a push. Do you think that's where that bull swoosh name came yeah, from? Yeah, it could be. <laughs> it very well. Here's Bob for some comments. Yep. So as we move through the second class of our heavy division, uh, granted we're getting up there weight wise. Uh, you know, I, I said coming in here, we weren't looking for a certain weight, but when we start getting them on the top side of 1,500, we're not going to pretend that that's getting plenty heavy for us. And with that being said, this is just a, a really nice class of steers, but they all suffer the same iniquity. They, they've got some structural issues. So what Brock and I decided is, and, and it's, it's the choice we're left with, or at least we feel, is we're going to judge these things off of standing still, okay? because we don't think any of them move quite as good as what we'd like to see them. So we're just going to go with phenotype and power and mass, which this front steer possesses. I mean, he is so big and bold through his center body. And, and quite truthfully, if you walk in here cold, you'd look at his angles and think, I'll bet that calf can walk pretty good. And he, he not trying to be derogatory, not trying to hurt this young lady's feelings, but we want that steer to go better. 
standing still, he wins this for fun. He's big, bold hip. He's wide through the center of his quarter. He's got base width off of both ends of his skeletal. His neck, yes, he's got a little chest, but his neck comes out real high and vivid out of the top of his shoulder. Then we shift gears a little. The steer that comes second, he might be able to go just a little better, but he just doesn't have enough true power in his lower one-third of his overall body make. I like him in his lines. I'd like to see his neck come out a little taller out of his shoulder. He gets a little deeper there. Got just a tick of chest. But more so than that, I want to give him more true lower body shape. Nice, nice calf. This calf here, this dark red uh, uh, white face calf, nice calf, gets just a little flat in his design. We wish we had a little more outer round shape in this calf. <coughs> Excuse me. And I guess in our opinion, if you're going to put him in second and he moves the way he does, we can't give up the muscle and not move good enough. It's got to be one or the other in our opinion. And so. While, he, while we think he gives up a little muscle shape and design, uh, we, can't, we can't allow him to t walk like he walks and give up the muscle. That's our opinion. But it's a nice calf. He's pretty bold up in his hip. He flattens down low a little. This calf here that comes in, in fourth is a really nice calf. Uh, standing still, you could argue, well, maybe he should go second. Really nice standing still. He struggles off of both ends of his skeleton, gets quite straight up front but very nice presented, the young man does an awesome job showing. And then this calf here, everyone has their pet peeves, okay? And we, we, we like cattle that gotta have some hinge out of their hock and can reach, and he wants to get out around. He's probably been at the feed bunk just a minute too long. He's a, probably a little over conditioned, but when he goes in motion, we wish there was a little more true flex in that hock, a little more true reach. But he kind of, you could say, well, he kind of resembles the steer you started with. And he does, but he, he accentuates going outside of himself to a degree like none other in the top five. Well, over here on the sheep side... All right, we're back. So they just right there just didn't find one that they loved. Yep. In terms of structure, they and they, they did what kinda, they call uh, placed them on the stand. They called structure a push on everything yeah. and just <clears throat> just uh, made the call of how they were built right. muscle wise. Yep. Hey, Blake Nelson brought up a valid point. If Jakey was homeschooled, he probably has. He's the top of his class in everything. He is the top. That's why. What? No, 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 no. We were trying to. They were talking about your basketball record, and I, I thought you were homeschooled. <laughs> I thought you were homeschooled. <laughs> Hey, and Blake Nelson said if you were homeschooled, you were probably valedictorian as well. Yeah. <laughs> and salutatory. And, and salutatory. Yes. This, uh, there's still some some quality coming. Hey, that's a. Uh, callus. Yeah, a little callus right yep. in front of us with the sure. yellow baldy. And then that's, is that the Cullen boy there? I did not know he uh, he showed steers or not. Am I am I seeing things? Thir Thirteen eighty two. Yeah, Ty Cullum. Yep. Kylie is right there. We're getting into some sixty five to ninety six. 
here. 65 to nine, get, getting yeah. to be big. Yeah, the big, the bigger 14s. Then does that last class? Yeah, they're still, they're still seven head in that last class. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're still, still bringing it. Yesterday was long, but yesterday was good too. Yeah, I mean, I good was just show. up here for two breeds. And they got Craig Sands up there. I did not know he was the. Sh- Steer guru. Steer, he is. He's steer guy. A, he's a, moving out of the maternal. Exactly. And into the steer arena, Craig Sands. Yeah. I bet he, wherever he's at, it'd be at the backdrop. <laughs> Him and, uh, he's, he's great talent. Oh, yeah. McCollum's won the. Uh, your bread have for show the Columns other day. Columns win with a bread known. Or, yeah, Columns yeah, with a yeah. bread known Angus. Yeah. And then two, do they? they semi too. Jakey told me they they pick a supreme overall between the purebred and the. No. Well, that's what I told no, him. They he have was a, wrong. They have a, a supreme purebred female. Supreme. A supreme influenced all low percentages. Yep. Keys are lows. And a supreme bread known. Lemmies are lows. Yep. And then a supreme bread and own that's combined. Combined. Of all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. All the bread and owns together. Yep. So. And then a, then the supreme commercial. Yeah, commercials on our own. Is, is earlier in the week. Yeah, yep. it's the week yep, before. Yep, yep, it was yep. big numbers, 350 or so. Oh, man. It was, well, and I'll tell you what. Maybe 250. <laughs> and big. You, you lose use that word crossbred. It used to be. Ten years ago, they were full-fledged crossbreds. That's sure. about all. That's a lot of club calf stuff. The way it looked this year, a few registered cattle just didn't have papers, probably. Yeah, I would say they. Yeah, have, that's pretty handy on the on the Angus. Yeah. division. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean it's what it is. Yeah, that's no, what it, I don't. Yeah, well, it's we, another we show. People yeah. like it's, to show. It's another chance to a, get them out. That's it's right. all good. But. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they can Steer be at times looks. very tough oh, on there you go. British cattle. Uh, on on exotic cattle. Hey, Ashley Purvine wins that last class. Susie Milligan had second. Quade McIntyre had third, and Rance McIntyre had fourth. And that, <laughs> you'd think they were related, but their last names are spelled differently. Hey, something, y'all have probably talked about it. I, I know I'll just be here for a minute. Are you impressed with Brock May talking? Yeah. I am too. Yeah, he does a nice job. Yeah, yeah. he really does. Yeah. yeah, Brock and Bobby, they actually judged the open show at our state fair together. Okay. Oh, really? A couple times, yep. Yeah. At our oh, state, kind of like yours, we got two separate judges, and they come together to pick a supreme. And oh, they they split. Oh, yep. Oh, so mm-hmm. I had never heard him talk uh, cattle. Yeah. In this setting, but I thought he did a very nice job of describing what yep. he's seeing, especially in this setting. Yeah. You're love it, love it or hate it. It's respect the guy's opinion. Mm-hmm. Brock's gotten just about big enough. I sure wouldn't want to cross him up on his opinion. <laughs> I think if he ever got you by the by the throat. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'd do that. I'm 100% certain I wouldn't, unless I was Nate Coulterman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, I sure, yeah, just respect the guy's opinion today, you know. Yep. I tell you what, them guys had them them towels yesterday morning, and I thought, man, I just can't imagine there being enough paint on fat steers to, you know, gather up enough, you know, color on your hands. You need to, you know, buff them off every class. I'll be danged. I mean, their hands are were black by the end of the day. So you'd be surprised. You won't be because you're around those barns. A lot of these white, silver, yellow colored cattle had black ears by the, yes, by the, <laughs> No, Oklahoma steer classification. No, <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, that's, boy. That's awesome. But, no, you would be amazed that just the, the air, uh, the settling in there, all of these things, the fans blowing, yeah. they had black ears, black sides where the fans were blowing. Mm-hmm. Tough to keep a uh, a white one white. Yeah. Well, I'd say. Uh, Columns is this is a very nice tip. Yeah. It looks like Brand- the hot wire went off at Brandon's the other night. One night. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Got a little rubbing. That's a yeah. nice kill. Well, JTB was scratching. We got. There's just there's just one more class after this it one. It is. Yep. So you got to stick around. Hey, for I the stick sale? around for a good reason, boy. Both of the boys made the made sale. Made the sale. Yeah. Yep. Third you're out for limousine. sure. You're for sure, sure in. Yep. Yeah. We were the third out limousine and the fourth out shorthorn. So we were. Yep. Both of my both of my guys were. Uh, that's great. Grady did remind and that's me on the way morning. home. He said, "Dad, I." I just have three more of these. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, exactly. No yep, pressure on me. We yeah. just need uh, to win. Yeah, exactly. Did you kick that checkbook out, son? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's okay. That You know, he's he's quite passionate about the steers. It's been tough. It's been tough to get me warmed up. But. Yep. Yeah, you know, he'll, I think our our boys are great. Yeah, and, same and, yeah, same, age, same age. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. How many? He got two years, three years. We got three more. Oh he's yeah. A fr- he's a freshman. So the way our birthday ended out, we got two more after this year. Well, he's got three more of these, and I think one more Tulsa. One more Tulsa. Uh, yeah, we can go yep. through. A, yep. Yeah, one 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 extra Tulsa. So. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's fun to try oh, to, yeah. to get you one and go to work and and it's it's taxing. That's for sure. It's early oh, mornings and late nights and, and yeah. You know, it's ball season for us uh, in the fall. Makes it tough. And we're like yeah. everybody else, you know. Mm-hmm. We got a lot going on, and, yeah. but that's all. You play baseball this. in the fall here? No, he plays oh. football. He plays well, uh, football, football in the, the fall. fall. No baseball. Yeah, or, no uh, baseball or, or no basketball. Oh. Yeah, my, mine aren't built. You start for that. baseball mine here like pretty. Basketball. You play baseball though, don't you? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that starts here pretty quick. It is started. It is yeah. started. Yeah, they shut down for the week. For what do they do if it snows? They just don't play that week. Got orange ball. No, I'm joking. We just don't play. <laughs> they put snowshoes on in the outfield. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. You, you can slide a lot better that way. No, it's yeah. we don't get much snow. Yeah. Uh, we get we lose probably in the spring for us, we lose 30, 40, 50 percent of our games to rainouts. Oh. Storms, lightning shuts us down. Yeah. Um, but we do get you, snow where we're from. If you ask my kids. They would. They'd take show. They'd take show cattle over baseball. Yeah. But baseball would be a close second. You know. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. We're supposed to get a storm this weekend. They're talking Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Gonna get a little woolly up on our country. Right. It's been so good. You guys have had a good winter. It's. Hey, it's been very mild. Mild, yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. And got some rain from it. <clears throat> like, is your winter wheat coming good? Is it coming good? Oh, I mean to tell you. It's, it's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's deep. Yeah. You know, Jackrabbit disappearing it right now. Really? Yeah, you better flick his ears up or you'll run him over. I mean, <laughs> it's, I'm serious. It's, it's, yep. it's as good as we've had in quite some time. And, mm-hmm. But. I bet you they'll like this one of <clears throat> Cullum's pretty well. You know, for as heavy as he is, he's still he, quite chiseled he and youthful. Doesn't, and he does not look that. Yeah. That's a big calf, but he does not he look is. old. He's in the middle 14s, 1469. 
still goes good, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about him. I just know he's pretty nice. That's his probably really and true, like that's probably one of the longer necked ones I've seen. Yep. You know? I mean, it sits high, but it's long, like from his shoulder to his jaw. Some length there. Sold by Sands Show Steers. Sands Show Steers. Yeah, <laughs> in the Sands. <laughs> Exactly. Must be a uh, <clears throat> Bonham's crew's doing a little well, coaching up there. Must be a. Even yesterday is quality, and we start this class off with a really good calf. And as we stated in the last class, we're starting to get up there on weight. But when you talk about one that is heavy like this, he sure is fresh appearing. He's youthful, youthful and extended through that front third. Balances up really well. He wedges deeper the, the further back you go. He's tucked up into his chest. He's deeper back through his flank. He set him into motion. He likes what he does uh, real well. We'd maybe like to bolden him up in his forerib as he does have just a little bit of shoulder in front of that. If we could change that, we would think that calf's quite ideal. Calf that comes next is one that also gets out and goes well in this class. When she gets him parked, he gives you a nice look. Uh, we would just like to stouten him up everywhere. A little bit behind his shoulders, up in his top line. Get him behind him and just add a little more punch to him. But that's one that gets out and goes as good as our class winner. Sorry about that. Calf that comes next is one that uh, he's just a little bolder and plainer about his front end design. He's got a little bit of his uh, lower shoulder. We'd like to clean him up through his crest. And once you set this one on the move is why we sorted him down this far. You can see he's straight off both ends. He's getting about six inches short of his stride. If we can clean him up there, could be a different story. The gray calf that comes next, uh, he beats the calf in fifth strictly off of movement. They're both pretty comparable in terms of power, and I would like to change him up behind his shoulder. He opens up at the top of his blade, but when you put him into motion, he does hit his holes for as long a bodied and big a bodied as he is. Calf that rounds off the class, we opt there, rounds off the top five. We opted to leave him down here for structure alone, and then you get to looking at him from the side. He's pretty plain through that front third. We would like to tidy him up in his chest and up into his jaw. He actually ties pretty good, and he's pretty good up through his crest. But if we can balance him up and see him go a little better, uh, it might be a different story for him as well. Nice top five in this heavy class. Congratulations to your class, 14 crossbred market steer winner, Ty Colon from the Perkins, Tryon, FFA, followed by Kylie Callis from Minko, in third, Tanner Otto from Ponca City, in fourth, Delaney Eden from Canaan Valley 4-H, fifth, Lauren Earp from Elmer City, sixth, Harper Atterbury from Tishomingo, seventh, Kenzie Atkinson from Sulphur, Eighth, Kylie Ward from Cleveland, FFA. Ninth, Brooklyn Beans from Yukon. Tenth, Rainey Davidson from Colgate, FFA. Eleventh, Addison Farley, Idabel, FFA. And twelfth, James Kite from Grady County 4-H. We'll now have class 15 and your final class of crossbred market steers. This is the one we've been waiting for. It is. So, last class of the day. Is that uh, is that a Morton boy sitting up there? Morton boy, yeah, in the 
It's two of them. They're side That's by two. side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the ugly one and the uglier one. <laughs> <laughs> they, are they volunteer help here? They are. They are OL, I don't know, Oklahoma Ag Leadership oh. deals. Uh, uh-huh. Both of them yep. are uh, involved in the Ag Leadership, which helps out at OIE. They're freshmen at Oklahoma State now. I yep. miss both of them. Uh, never, I never thought I would say that about either one of them. <laughs> but, no, I do. I miss them both. Yep. I am absolutely so proud of the young men they have become and, they're going to be leaders. Um, it took them a minute to figure out Greek life wasn't for them. Mm-hmm. And I always said that they didn't have to be Greek to be successful. And yep. they figured out that uh, they're, they're probably a notch better than that. And, and I yep. was proud of both of them. Um, they have found their way at Stillwater. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of both of those boys. And, and what are they going into? agriculture let's Are they? just put it there I, mm-hmm. I think you know they're they're probably uh, i don't know that they're they even have figured it out yet yep. um i didn't know if either of them were following dad's footsteps or they're gonna go or granddad's they're probably, we need to follow yeah granddad yep. yeah yep. Yeah, first, yeah let's yeah yep um now they're good boys um but it, doctor i don't know i don't know that they like the medical side um i do i could see them both they like ag. Um, yep. I, I don't know. I, I've had a lot of discussions with them. Mm-hmm. Whatever they do, if they drive a trash truck, they'll have the best darn trash truck <laughs> route in the country. I mean, they're just, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. It don't matter what they do. Mm-hmm. If they haul dirt for a living, th- they'll be who you want to haul your dirt. Yep. You know, they're going to be successful. So yep. Great. Matter. Good boys. I didn't have anything to do with it. Um, I was very, very blessed to have have those two young men in the show barn with me for their career. For a career. lot of years, and yeah. We had a lot of success. And, um, yep. Um, I, I probably did as much getting them in the weeds as out of the weeds. So, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. 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 <clears throat> this last class, 1465, all the, or no, 1512, all the way up to 1600. That's right. <clears throat> Kristen coming here. It's awesome. This is a pretty cool little deal. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Are Kristen they from Hanson, here? and they're from Eufaula. Uh-huh. She shows heifers, too. So. Okay. Yep. Getting ready for a sale next week. Ready for a sale and uh, yeah, my deal. The my deal. 30th, yeah. yeah, I'm not. They're at home doing all that. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He calved them and some of them. Yeah, got them ready yeah, to go. Sure, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's it's an event. It's one of our big events, and yep, we're sure we're sure excited. So good set. Gerald always uh, he's tough to impress from a breeder standpoint. You know. Yeah. You, uh, I know we, we partner on a lot of stuff and, and work hard at it, but, but he still make you hustle. You know, you didn't, can't <laughs> yeah. slide one by the guy. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. But Looks like the weather's going to be nice. I hope so. It's either beautiful or it's raining. Raining. You know, so, yep. Um, mm-hmm. Yep, they've been working on videos since Junior Heifer Show, and that should pop up here quick like yep. CCI and online as well, but. Yeah. Skasta come up. Skasta is in the. He's in the steer jockey mode at the he's, moment. He's he is steer, yeah, yeah. I, I seen Cutter yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's in the steer jockey mode uh, for for the time being. So. Yep. I, I mean, he might. Gonna get back, jump back in the heifer seat tomorrow. Uh, yeah, for sh- for sure, very pretty quick. But. Yeah, I bet he'll stay around and help those guys redress yeah. on the crew and and uh, um, that uh, kid, uh, or the, the girl there that you said shows heifers. That yep. is, uh, boy, that calf really gets out and stretches on his sure. legs for a calf uh, mm-hmm. that's as heavy as he is. Yep. 
Yeah, the funny part is, is there's some of these have moved better than a few of those in those other ladder classes, you know, as for as big mm -hmm. and heavy as they are. Yeah. Well, there Rod we go. Said, hey, we're moving on up. You're going to move up a couple spots here and be second. Yeah. He's smiling from grin to in, ear to ear. Yeah. That right there takes as much patience and, and mm -hmm. workmanship to get that yeah. calf used to that. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen overnight. No. And that didn't happen with that kid not being around. That, yeah. Guys, I can tell you, if you're watching, that's not for show. Um, it's pretty cool, really. Is that a sister or a neighbor? You or? know, I, I don't know, I don't know yeah. the answer so to that. Here yep. we go. Here's Bob. Of the big division, and, and I'll be honest, and I think I alluded to it a couple couple of classes ago, and I probably made a mistake. I asked a young man what his calf weighed, and he said 1,500, and I was like, whoa, these things don't look quite that big. And so I talked about 1,500 pounders, and the calves in that class weren't quite that heavy. But there, we're there now. We're in some tall timber now in terms of density and big cattle and a lot of pounds to go to the kill floor with. The calf that wins this class, quality-wise, he does so quite handily. That's a good, good calf. He's big, 15, 15, is that what he weighed? So he's on the top side of 1,500, and, and I just talk fact, that's, that's pretty big, but what's so re remarkable and unique about this calf is you don't see 1,500 pounders that can go like this one can go. He's a high, high quality to be sure, Good footed, good good angles, good bone, a lot of density to this calf, which there should be at 1,515 pounds. But when you put him in motion, it's just him and the field. So he wins this class. If I just judge by my emotions, then this pair of sisters wins the class. If I just judge by my, how about a round of applause for this deal here? My dad always told me, when you judge these things, go with your, the, the eye that God gave you and go with your heart. And so I just say, if I'm judging by my emotions, she gets to go first. I don't care about the, what anybody thinks. He's the second best calf in this class. He's a calf that's really good in his bone. He's some, superb in his reach. He can really go. He goes as good as the one. But he doesn't have as much product, and he doesn't blend as heavy as he is. He doesn't blend into his flank quite as well but that's a powerful good calf. I'm proud of that pair of sisters more the, than I am of her calf. Then we get down to a black steer here. He gets a little, li, little out of balance. You can see what I can see and what Brock can see. You can see he depths it, gets more depth in his check than we think's optimal, throws him out of balance. But boy, you talk about one with a big made section. He certainly got that. For, truly for one that's a little overcooked like he is, his neck comes out pretty tall out of the point of his shoulder good good calf the third uh, excuse me the fourth place calf here calf that as you can see as he parks he wants to go a little forward on that front knee he gets a little plainer like the one that goes third he just not as dense he doesn't carry back he flattens out and dries out in his flank just a little doesn't have the true power and design down in his lower stifle then the, the white-legged calf here that comes next I admire the body length of this calf. He's got length of body, still holds his top together well, but as you can see, he doesn't have the true shape to his barrel, doesn't carry down in his flank, flattens out in his hip a little. I'd like to see a little more muscle shape and design in that calf if I'm gonna consider putting him in the fourth hole. Congratulations to your class 15 and final class Across at Market Steers, Crossbred Market Steers winner, Rylan McQuay from the Oktaha FFA, followed by Kristen Hansen from Eufaula, third, Holden Talaferro from Sterling, fourth, Tucker Conrad from Spyro FFA, fifth, Daniel Moody from Oklahoma Union, sixth, Cayman Collins from Atoka 4H, seventh, Layla Smith from Durant FFA. We now have your Division Four drive, champion reserve champion, Division Four, and your crossbred market steers. Let me reintroduce you to those class winners. Out of class 12, your winner was Denver McKay from Mohall, Orlando. 
Class 13, Ashley Purvine from Thomas Faye Custer. Class 14, Ty Cullum from Perkins Tryon FFA. And your Class 15 winner, Ryland McQuay from Oktaha FFA. All right, and get our last division champion sure. here now. Probably shake her down to two of these, huh? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I would think Kay's Denver steer there in front, and yep. this McCollum steer are the two that they kind of they talk them to awful well. Sure. Two McKay good steers. steers McKay's must be weighing, what's he weighing? 14 something. Low 14s, I'm sure. 14, 18, 19. There you go. And then uh, McCollum's is at 14, 69. Yeah. Very so acceptable. 50 pounds different. Sure. Between the two of them. Yeah. Hey, two awesome boys. As we wrap up our heavyweight division, we've got four impressive class winners, especially when you consider the weight that these things are reaching and uh, the maturity they're reaching. We think we've got a pair of them out here that are going to be pretty impressive to bring out into our crossbred drive. That calf that comes out of class one, as we talked, we are pushing up here in weight. This one's definitely within the realm of acceptability. He's so fresh. He's so good built, so balanced. Set him into motion. He's really sound. Get your hands on that one. He's incredibly fresh to the touch. He's got more than enough power. It's just a good calf out of that first class. Calf that come out of class two, as we said, we kind of judge these ones on the standstill because everyone in that class kind of had some structural uh, uh, differences and some issues we needed to discuss. This one's big bodied. He's got a lot of power, as we said. We need to get, see him get out and hinge a little looser uh, within that class. Calf that come out of the next class is one from the side that's very appealing. As we said, he's tucked up into his chest. He's deep back through his flank, and he's got a good look from the side. He's really thick-ended when you get in behind him as well. This is definitely one we have in our mind here in contention. Then we get back to the big boy here, and as Dad said, that thing is impressive for his weight and his maturity to get out and move the way he does. We just thought that thing was really good built, really sound, especially considering his weight. Dad and I are going to put our heads together here and get you a champion in reserve, and then we'll get you a champion crossbred after this. But... Uh, We'll get this picked and keep on moving, but really impressive uh, division of heavyweights. All righty, they're going to discuss it one last time. They've seen them pretty good. They said there's a pair of them just like we did, and that's, yep. that's what it's going to boil down to is class one and three. Brock's going to take one more look at Cullum Steer right in front of us. He's going to walk down there and take another look at the McKay Steer. Uh, he's going to go he's down there and out. tell Denver. He's going to be the champion. You the champ, old son. All right. Good deal. Denver's champion, Division 4. What's the one coming in That second? brings in that, uh, Coca John, the Coca John Coca girl. John. Yeah, that's... Yeah, he's got a show steer look to him yeah, as well. He, he sure does. Well, that one at Denver's, he he floats like a bum, bumblebee. That's a good KF. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, I tell you this uh, this column deal though, he's got pretty unique presence. Yeah, he does for a big guy. Now, what Bobby is having pretty serious talks with Mr. and Mrs. Oaks there. Yeah. But now he's back with Brock. Figuring out what they're going to do on reserve here. He's going to walk them. He's going to walk that one. Oh, just, <clears throat> just one. Yeah, so don't get going a little circle. They're going to look at him one more time. <clears throat> to me, this gets... Real, real close here. Yeah. Closer than a guy. Well, I don't know. 
glad it's not me and you. Nope, they're going to come up they're, here and get the column steer for reserve. Yeah, they are. That brings in Brandon Callis' daughter. Oh, second in that on, Kylie. class three. Pointing on the, at that callus steer. What are they doing? Brock's going to go down here and <coughs> he's going to shake the Coca John girl's hand for third out. Nope. Oh, nope. We didn't ride anything down. We are bad at the riding down. We, hey, we're, we're not. <coughs> we were not homeschooled like you, Jake. <laughs> I'm not going to know what's going yeah, on here. Not everybody can announce every major steer show and livestock show in no. the country. Well, it, it's a tough job. Right. I mean, yeah, we left a lot of blanks unfilled. I can tell. But. I'll get it filled in. Oh, they have them. That, that little it's girl. It's like a Sudoku. It it's like a Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know how you said that. I saw that. It's like a Sudoku. Yeah. Yeah. Sudoku, whatever, however you say that, and puzzles. Here, I'll get caught up with Mark. Hello. Hello. Hey, here we go. Come on in. Get her in oh the cell. Oh, boy. Come on. Come on, Bob May. I bet yeah, you. Yeah, but it's just like he said. You can't you can't judge with yep. emotion. This is what you want to do. Yep. He goes down and gets that yep. good baldy calf out of that uh, first class. Absolutely. You, you still got to judge the cattle. This is a good calf, too, though. Mm-hmm. Hey, look at there. See her go under. That's a good kid. Now. That's a what? Yeah, this this big heavy weight here. What do you call it on your on your go lives running gear? Big time. Running. This has got the big. Hey, this is sitting on twenty twos, old son. Big wheels. Yeah, he got the big big rims, and they can go somewhere. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Oh, absolutely. We were just talking She's about so that. Don't happen overnight. What 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 was that? Fifth? Oh, yeah, she is so fourth or fifth? Yeah, deal. yeah. Hey, so her mom when, <coughs> was just telling Corey and I the story. That, was that fifth? Fourth? Fifth. Yeah. So she she wouldn't hardly communicate. Would never go to the barn until they got these cattle. And she started going to the barn with her sister, and that's all she wants to do is go to the so barn now. She, She didn't say. Didn't say. No, but, didn't ask. But it was Something it had, of, of it was nature. affecting whatever it was. It was affecting her motor skills because she said even walking. Yeah. It was tough she to get her like to get sure. up and walk. And he, she said now she has to tell her to go to the house sure. and not yeah. go to the barn. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it reminds you what this is about. You know, right. at at its core, it's it's made somebody's day. Right. This is about them. For you, it's about selling semen. It's, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. For, it's about these kids. I do it for the kids. You do it all for the kids. <laughs> hey, he said about a half an hour ago, he said, I'm kind of proud of myself. I haven't mentioned G-Bar. There's somebody texted him there, proud of him, yeah, that say it. have Nobody mentioned G-Bar very much. And, and since then... It's been repetitive. <laughs> reminded him. Yeah. Exactly. We had one out of a wizard. Yeah. We have. 
What are most? I mean, that, that there was a ball that Baldy that he picked a little bit ago. He was he's fairly confident it's a loaded up broker cow. It's a loaded up broker cow, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Sure. Really? He thinks Bells is out of a. I mean, there's somebody that would know somewhere. Uh, I'll guarantee if somebody don't let me know, that's what it's going to be out of. It is. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right. I think really it's out of an epic. Epic. Gerald call. just texted me and said it was an epic. The here I am epic, it's baby. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, whatever it takes. I don't, I don't it's going to catch that. ground. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Did Gerald come up and watch the show today? Gerald, no, he's uh, editing his or, uh, videos. Oh. He's, he's, they've been video and sell cattle. So. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. He was at home, ice in his feet. He world record time judging Ohio Beef yep. Expo. He did ice his big toe down. Yeah, I went over there and hollered at him there about halfway through the day, and he got there that morning, and he thought there'd be about 250, 300 head, and there was 560. And he said, I have a 7 o'clock flight, and i got to be on it. Yeah. And they whipped and spurred. That's right. Yeah. I tell you what, that show ring out there, I bet you it's big as these two show rings combined. Yeah. He logged some miles that day. Uh, I'm sure he did. <clears throat> so you you were out there. Yeah, I, I flew out there. And I got you. That's a big, Jake, he's out there. I mean, that's a big semen selling deal, and we got a lot of them bulls that they're selling semen on out there, and just thought I'd go out there, and I had the weekend. Didn't have anything going on. Well, he got so we, on how to sell semen in Ohio. I mean, tell you. Wow. Yeah. So coming back, we have all division champions, right? And so you have yep. uh, Norvell wins the, the first, first division. division. Yep. Jake, he would have all that yeah, info. Yeah, Norvell That's wins the I first division. <laughs> right. So who wins the Sailor Norvell? Sailor Norvell wins Division yeah. 1. On a Here I Am out of Here I Am Primo, yeah, that's right. The reserve champion is Claire Whitman. Claire Whitman, a Here, I am, Here I Am Monopoly Kelly. And then your Division Two champion is Chisholm. Ruby Bell. Chisholm Stetzer. Okay, Division Two is, is Setzer. Out of a businessman chaplain. Yep, businessman chaplain. And, uh, and then Division Two champ, reserve champion is Mason Keeling. Out of a tricked out wizard that came from Ryman. Tricked Ranches. out wizard from Ryman. Division three is Ruby Bell. That's out a here a. I come am. From come from the Colonel himself. And the reserve division is Kelton Arthur. The reserve was Kelton, and I'm pretty sure that Kelton's is a BDR. He is a BDR. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's a BDR. And Denver McKay wins the last He is a BDR. Yeah, yeah, did you lose a bet? Where did he come from? I should have taken it. You wanted to bet me on that one, and I didn't think he was either. Pretty sure he's a beat. I could have won two in a row. Yep, Denver McKay. Don't know anything about him just yet. Uh, here, the McKay one? No, the column. Yeah, the column is a, is a here I am from Mr. Steve, too. Not sure on McKay's. He'll come by in a minute and give us the, the skinny, I bet. Yep, there's Brian down there. Yeah. I bet you it'll be world record speed be, from when he walks into the ring and when he's standing up here behind yeah. us. Yeah, I'd say the Canadian exchange on speed would be good. Canadian exchange on speed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's starting with 10 second head start. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh. Breed steers yesterday, very good, huh? Yeah, Your yeah, it was a good show. Everybody gets excited for the crossbreds. Okay, there's Return. Sailor. Yep. Sailor Norvell. 
And Jakey said, here I am, primo. Amber Pocasset, 4-H. Chisholm Setzer, and that's that's a businessman out of a chaplain bred cow. Ruby Bell in Division Three with a Here I Am from from Bonham Show Cattle, and then we have uh, Mr. Baylor or uh, Denver McKay. Yeah, he's tall. Be about it. Denver's looking for Brian. He yeah, hasn't. We ain't seen him. He hasn't come crossed yet. the border he, yeah, yet. Yeah, he is. He's well. Everybody, I was like that yesterday. Our reserves coming in. He ain't made it up here yet. There's he's Chappie. Played. Chappie won the race from. Yeah. In the ring. So our reserve divisions is Clara Whitman, Division One of the Here I Am Monopoly Kelly. That Division Two is uh, Mason Keeling from Tripped Out by Wizard from Ryman. So I think I think she's wanting us to sit down. Um, division Three was Kelton Arthur on the reserve division, uh, and then Division Four was Ty Cullum. On a here I am from from Colonel Bonham. Mm -hmm. So Denver steer not wanting to go. I bet when he gets untracked on. he'll go. Holy smokers! Pretty good. Huh? I mean to tell you. Yeah. What did Division Two weigh? He's under thirteen. Yeah, I think it's twelve something. Yeah, he's under thirteen. He'd be under thirteen, but probably banging on it. Might be twelve ninety nine. Setzer. Yeah, he he would sure be in the in the. Yeah, so twelve ninety two. The calf of Kelton Arthur's, he's a good looking bugger. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if looks could kill. Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Whoa, well, Ruby's ah, heavy duty, brother. They're going to walk again. They're, they like to watch them walk. What were they doing? We just went on a little adventure. Yep. We should have been watching. Mm hmm. Oh, they're going to walk seconds now. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Lock this. This box? Sure. I'd get up, but Judy Collins boxes it would move. She couldn't see. Denver's looks nice out here, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Real good. <clears throat> Oh, just weight-wise, you'd think it would boil down to them last two divisions. Yeah, I would sure. The Denver's is making a good case right there. Mm -hmm. Both of those cattle making, you know, maybe just some body length separate them two, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, both yeah. of them, both of them, I don't know, man. I, they didn't hire me. I'm not going to talk yeah. about it. So, no I matter, it really don't matter what I think. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and those listening don't care either. So, I'm, I'm just telling you, you, there's lots of quality right here. Mm, yes, absolutely. I don't think a man would want to close his eyes and grab one, but I think you've got some. You sure have got <coughs> some. Uh, I think it comes down to these two. Yep. Yeah, these three head of cattle right here is what I think. Thank 
getting some, some whistling back here. Hey, pay attention. I don't know who they are. Brian, it doesn't look like came I, up top this didn't. time. No. Nope. He was standing over there well, in class. Yeah, but, hey, the kid knows what he's doing. He's very, very talented on show still. <coughs> He's getting some. He's getting some coaching from someone. McKay. Not sure who. Who? Yeah, he is over there. I can see him now. Where did he go? Right there behind. Oh, that right guy there. That's yeah, bigger he than was, him. I, never, was, I didn't yeah. think there'd be anybody here bigger <laughs> yeah. than him. He there is hide. one guy that. It was yeah. like a oh, I'm like a McKay eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not there's not very many guys can cover him up no, like that. No, that's it. It was a full eclipse. Full eclipse. <laughs> he does. Holy crap! Hey, here's Bob with some comments. This will be good. So, folks, as we wrap up and take a little break before tonight's festivities, and I don't know, I suppose most of you have been to that, but if you haven't. You owe, it to, you owe it to yourself to stick around and watch that. That's something like I've never seen. And uh, I'm sure these kids are looking forward to it, too. So I'm glad I got to take the mic this time. I mean, this is an honor to stand in this ring, in this crossbred drive, and look at cattle of this quality. And there's some cattle that aren't out here that were wicked good, too. I mean, we know that, and you know that. And I'm sure not everybody on that side is happy. I wouldn't be either if I spent a year getting ready to try to win this thing and my calf ain't out here. I get it. I've done it for 50 years. I've made many pickup rides home thinking, doggone it, I thought we should have won. I, I get the whole thing, okay? These cattle are really good, and this, this business we live in is ultra competitive, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world raising kids in this, in this industry. We'll talk a little more about that tonight. The steer that wins the first division, crossbred division, Really good in his type. He's very juvenile. He's a, he's a youngster among some men out here in far, as far as his uh, maturity level. He's a calf that's beautiful in his lines, beautiful in his structure. He's a calf as we talk. He's a little dry right behind his shoulder in his forerib. And I guess we're, we're counting on the fact that as he gets up there in market-ready weight, a lot of times that's right where that fat will cover and fill in and make that look better. Outstanding steer, not going to lie to you, he's not going to win the, the crossbred division at the Oklahoma Youth Expo today because he's more of a progress steer than a market steer, but he gives up absolutely nothing in quality to any steer of these four, or the eight, I guess I should say. The gray steer, we love this calf in his class and then subsequently in his division. Wicked good calf, uh, he's getting tired, and, and we knew it when he was out here in class. He's a steer. We'd like to see his neck come out of the top of his shoulder different. It, it causes him to lumber just ever so slightly. When he come in the ring, even when he was fresh, I told Brock, I said, does that calf get up in the top of his skeleton just ever so slightly? And we think he does, as incredible as he is. And when he's parked, you're like, hey, that dog could win this drive. And he, lo he looks incredible. I wish his neck, the way his skeletal was designed, I wish that neck come out a little taller out of that shoulder and gave him a little more freedom, and freedom of movement in the top part of his skeletal. I don't know if I tipped my hand, I probably did when this calf wins, wins his division, this black steer. That's, that's a complete dude right there. We love his body length. He's not a long-bodied steer. He's not a short-bodied steer. He's, he's perfect in his body length in terms of getting the calf weighed in where you want him, making that midsection look the way you want it. His, his angles off of both ends are really good. His neck comes out fresh out of the top of his shoulder. He's wide from hooks to pins. That's a good, good calf, no doubt about it. And then this yellow steer that wins the big division. <clears throat> Brock and I just talked about this. When this steer hit the ring in class, we really liked him, but he, grow, he grows on you. The, 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 He's probably as long a bodied as any calf in this lineup, and he doesn't give up anything behind his shoulders with that body length. Now, he's not too long bodied, but he's certainly not short spined, and, I, and we like that about him. What's deceiving about him is that his lower butt hair does not stand out on this calf. It lays a little fod on this calf, 
You stand behind him and there's a low, whole lot of calf there. We got, a, we got a white steer that we're very proud of. We're proud of all these cattle. We got a white steer that uh, stood uh, a reserve in his division to an outstanding steer. And we, we like that steer a great deal. We're gonna talk one more time. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've got the mic and I could lie to you, but I'm not going to. We know who's gonna win this, win this crossbred drive. We think it's a horse race for reserve. Congratulations there, Division Three, and your champion, crossbred market steer, Ruby Bell from the Bristow FFA. Congratulations. Man, congratulations to Ruby Bell. Guy's a good calf. They said <coughs> they said a, a surefire champion and a horse race coming now. So for reserve. Obviously, we see the two in contention. And they took them for a nice big walk. Yeah. Gonna come around behind this McKay oh, steer and take There's a look. Some discussion oh, going on here. Yep. You know. Oh, come on, Kia. Calf's got good feet and legs there. He 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 can walk a little ways. Now Bob's gonna get Boy. in there and get a handle on him. I mean, you can cut it in here, can't you? It's intense right now. Yeah, they're hot. <clears throat> they ain't even talking yet. They're mm -hmm. just they're still looking. Yeah, it, it makes you wonder are, are are they in disagreements here or are they is it just that close you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This will They've had this kind of discussion before though too. Mm. You know. Yep. Still studying. Yeah. Now Brock's going to, Bob's going to come over to Brock and say this is going to be the last stand. And, and it's in these situations that you're glad you have somebody with you and you're glad you have somebody you trust, you know, yep. either to talk you off the edge or get you out of the weeds. Mm-hmm. 
And when I said they've had this discussion before, they've been in a situation yep. before where they they had both had a good idea and let's let's talk through it. And so it's it's, it's Bob. These are the these are situations where having a helper. Bob didn't need help, and neither did Brock. But to do <laughs> things the right way, yeah. they need each other, and and I respect that. I think you're right. Yeah, you know what I mean. In any situation. And I think if you're, in a, if you're if you're in a competitive show like this, I think it, it's important to have another opinion or somebody to verify what you're. Sure. Thinking. Yeah. We heard the <clears throat> sheep guy the other day talking about talking to theirself. We've all done that. We've done that mating I cattle. Th- and this is the hardest decision they've had by the looks yep. of things. And Brock is making a pass. He's and it was close. Kelton Arthur. There we go. Congratulations to, your Congratulations Congratulations to Kelton Arthur. Arthur. Very passionate young man right there. Very, very, and, and so talented, you know. And Denver yeah. McCase, third. Sure. Equally impressive young man. That was, that was That's two of the finest young men you can meet yep. any state. I'll put them up against anybody. With a and set they, of clippers, and the bad or thing is, their ears. both them guys knew that, and they did not want to disappoint one of the two of them. No, no, absolutely not. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. So, what are they doing now? So, we're picking crossbred cell order. They have to, they have to pick, now yeah. they got to pick a cell order for the crossbreds. I like this calf. That that one come from Kirby Eves. That's an amazing grace. That's a good calf. That's fourth out crossbred. That's Cowboy Pete. Yeah. Horn said his name was Cowboy, and Chappie said his name was Pete, so we call him Cowboy Pete. That's right. That's that's good livestock. That brings in Madison Shout. She was fourth out Division Three. I think. Uh, go going to Collins or going nope. to no going so to Madison? Down, yep, Madison. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know how many uh, they take plus thirty to the sale. I think twenty six or thirty to the sale. Madison comes fifth. Sure. Yep. Yeah. She's fifth, fifth cross. out crossbred. You bet. Mm-hmm. As a parent right now, <laughs> the agony of defeat is behind you. I need the sale. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't really. At this point, I just so want to So if you're the in the sale in the Shorthorns, sure. you're in already. You're in. I'm in. in. I'm in. So, yeah. To, yeah, tonight they just pick Grand they just grand Reserve Bronze. bronze. Absolutely. Done. Da- yep. and, and done, over with. Yep. Yeah. Right, right now we are determining which crossbreds yep. will be, we'll in, be the in the sale. Will be in the sale. Or an alternate position for yep. possibly a kid that has the, two. Yeah, the only thing would be if you had – if you were tenth shorthorn and they only sell seventh, sure. and and some of them kids don't slide up, you yep. might you, you, you might a, be an alternate. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's very tough to get slid up, but it's a spot. So. Yeah. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Corey, man, it has been fun. I'm sorry yeah. we didn't get to spend the whole time, but. Um, duty calls as a parent absolutely and uh um, yep. i enjoy that i cool. got so much time with my kid both of my boys and i love to do this walton and talk and spend time with y'all but my kids are little one time man yep. and, and if they want to show steers we're going to give them hell best we can in a few so. years a guy will have a lot of time yeah sure yeah by that, then time we'll both be irrelevant and there'll be somebody yeah. else to talk <laughs> in that grand drive or the uh, the scholarship start at five o'clock. At five, yeah. Grand Drive will yeah. probably start at six o'clock. Sure. Okay. It's Cowboy Channel app, um, WaltonWebcasting.com. Yep. Probably through a little bit of Facebook, Facebook. But as we learned, don't. Yeah. Don't depend on Facebook. Go to a hard, a Cowboy Channel or Walton's direct website to stay hooked. Um, it'll be like nothing you've ever seen before. Yeah, it's going to so, be pretty cool. I'm telling you, when those trophies come out, I don't know if they can 
show it on Walton or not, where they sit up all day long. If they can zoom up in there and see yeah, where those things are cool. loaded yeah. tonight. If you can load, if you, I'm telling you right now, when when they when when they oh she's oh, moving she's up there move up she's there. moving so up there right now I'm just telling you it, it's a ways up there it's, now we've it's been going in up the a while <laughs> they have loaded these trophies and the yeah, limo right comes in the smoke We're the coming. lights yep, they right unload there they the kids with the fire. And those trophies come That's out. That's all you got. It's okay. You can That's how see high that. they are. Yeah. But they come out of the ceiling and they lower about waist high with all these mm-hmm. kids. And it's it's electrifying. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's pretty broke neat more event. Oklahoma show dads than anything. Mm-hmm. Your kid wants in the limo. Yep. You'd be better off just by limo. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I've watched it four years in a row now, yeah, and it gives you goosebumps it every does. time. Yeah. It, tell you what it does to me. It makes me proud to be from Oklahoma, dog. I'll bet. So. I'll bet. Well, right, Corey, sounds thanks, good. Man. We're going to hop off here. We'll see you tonight at 5 for scholarships. That'd be good. 6 o'clock on the Supreme Drive. All right. Thanks, you. guys.
Market Steer Show. Thank you again to Mr. Bob and Brock May for sorting the cattle today. We'll see them back tonight for the Grand Drive at 6 p.m. The scholarship's at 5 p.m.